started as a promise. A promise of something different. A promise of heroes. But the path to glory is never promised. This is a knockdown drag out, no holds barred brawl. A devastating loss. Heartbreak City. This is the largest mountain to climb. Somewhere, a glimmer of hope persists. The promise of a new era. The stakes get ratcheted up a notch. Oh! No way does he win that! That's what you want to see! Are you not entertained? An era that celebrates where we came from. At a place we call home. Which heroes will fall? Which heroes will rise? The Overwatch League playoffs continue right now. Welcome one and all to Watchpoint. It is day number three of the Overwatch League 2022 playoffs. We are live from beautiful Southern California at the Anaheim Convention Center. My name is Zoe Schwind and joining me on this beautiful sunny afternoon are Jonathan Reinforced Larson as well as Rosemary Necra Kelly. Friends, it's been two days of exciting play already and uh, I gotta admit that the first two days kind of feel like a very strange but pleasant fever dream. But we had so many upsets, so many surprises. I don't think I could have put that better myself. I like what happened these last two days. It's kind of a lot. And I feel like when we look at what's ahead today, I don't think any of us expected we would be here. But this is, this is exactly what we wanted to see. Oh, yeah. Come oh, of course. Later. So many com teams competing for that championship title. We're seeing upsets everywhere. Teams surprising us and teams disappointing us. There's so many interesting stories tied into today's elimination matches. I can't wait to see the action go live. Neither can I. And uh, now, well, if you're anything like me, you need a bit of a reminder of how things went down during those first, what was it, 16 or so hours of gameplay we've already been lucky enough to witness. So let's take a look at the upper bracket first. And I assure you, I'll just be as surprised uh, when I see it again. Yeah, here it is. Surprised Pikachu face right happening <laughs> right now. I mean, this is not the bracket I think most people would have had. Well, I don't think anybody had this because there's no perfect brackets left. Okay. So everything dead. Yeah, everything is everything is dead. Preds are dead. Everything is dead. I, I didn't even see the possibility. Like if I was Doctor Strange, I'd be like, oh, I didn't even see this dimension. Like I, I didn't know this was possible. Dallas Fuel, like it's a Soul Dynasty. They haven't played each other for over 1,100 days. I mean, this counting? is a bonkers yeah. bracket. Like who's uh. counting? Well, you know. Like. <laughs> now, I mean, okay. After two days of play, we now arrived in what I would call a heartbreak station as we get into the lower bracket and have to say goodbye already to some of our playoff teams. Let's take a look at which teams are finding themselves on the brink of elimination. And I think, I mean, Dragons in shock, what? Gladiators? Also, what? Like, I don't. This is this is crazy. This is bonkers. What a what an incredible day lays ahead of us. I don't know what's gonna happen today, except that four teams are going home, and they're all gonna be pretty big surprises. Just looking at the matchups we have ahead. Yeah, massively surprising, of course. Seeing the Gladiators, a two-time stage champion, being down here. Shanghai Dragons, our most recent summer showdown champions in the Eastern region, right? So, uh, a lot of upsets in the days previous leading into this one, and. We're gonna have to send some of them home. Absolutely, I mean, it's so crazy. It's only been two days. I feel like I aged <laughs> 10 years in those two days, watching those intense and awesome matches. We still have four more days of matches to bring you before we are able to crown the champion of the 2022 Overwatch League season. Now, it seems like this year, almost more than any other year actually, uh, there is a possibility that the team no one expects will end up lifting the trophy. So I think it is now time to declare for the underdogs, the shadow stallions, you know, the, the midnight mares. I think it is time to pick our dark horses. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, sound bites. Oh, it <laughs> never gets old. old. Yeah, it really doesn't. Now, uh, as our guest, Necra, I would like you to go first. Uh, what is a team that you feel like is flying under the radar, which could potentially win it also? 
Well, I feel like we have to look at the teams that are fighting it out in the lower bracket right now. And so I'm looking at the Toronto Defiant. This was a team that surprised a lot of people going into the summer showdown. They performed really well on LAN after dropping really early in the lower bracket to the London Spitfire and eventually getting a third place. So I think that was a lot of surprise to a lot of people and maybe they'll be able to do the same thing with another LAN buff here at the playoffs. And I'm looking at Hisu, the Sojourn, and I'm also looking at how that works really well in tandem with the dives that get set up by Muse so that they really can go in to make these big plays. But also, gotta talk about Chorong, because Chorong's Lucio has been really standout this season, and he's actually on the leaderboards for quite a few categories that make a good Lucio. You know, the hero damage, so getting very aggressive, but it's also the healing done, and, and in turn, what that converts over to in sound barriers that he provides to save the team. Oh, this is awkward, Necra, because as much oh, as no. I like the Toronto Defined, uh, they will be playing my choice for the Dark Horse. <laughs> it really doesn't get old. Uh, Hangzhou Spark, of course. Yeah, that's the team I think can make a really hot run through the lower bracket, just based on what we've seen from them in the playoffs thus far. Yes, the last two stages didn't look so hot, but they really, really turned it up. And a lot of that was, of course, on the back of Shai being an excellent uh, soldier. And I think he has the upper hand when it comes to that battle against Tisu on that soldier. And also, I really feel like Alpha Yi, he had a standout performance so far in the playoffs. Him on those Reaper, I really feel like he kind of flew under the radar for a lot of the season. Obviously, playing in the shadows of uh, a talented player such as Shai, but Alpha Yi really, really carrying his own weight. And Gu Shue, even though if you look in his direct stats comparison uh, with Muse, I think Muse may look a little better in a lot of metrics. Gu Shue stays a lot, uh, alive a lot longer. In fact, I think he stays alive the longest as any Winston. And you can do as much as you want. If you're not staying alive, then what good are you really as True. a monkey? <laughs> and Muse is actually at the very bottom of those standings. I think he's the 14th okay, or 15th. Okay, hold out on of now. I'm just saying, it's not great. you know, it's not great. Th that those are fighting like. words. It's true. Uh, so Shall we yeah. battle it out? I, I, think we, need, I think we need to go just throw just hands over by the fountain, right. and then Small we will hands decide will the thrown. winner. Exactly. Can, I predict? Can I predict? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> of course, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, all of that uh, a little bit later, but first, uh, Reinforce, I of course also want to hear who you got uh, to make it all the way to the top today. My uh, dark horse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just like on demand? Can I on cue like dark horse? Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, headphone users. I don't want to bother you too much anymore. Look, there is one team that is being massively disrespected this playoff tournament, okay? So we need to have a talk, okay? We need to have a bit of a chat. All right. All right. How is no one talking about the Shanghai Dragons in these playoffs, all right? They are the reigning champions. <laughs> People are just jabbing about, you know, oh, the Dallas Fuel, you know, I love the Dallas Fuel, they're great, proper in the San Francisco shock. The LA Gladiators, the two-time stage champions, this LA Gladiators, they won stages, you know, before the summer began. Oh, I love these teams, so Shanghai Dragons, they're the reigning champions, and this is the perfect conditions for them to succeed. This is a similar meta to the one they had so much success with in 2021. And even in 2020, when they were so dominant as a team, we've seen them go through lower bracket runs before. For example, the June Joust in 2021. Remember, Faith on the Wrecking Ball, countering Fearless and the Dallas Fuel on that Winston competition to make sure that they won a stage title for their team. I think they have an absolutely stacked roster, not only on Faith, who's one of the best Winstons of all time, in a Winston meta, mind you, but also <laughs> this guy. It's Lip on the Sojourn as well. If we take a look at Sojourn's, uh, Lip Sojourn stats, just take a look at yourself! First in hero damage, tied for first in funnel blows, first in charge shot kills, first in overclock kills as Sojourn this season. Whatever way you slice it, Lip is the uh, a top three Sojourn in the entire league. And if they start figuring out this meta, if they start putting things together, and mind you, they've had a day off since their loss as well. So they had time to reiterate and figure things out. If they start going in the lower bracket, I would not be surprised to see Shanghai Dragons make a top three spot and make it into that arena back there because they are lethal. They're the reigning champions and we need to put some respect on this team. Does this, did he hit the brief when I'm asking for a dark horse and he's picking the reigning champion? No one's talking about them. 
No one's talking about them. I... Everyone's talking about Dallas, Shock, Ellie Gladiators, Soul Dynasty, <laughs> London Spitfire, what an amazing story. Fuse in the ball, fuse in the ball. Shanghai Dragons. Who's talking about Shanghai? I think a lot more people you are talking sure. about Shanghai than you think. But Shai, whoa! I, I am... Lip is a top three soldier. I'm convinced based on how I'm passionate done. he I'm is. Done. I know, I, again, good salesman. Yeah, like, we're, we're I'm sold. sold. Yeah, let's let's get them them dragon stonks. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll invest a little in. bit. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll be investing. we still got some time before the matches start. Now, if you're wondering what the fans' dark horse is, it do be the Los Angeles Gladiators. 16.9% of brackets actually still have them winning it all. You pulled a little bit of a face there. Don't agree with the fans? No, it's a solid pick. I just want to know what Shanghai Dragons is, like 2%. <laughs> We'll find out. We'll, we'll send someone on that case. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I, where do I want to go from there? I, yeah, I guess we're just going to find out which of the teams is going to make it through the lower bracket. As we said, four teams will stay in and four teams will be out. But uh, one of those teams we just mentioned could be making an unexpected win and get that ultimate prize, uh, the Overwatch League Championship. But before we get into that, we do have uh, individual prizes, which we still want to hand out. So many players are deserving of Roll Star Awards, but only four will get the coveted title. We'll announce the 2022 Support Roll Stars right after this break. Welcome back, one and all. Yesterday, we announced the Roll Star Wars for the best tank players in the league. And today, it is our utmost pleasure to announce the support All-Stars for the Overwatch League in 2022. What a shame that Costa isn't here for this. Yeah, I, I know. He, he, he's, he's probably like this close to his monitor at home. 
yelling out names of things. Shouting names. Shouting names. <laughs> all the names of all the supports that he thinks. Astro! <laughs> Astro. <laughs> uh, we, we might be hearing him here in Anaheim still. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's dive right into it. Because our first support role star has excelled uh, ever since they first stepped in the front of the league. Uh, he's known for long range of sleeps and those really sick Ananates. It is Dallas Fuel's fielder. With the switch from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2 and the removal of a lot of the shields in the game, you can heavily feel the power that a good flex support brings to your team. And Fielder is one of those. Playing for the Dallas Fuel, he's played a lot of Ana this season, but has also more recently started to play the Kiriko for the team. And no matter what it is, it feels like Fielder is always hitting those shots and always utilizing the pieces of his kit to really set up the team for success. And I think in previous years, in 2021, of course, Fielder was crowned a role star as well. But a lot of that was because of his Ana and his Moira play. So if we actually take a look at some of his Ana stats for, uh, throughout the season, you can see yourself first in healing done, first in biotic grenade kills, and first in defensive assists. I mean, the stats speak for themselves. Fielder is an amazing Ana. But this year in particular, in the 2022 season, it's been what Fielder didn't do in 2021. That's really made me gain his uh, respect for him as a player. Flexing over to the Senyata, for example, when necessary. The Brigitte at times, that helped them win the Summer Showdown stage title, of course. Fielder, I think he's grown from previous years, and at the level he's playing at, he's one of the best four supports in the league. Definitely a roll star in my eyes. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Now, yeah. our next roll star has been a star at every every role they've been asked to step into and play capable of defeating flankers in duels and taking the fight to the enemy from the la gladiators it is shu shu one of the best supports we have in the entire league and this guy does things differently not only is it about helping the team getting the healing done uh, it's also about getting the damage done. One of the most clutch supports we have in the league. And I'm not talking about clutching out in the regular season. I'm talking about clutching up when everything is on the line. In 2021, Shu was an MVP candidate. In 2022, Shu was an MVP candidate. So consecutive years now with MVP nominees. Shu, that just speaks to the level of play he brings to the LA Gladiators. In my eyes, he is the best support player in the entirety of the league. He does things differently on the support role. Shu, definitely a role star. Oh, I mean, the frags have just been absolutely insane from this player, whether it's the Ana, the Baptiste, it's been so fun to see Shu just absolutely pop off. Here, let's take a look at his Baptiste stats this season. And I feel like, just like Fielder's Ana stats speak for themselves, Shu's Baptiste stats definitely speak for themselves. They don't even have healing done on a support <laughs> hero. There's no healing done on the graphic. No, don't, don't, you don't have to worry about that. That's <laughs> what Shu is about. Shu's about getting you don't need to heal your team when the enemy team is dead. Yeah, that the best yeah. off defense is the best offense. <laughs> exactly. That's bad advice. <laughs> Not the best <laughs> advice, but it works out for Shu, and we're all about that. Now, our next roll star is a menace in the back line, always alive, always annoying, which is the best thing to be as a Lucio. Dropping the beat into roll stars is Chio from the Dallas Fuel. Incredible to see not one, but two supports here from the Dallas Fuel getting a support role star. And Chio is ever deserving of this role. I mean, when you see him on the Lucio, it's just nonstop pressure onto the enemy team. Whether it's just him solo killing in the back line, or it is just helping out, enabling the front line to get that damage done. Such incredible work here coming in from Chio, especially when it comes to the environmental kills that this player has been able to get. In my eyes, Chio is the best Lucio we have in the entire league. And especially because he's a rookie in the league, I think that just speaks to the potential of Chio moving into the future as well. If we take a look at Chio's Lucio stats, you can see first in final blows and first in offensive assists, but he's not only doing it offensively. He's also staying safe. He only dies the third least in the entire league as well, which is a standout kind of performance, right? Being able to be aggressive, but also sit back. But this is not the Lucio Star Award. This is the Roll Star <laughs> Award. So the fact that Chio has been able to come in as a rookie and play the Lucio to such a high level, but flex over to the Senyata at times, for example, when we had double flex support metas. Um, incredible performances from Chio throughout the entire season. He's also a Roll Star in my eyes. 
Well, not just in your eyes. Apparently, he, he is, he is a world yeah. star. <laughs> that is a fact now. Now, Officially. last but certainly not least, our fourth and final support world star is a beast from the east. Whether it's a mace to the face or a volley of destruction from the back line, it is from the Shanghai Dragons, Izayaki. When you have to talk about the best Senyaras in the league, Isayaki is one of them. You notice the volleys of destruction, and here you go, just racking up the highlights on your favorite flex support hero. But also, he's been able to take things differently this year. Filling in on the Brigitte in the Summer Showdown led to the Summer Showdown title for the Shanghai Dragons in the Eastern region. So, an offensive powerhouse, but also now with added flexibility. If you want to make a top four support list in the Overwatch League, Isayaki is certainly one of them. Absolutely, he has to be on that list. Now, these are your 2022 Overwatch League support role stars. Let's once more take a look at those talented young men who are gracing us with some phenomenal play all season long. It's been amazing to watch all of the support players this season and the impact that they've had within Overwatch 2. But Shu, Fielder, Izayaki, and Chio are incredible. And congratulations to them for the role stars. Absolutely. And you can see these stars in person as well uh, as the voice actors who bring the heroes of Overwatch to life. If you join us here at the Anaheim Convention Center, there's still time to get your tickets. So join us at the Overwatch League Grand Finals and catch Elia Denise and Cherry's Booth, the voice actors for Jungle Queen and Sojourner live here in Anaheim. Tickets are on sale right now, so grab them while they're hot. And we are now just minutes away from the Philadelphia Fusion and the LA Gladiators. And one team of those will be going home and the other one will get uh, to continue their run through the bracket. Uh, so everything is on the line. Now we'll get into the Fusion versus Gladiators match after we return.
Welcome back once again to Watchpoint, the eliminations for the 2022 Overwatch League playoffs start. Today we have eight teams entering and only four will live on in the playoff bracket. So this is going to be exciting. What a day lays ahead of us. And our first match of the day is the Philadelphia Fusion going up against the LA Gladiators. And both of these teams have been uh, perennial contenders, but have never really achieved the glory that their fans uh, and, frankly, the franchises expect for themselves. So uh, this time, you know, they could they could get it done. But they do have to make a run through the lower bracket first. And that's not going to be an easy feat. Now, uh, Necra, as our guest, I want you to go first again. Who are you looking out for in this very matchup? Well, first, I think that you just put very nicely that Philadelphia Fusion is always second and never gets a first. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. But they're looking good doing so. They do. They do, look, they do look quite good. I will always yeah. be a Philly Fusion fan. I'm also from Philly, so I kind of feel No obligated. bias whatsoever. No yeah. bias at all <laughs> when I talk about this next point, which is about the Winston versus Winston in this matchup. Philadelphia Fusion did lose their match earlier this week to the London Spitfire, and off the back of that one, it just looked like it was really tough for Fusion to find their footing. Even with Belosaria at the helm, Belosaria has been a standout rookie performer this year, but unfortunately fell a little flat when it came to the Winston, just kind of constantly getting bullied by Backbone's Reaper, and then in, you know, henceforth kind of scared of it and played scared of it. So I hope to see a little bit more aggression coming out from Bellatria's Winston today. But how is that going to match up against Reiner's Winston on the Los Angeles Gladiators? Because despite the loss, which was also against London Spitfire, funny how that works out. <laughs> but despite the loss, Reiner's stats on Winston still looked quite good. Just based on the eye test, it didn't really pass that one. Yeah, I mean, it's so weird when you see a team lose and yet the stats look still good where you're like, you didn't need to lose. <laughs> like, you could have could have won it too. Uh, Gladiators right, I tell like, myself, every ranking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've like, got what did we lose? to win. I did great. Yeah. I got gold damage. Oh, oh you no, want those? I got a cart. <laughs> look at me. No, no, no. This is, they removed the metal system. You don't know anymore. Exactly, you don't know. Unless you're taking too much time to I figure it door. out. That, that, that will be him, actually. Tab yeah. key is my favorite key. <laughs> tab, tab to, tab to look. Uh, to reinforce, though, I mean, you had a lot of questions about LA uh, Gladiators yesterday. Um, did you find some answers or not? No. We'll find <laughs> out in our next segment, which is leveling up presented by Butterfingers. So was anything answered? Or do you have more questions now? I, I have so many questions. Gladius. That? Gladius, we're two time stage champions. What are we doing here? What, what, what are we doing? Swapping around players on different heroes to compensate for optimal conditions? No. No other team in the playoffs is actually swapping around their Sojourn and the Reaper Tracer player. And so the LA Gladiators, I'm, I'm just asking you, settle down, all right? Settle for it. Yesterday in their match against the London Spitfire, we saw Happy play some of the Sojourn later on in the series, but it was Kevster who started it off on that hero after some Tracer play himself. Happy, as you can see, he leads in final blows and charge shot kills per 10 minutes. Against Kevster, his partner in crime, of course, which begs the question, who is going to play primarily the Sojourn today? In my opinion, I want to see Kevster on that Reaper because it lets him play the Tracer where it's possible and you don't have to put additional pressure on Happy to flex around and play different heroes. Happy, he is the superior soldier when it comes to the stats and I tend to agree with the stats. So put him on that hero. Let him just play this hero. All he needs to do, visualizing the game, going into the game, all he needs to think about is how he should perform a soldier. He doesn't need to prepare for his Reaper play. He doesn't need to prepare for his soldier play as well. Just keep him on this soldier hero. I think it's the best way for the LA Gladiators to approach this series. And Kevster, well, maybe he can play the Tracer at some point. If he doesn't feel comfortable playing the Reaper for whatever reason on some points, that's fine. But I recognize that Happy is the superior soldier in my eyes, and I don't want to see them flex around and swap around uh, their preferred soldier player in this match. If the LA Gliders want to go deep in this tournament, I think they need to set something in stone. Just commit to it. You just need to commit, and if it doesn't work out, so be it, all right? But at least commit to something and don't, like, flip-flop when it comes to the roster, two, uh, roster hero swaps. I mean, historically, 
those kind of hero swaps have not worked out in any of the seasons for any of the teams. As soon as you start mm -hmm. having those crucial roles, switching players in and out on those roles, not usually a formula for success, or very rarely at least. Now, uh, one last thing that I want to look at is, uh, of course, the new hero, Kiriko. Uh, it's always interesting when a new hero comes out to really see who can, you know, adapt, who can pick it up on, on such a short notice as well and, and play it to a high level. Now, if we're looking at Gladiator's Kiriko player, Shu, I mean, I dare say he was more on the offensive side. He is a very aggressive player. He is known to get those headshots, to go for those kills. That can be punished too. And I mean, he is a wizard, but he has to go up against an actual lame god. <laughs> what a clever pun. Uh -huh. However, if we're looking at the numbers here, Shu did look better uh, in the playoffs on his Kiriko. That said though, take these numbers with a grain of salt because quite frankly, Gladiators did they they lost better if that makes sense I think Philly they had a more competitive series exactly, against London than exactly. what Philly did so yes. yeah it's it's natural that if you, the less team fights you win the worse your stats look like da -da. so uh, yeah Gladiator stats obviously looking a little bit better in direct comparison right now in the playoffs but that doesn't mean that the opposition can't get it done but uh, yeah it is now time to uh, get some last thoughts in and I want to talk about the map. Uh, the first map in the series is going to be Oasis, and you have a little tip back for us. Yeah, I think that's an interesting map pick from LA Gladiators. Of course, the higher seed, they picked the map here, so the LA Gladiators they decided to go to Oasis. Statistically, it's their second worst control map throughout the season. But in this particular meta, maybe some hidden picks are in order when it comes to the heroes. Of course, on City Center, you can see Kevster flex over to that Tracer. Maybe a preference of his also. In the past, we have seen Reiner play Roadhog on City Center, and Ro uh, Roadhog is, of course, a pick that's come out from the Houston Outlaws, for example. Maybe as well on University, we'll see Reiner's flex over to that Doomfist Oasis. An interesting map choice from the LA Gladiators that perhaps allows some of that flexibility if you don't want to play the Winston meta. We did see Los Angeles Gladiators as one of the only teams to play like four or five different compositions. And in this meta, I think that's really unique because a lot of it is just around the Winston, the Kiriko, the Lucio, the very standard set pieces like we saw from Junker Queen. So I kind of like that. And I think Oasis really does play to a strength like that. Yeah, and I, I do love that point because, quite frankly, that can throw the opposition for a bit of a loop because you're not quite sure what to expect. You're not practicing against those wonky compositions, so that could work in their favorite. Let's take a look at our preds for this match just so we know how we can all get it wrong again, potentially. All right, everyone goes with Gladiators. I don't think that's a huge surprise. They are, they have to be the favorite heading into this matchup. But that said, I said the same thing about the Gladiators in the match they lost yesterday, so what do I know, really? Well, I mean, I credit London, so... So there was that, exactly. <laughs> but we have we have some great matches coming our way. Four teams will unfortunately be going home. Four teams move one step closer to glory. The Overwatch League 2022 playoffs start right now. It started as a promise. A promise of something different. A promise of heroes. But the path to glory is never promised. This is a knockdown drag out, no holds barred brawl. Oh, a devastating loss. Heartbreak City. This is the largest mountain to climb. But somewhere, a glimmer of hope persists. The promise of a new era. The stakes get ratcheted up a notch. Oh! No way does he win that! That's what you want to see! Are you not entertained? An era that celebrates where we came from. At a place we call home. Which heroes will fall? Which heroes will rise? The Overwatch League playoffs continue right now. It may be for you. Welcome to another day of the Overwatch League playoffs. 
As right now, it is time to send some teams home. I am Achilles here alongside Avril, and we will be the Arbiters of Doom as we look to send a couple squads packing and a couple teams to stay alive in the tournament. Yeah, it'll be us and Ryan. It will be the three Arbiters of Doom. You know, Ryan played a little bit of Doom as well. Uh, other than that, I don't know that anyone else is going to get into the bit of a Doom. Uh, Heroes Rise, I like that because that's you know that's symbolizing all the early morning rises here, us included, getting ready to head into day three of playoffs here. I mean, we have one of the craziest lower brackets that I've ever seen. You know, the desk went over it already, but we are going to get some heartbreak today, 100% guaranteed. Um, there are some potential fan favorites. In fact, there just are fan favorites that will be eliminated no matter which way you slice it. Uh, somebody's journey does end today. Yeah, I mean, whenever you get to this stage of a playoffs, it's always, you know, the point where people, no matter what, are going to be sad. There's going to be people who are losing their favorite team. There's going to be people who are losing maybe their second favorite team. But given the way that things have shaken out right now, Oh boy, there's a lot of fan favorites that are on the chopping block. Philly Fusion, yeah. LA Gladiators notwithstanding. So these are going to be the first two teams squaring off. Loser is out. Winner stays alive at least for a little bit longer. And then, of mm. course, our second series as well is another huge one with the Shanghai Dragons and the Shock going up against each other in another elimination match. So this is going to be a day to shed some tears. A terrible day for rain, but it's got to happen. And I'm happy to be here for it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it does create a very exciting lower bracket as we move forward, though, because there's some great teams down here. And I just think it speaks to the strength of this year's teams across the board, both regions, where it's like, you know, even in the lower bracket round one, we got to eliminate some teams. It feels like, I was like, wow, it's, it's too early to let go of some of these teams. It's too early to drop uh, teams off where some of the teams that are going to be going home are teams that would have uh, you would have preferred to stay longer and in previous seasons have stayed longer in fact we got returning champions here three of our last four champions here in the lower bracket when i say three i mean three out of the four seasons there's only two champions in that the other champion london spitfire from that season one roster uh that is still there franchise wise they're still in the upper bracket so still enjoying that one uh in the lower bracket though you guys you said philadelphia versus gladiators i mean the last time these two teams even played was actually in the playoffs last year with gladiators dropping fully down to the lower bracket well, speaking of Philly, let's go ahead and have them walk out on this stage, maybe for the last time here in the 2022 season, unless they can fight their way through this series and be victorious. Everything to play for, for both of these squads. The expectations, especially for these first four teams that are gonna be seen, but pretty much everybody in the playoffs, yeah. the expectations is for these teams to go so much further. I think Fusion maybe come in here with a chip on their shoulder, given that they have always kind of been the bridesmaid, never the bride, as so he's saying on the desk. Uh, but that first initial showing from them, not what we're used to seeing, but this is a bit more in line with what we are used to seeing. Zest is going to be playing despite the injury. He will be taking to the stage over Carpe once again. You know, ripping the cast off the arm. It's time to don the Reaper. Maybe even a little bit of the other heroes as well, depending on map choices, depending on how Philly Fusion is feeling today. The possibility of a Tracer. We know Kevsa played that yesterday. Uh, the possibility of even jumping on some other heroes that have been shown, such as, you know, the potential of an Echo that I've heard rumored around there. Genji is possible as well, especially versus a Sigma. Uh, everything is on the table here and for the Philadelphia Fusion. They're playing the standard starting lineup that they've mostly succeeded with this year. Um, and for the Fusion as well, I mean, look, it, it, this is so far potentially, like you said, maybe them going home. And this, by the way, was a team of the midseason madness that went the furthest of all the Eastern teams. And now they could be the first Eastern team gone. Certainly is a possibility unless they can get through their opponents, which will go ahead and look to the other side of the stage as they go ahead and walk out and also take their seats as the LA Gladiators team that has won multiple tournaments here throughout the 2022 season. Incredibly high expectations on the squad. A lot of people expecting them to be able to take the entire playoffs, but now find themselves very much at risk. But yeah. the big thing is can uh, both of these teams, frankly, bounce back from their initial performances because neither team looked themselves. They were very much out of sorts, very much out of sync. And if either of them can find their group, can get back to the standard of play that we're used to seeing from them, then this could be an absolute banger of a series. And I'm one of those guys, right? You said, you know, people people thinking that the Gladly Gladiators with this roster in this meta should be able to make it very far in the playoffs, maybe even make it all the way. I said that yesterday. This is the kind of roster where based on the success this year, the two titles that they've had slowed down a bit in the summer showed up, but then a 6-0 perfect record in the Countdown Cup. 
very high seed coming into the playoffs and a Winston meta which should really benefit uh, a player like Rhino, whereas otherwise, you know, if we weren't on this current Winston patch, and we were on the previous patch before Zarya got nerfed, this might be a difficult player for the LA Gladiators where, you know, Rhino would have to be on the off tanks instead. I'm sure his, his, his Zarya is fine, but he'd prefer to play the main tank heroes like a Winston, like a Doom. Doom not quite viable, but Winston is that right now. I'm still curious as to how they're going to navigate this sort of DPS line at Kev's certain happy, because yesterday it was a little bit over the show, we had both players playing both the Sojin and the Reaper at various times. Kefsa played some of the other heroes yeah. as well, including the Tracer, to some mixed results. Great pulse bombs, some of the neutral on Tracer wasn't fantastic. Not necessarily his fault, just not a great place for Tracer to be in the meta currently. Um, but I think you kind of hit the nail on the head though. Both teams had some very disappointing performances so far. And it wouldn't be out of the question for Philly to maybe get this upset win over the Gladiators either, because yesterday's performance from Gladiators versus London left a lot to be desired. Yeah, I think this is really about who finds their groove the fastest, who can play to their top potential. The students in this series, they should be able to be the team that you know takes the lead and maybe even just takes the whole set. Both teams come out here firing on all cylinders, and I'm just hoping for a back and forth brawl between these two squads because we were treated to an absolutely excellent five mapper just yesterday. I'd love to see more of that here, especially now that elimination is on the line, the stakes are the highest that they've been so far here in the playoffs. Oasis is our starting battleground though, as we get ready to go into control from there on out. The loser will select as the higher seed. This of course is the Gladiators map pick. We'll see if they can get it done. We'll also see yep. who the hell is gonna be playing the soldier. <laughs> that would be an interesting question to answer. And it looks like Kev's is so far as well. I mean, who knows at the end of the day, I don't expect Happy to actually play the Genji. He'll most likely come out on the Reaper. Last many of these teams, decisive 3-1 victory for Gladiators. That was in the 2021 playoffs in the upper bracket. Now they find themselves in the lower bracket with someone having to go home. You said it comes down to the teams that improves the most. Well, Philly Fusion at least have had the extra day to look over the games, fix their problems. For the Gladiators, it is an overnight turnaround. Can they do it under 24 hours? And in fact, as we well, roll right on now, out, it looks like they're yeah, it's the they start happy off well, sojourn. Happy's there on the sojourn. Yeah, I think that's what you want. Ideally, you want happy on the sojourn. We looked at the happy versus Kepsa sojourn stats. Happy, generally speaking, even on the eye test, way better for those opening first bloods, and we get one straight away from that point. There you go, Zest taking down. Nice headshot there from Happy right off the high ground. Drops down now onto the point properly. And this looks a spray away build up for another rail. They spot Aim God coming off that street side flank, sending out some of those good eyes trying to find a stray pick. Won't be able to get one yet, but does weave in a decent bit of damage. And for now, we'll be keeping ahead of Shu towards that rush charge. They'll build up though, Happy. Can he do it again? Looks for Aim God, not going to be able to get it. All three makes his way forward here on the point. Trying to go for the intense. Gladiators have since gone ahead and gotten the initial lockdown. Picks it out in a rough spot. Has to cut his way through that main quite a bit of damage, but does manage to stay alive. We've got as well, Manning and Jing now to find an elimination. Takes down Happy. That could be the opening here for Fusion to be able to rest control away from the Gladiator. Still have to get rid Kip of Rhino, get rid of Kempster here. Yeah, well, they're backing out right now. Gladiators are losing the pace, they're losing members, they're losing space as well. And I'm not talking about the play, I'm looking at, talking about the physical space of the map itself. It's going to be a quick turnaround on the Philly Fusion here. Should be able to get under 40%. Ooh. Somebody we haven't seen in a very long time. Happy going to be picked off again right as he respawns. Good forward chase here from Fusion. Get that extra stagger. They gain control. 40% though established for the Gladiators with ults on the way. Funny Astro already has a sound barrier shoe. Not too far off from the rush. So they have some tools to utilize. But she's going to be taken down. Ain't gone. Live it up to the name. Finds the headshot. It's the kill. Overclock does get popped here by MN3. They look for a little bit more and they'll get Kev's to the boot. Recharging. Makes it slightly worth for him in three to pop the overclock. Otherwise, I think it probably would have been wasted. Glad that he at least got the one kill there. Probably ends up being overkill, given the sense that, okay, well, if you have aim god getting an opening first blood, Glad he is obviously back on out. Here, Fusion should get super aggro. I mean, they're basically looking to spawn camp right now. Military over something for a moment now. That's going to force out the beats on either side. The rushes as well being used by Aim God and Shu. Primal Rage comes in from Beltria. Just juggling Reiner around for a little bit there, but he's not at threat of getting taken down. Now the overclock from Happy comes in, and with no more defensive toolkit, and the fusion pulling back around the corner. And Zest? Briefly, now they go ahead, they re-aggress. Zest goes in, Death Blossom comes down. Funny Astro going to be taken out. That's going to be the supports now out of the fight. Zest follows up on wow. the Kepser, on to Reiner for three kills in the fight. And fusion pilot this spawn camp so perfectly. Now that they're completely out of tools, out of ultimates to utilize, yep. they will play back a bit more. 
but man, what a hold from them. They now have, very much have the lead. And that's exactly the kind of turn and burn gameplay that the LA Gladiators lost to versus the London Spitfire yesterday, right? This ability for the opposing team, for the fusion here, just to pull, push in, use ultimates back on out, and then turn the fight over. Zess using a death blossom. Awesome. Aim God once again getting a burst one. Man, has his number. Aim God clearly not happy that he was not on the list for a wolf star. Is looking to steal it away from Shu if possible. Unfortunately, the system doesn't work like that. Aim God, but I like what you're putting down. And look at the lap right now that he has over Shu because Shu has spent so much time respawning. Ults online. Shu's at 46%. And we nearly have the full cap here. Fusion looking for final fight. Ellie Gladiators still have owned that same death blossom from, from Kevs to work through. And they got a necklace work. Aim God has another rush. Rush comes out, Kepster pops the Death Blossom, but it is out of position, and Warlick Dimes ends up getting taken down. The Focus Fire, which is too damn good. Happy drags it back. The men to equalize on those Reapers. Finding one, but now with Funny Astro down, so much more pressure here on the Shu, who desperately needs to get that rush online. 9% left to go, but Happy is dead. One of the biggest people who would have profited from that ultimate, and now he's not even going to get the opportunity to use it. So one Kitsune Rush, I believe, built up by Shu in this entire round of control. Fusion taking 100 to 40%. Cool. I mean, just the extra kills, the damage done by Aim God, allowing them to get a final Katsuna rush where, you know, what was Shu's ult charge? It was like, so roughly around the 50, 60% mark. I mean, that's really rough for the LA Gladiators. They were low on ult economy as well. Kefster trying to get that Death Blossom into action and just isn't going to be enough. He gets shut down nearly instantaneously. Let's take a look at some of the Aim God shots again. Firing those kunais through and Shu ends up walking dead right into one. In fact, he might have TP'd into one. In either case, it may be unlucky, but Aim God will take that kill any day of the week. That puts the Gladiators seriously behind. That it does. Now, move over to University. As Fusion look to close this out. Not going to be seeing any adjustments on either side. Gladiators still sticking with Captain here on the Reaper. Happy on that Sojourn. So how many picks he was able to get that first one? Right is low! Oh my god! And this time the answer is no. It's Reiner who is the first to fall. MN3 finds that first blood now. You should very well are poised to get the initial lockdown on this point, especially with Kepster getting taken out as well. He knew that he was pretty much dead to right, so just pushed forward, tried to get as much charge towards that death loss as possible, but it is going to be the fusion standing tall at the end of the fight. And this is such a good looking Philadelphia fusion compared to what we saw in day one. They looked a little bit lost in day one, now they're getting extra kills. Some staggers yeah. here, Kepsa looks like he's in trouble, he'll get cleaned up as well. And they're like gladiators, they can't stop bleeding right now. Philadelphia fusion, they look reinvigorated. That they certainly do. And I will. There's some caveats I think we'll talk about at the end of this one because I think some people are going to be pointing fingers that I don't want pointed, but we'll focus in on the game play for now with the players that are in the lobby. John holding the corner here, trying to keep the low HP. Alive. Everybody's going damn low right now on the side of the Fusion of Bellasria. It does get picked off. Nowhere near. I mean, that's awkward because Aimbot is rushed now, but they only have four play. players. Yeah, and he's still going to commit to the fight. Decides to use it, thinks maybe Zest is going to be enough, but he does go in, gets on top of Shu, finds an elimination. Can they get more? For now, they are still holding the point. Zest is fully topped up, but as I say that, Happy strikes from behind. The rail shot goes to the back of the skull, finds the elimination. Yet again, looks like Gladiators are going to be able to trade up. The picks are falling just a percent away from the sound barrier. Glads should be able to get this flip. Fusion, however, staying forward. I thought maybe they'd be able to keep this contested and force the balls out, but they did not. Happy keeping the team within contention to recover this map because the Bellas Rhea death meant everything. Aim God had a 30% lead over Shu, I believe, and Clans actually win that without popping a single ult. They survive against the four-man rush. No Bellas Rhea, though. I think that's one hero that you really need. You need that Winston in there. The extra bubbles you can get during the Katsuna rush as well, where when you consider the, the cooldown reductions, that's why Winston is so right. good with the Skariko. A super awkward situation for the Philadelphia Fusion. They could have snowballed that so effectively, but Bellas Rhea going down. Yeah, that is a difference maker for sure. Now Shu's turn. Okay. Yeah, rush out from Shu as they look for some targets into the back line. Goes Bellas Rhea, and he just does not stand a chance. Even with a problem pop, gets ripped asunder. And they're getting on top of him. Just with those shotguns absolutely annihilates the Winston. They're looking for something. They're looking for the force, maybe some extra ults, but it is just the rush from the Gladiators mm -hmm. to be able to win the fight. They maintain control. Now look to take the lead. 
And that's the other thing as well. Fusion just aren't threatening enough in these fights where they're losing to actually force Glads to overcommit. You want a one for two trade here. Now it's just going to be a one for one trade. Balistria threw the primal there. I think a situation where maybe Zest or Fixer could have gone for a play as well would have forced Glads to do more. Happy with the first play. Nice shot. Yeah, the pop comes through, gets a second kill, looks for a little bit more, and Fixer did commit the sound barrier to this fight despite the early loss. And now the cleanup man continues. Yeah, Fixer sound barrier, not even enough to save them. And it's another one-on-one -on -one fight win for the LA Gladiators. This is looking much better for the Glads now. The road to recovery, despite having a very tough start here. I'm not just talking about this map, but you have to look at uh, downtown city center as well, rather. And for the Philly Double Fusion, at least they get another shot at this Katsune Rush. And he's got a hands up within him. Pops it right through. Slightly awkward trajectory, though. That doesn't really reach far enough. Everybody just backs away now. The sound barrier does come in for funny Astro. Finds three. Reiner's still under fire. Happy as well, getting chipped away. Abbott looks like he does manage to get away, stay alive. The group comes in, forcing Kepster back. OT is forced out. Overclocked there from MN3, managing to find one. Gets Happy as well to boot. So now the damage deal is down to the side of the Gladiators. Reiner tries to turn the tide to the fight. Pops that primal. Finds it. Got juggles him around. Gets that elimination, but Reiner now needs to exit. Way too low on HP, so the Fusion will be able to occupy the point long enough to get this slip back into their favor, but they need to take it all the way to 100 if they want this map to end now. And what a good way to shut down the Glad's ult usage there as well, because ults up until this point were getting very efficient fight wins, but now it's the three-man off right. Happy Kev's to go down, but still too often to get spent. The LA Gladys are trying to recover that situation. Not going to work out. This is probably going to go 99 both sides for the Double Fusion to slow the game down, yeah. wait for their next ult, but neither team currently has one. Oh, and three. Out of position, so far forward. Okay, the Susu comes in, the bubble is there as well. They keep it protected, and honestly, it felt like Emerson should have been dead to right in that position. Say fix up falling low as well. Needs to stay alive. That sound barrier is 7% away. Set getting taken lower and lower. Happy cleaved down the primal. Funny Astro done nine! Able to find that elimination. Astro dead before he can get the sound barrier. And now somebody needs to touch, but Ryder is being zoned all the way back off of the point. Fusion force them. They ship them away from the control point. And then they tick all the way up to 100% beautifully piloted. What a turnaround from this squad. Fusion take the first map of Oasis. Yeah, I mean, look, LA Gladiators with their rough start. We have City Center that did not go their way at all. That was very one-sided for Fusion. Quite a bit more competitive after we got to the University, but still, it was like 50% go to the Fusion with multi-frag staggered kills as well. A very quick Katsune rush build up for Aim God, but it's a Ballast Rear death that kind of cost them a little bit. Fusion, though, with that lead, they still end up recovering. They eventually get a really good fight. LA Gladiators with three members alive. A couple ultimates being used there. They end up falling. We go into the neutral. Bellastry has the only ultimate, and that primal seals the deal for the Philly Fusion. They lock up map number one. And they gladly is slow. 16 total final blows there, nine of them from Happy. Happy was the guy keeping them alive that uh, map so far. Well, what a start here for the Philly Fusion, looking very much reinvigorated. Gladiators competitive at some points there, but the Fusion are able to just kind of play them like a fiddle at the end of both of those rounds on Oasis. Now Fusion have that nice little one map lead start. Gladiators will have their map selection as we get ready to go into hybrid. We'll have to see where they want to take us and whether or not they can continue to clean up the play, become even more competitive to tie up this series. Otherwise, they're going to be staring down the barrel of a match-pointed Philly Fusion. So don't go anywhere, guys. The action continues. We'll see what the map pick is going to be when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Round 12 with Fury, excellent Gravitic Flood. Spark had the numbers, but Bellatria has the space, the mines, the double kill! Shot through Aim Gun, he's looking for the elimination, he goes on the offensive, but Aim Gun shuts him down! Ooh, everybody really loves the sound of the ballot, kicks the kids too? And welcome back, Philly Fusion able to take the first map, the control map pick for the Gladiators as they come into the series as the higher seed. They elected to take us to Oasis and Fusion play it to a T, a 2-0 victory from them. And that's with Zest starting yeah. back in the lineup. And as you can see, the injury still very much present for him. That being said, though, we did get confirmation from Ross and the GM of the Philadelphia Fusion that Zest is medically cleared to play and compete. He has actually been cleared for a whole week, but they wanted to give him the first match, the opening match in day one off. I have a little bit more time to recover, see if Carpe can get it done. And, uh, well, look, if Fusion only have one more game, if they don't have one more game, they can actually win it here. It's this time to come back into the roster. He is an MVP candidate. I think he's starting to prove why as well. It had some reasonable impact in that match. The player that I was most impressed by, that I was most surprised by, is actually Aim God. Because I think there had been some oh, yeah. fair criticism of Aim God in his Kariko play in that opening match as well. We looked at uh, Fusion on day one. But today, it's a different story. He really is living up to the name of his uh, namesake, Aim God, right? He's hitting some crazy shots. That it was an immense amount of impact found, and you can see, I mean, just continuously lapping Shu as we went through, especially there on, on city center. He was dominant, constantly picking Shu off in particular in that Kiriko v Kiriko head it's up. Yeah. So it was wonderfully done there by Aim Gun. We'll have to just keep our sights trained on him to see whether or not he's going to be able to uh, carry on with his performance and just keep you know pounding through the series and try to get Fusion to uh, win. It's a great start for them, but you're not out of the woods yet. He's uh, but AKA Buff God. Check him out on Instagram. You'll thank me later. But uh, look, in terms of buffed up, we're talking about the fact that he does pretty much equal damage to Shu. 3,800 to Shu's 3,900. But he's got about 3,000 more healing than Shu in that previous map. So not only is he doing the same damage as his counterpart on the other side, but he's got so much more healing. That's why his Katune Rush is being built that much quicker. That on top of the fact that he died a lot less than Shu as well. But the map choice has come through, Seth. It is going to be King's Road, chosen by the LA Gladiators. And uh, for the LA Gladiators as well, just going to be double checking a couple of details here. Now, they didn't get to play that yesterday. They played Icon Vault yesterday, which was chosen by London. So they get to finally go towards their hybrid yeah. choice that they would have preferred to go to. All right, well, we'll see if King's Row can be the difference maker for them to be able to put a map on the board and tie things up. Or the Fusion are going to be able to persevere. Obviously, I, you know, everybody is so very familiar with this map, one of the oldest ones that we have in the game. And it's kind of always been a bit of a 50-50 as far as that attacking and defending win percentage here. I'm not sure what the updated stats are these days, but it always still yeah. feels pretty damn neutral. So it's all going to come down to execution. I like that Bellasri is hovering the ball as well. We're not obviously going to get the Wrecking Ball today, but that is probably his signature hero, the Bellasri of the Doobie Ball and for the Philadelphia Fusion. Don't expect anything to I'll change in, in terms of. Uh, I don't think you would want it though, because you, you know, you'd <laughs> like to see Fusion play to their best in terms of uh, what the meta is, and the meta does dictate, you know, Winston, Sojin, Reaper, etc. You know, the rest of the heroes already. What Ali Gladiators are playing, and we're going to confirm once more that Happy will be starting on the Sojin, Kevsa on the Reaper. Have to reiterate that I think this is probably the right call to make. Happy just has so much high value on those opening picks. As a reminder, nine out of the 16 total final blows that the Ali Gladiators got on that uh, last map of Oasis. I like this. m 3 actually overstaying a bit with the Widowmaker. Because you always expect it to go away in those first you know, three, four seconds. He says, okay, I'll give it five, six, see if I can get a pick. He does not. And now battle can commence as Fusion start making their way over towards the point. Shoe playing here on the low ground spot. Team got up top there for brief. The ball with the heels coming through, but not nearly enough. Reiner again. First to fall, much as we saw in University Fusion out with a major pick. Now turn the sights over to the point. It's a good turnaround though, but Amen 3 instantly frags out and gets a trade. So every single time the LA Gladiators think about maybe getting one back, Fusion keep that advantage alive. They saw the plus one. And Gladiators, if they want to retake, it gets rough because you want all five alive. Funny Asher's still coming back in. He is a Lucio though, so there's a good opportunity that Glads can touch final second here. Make it count. Okay, Zest. Going for the drop down play, much like we saw from Striker just yesterday, but this time they don't have the Death Blossom, and it seems like it doesn't matter because they still segregate. 
two parts of the team. Reiner out in the front, the rest shoved back through the archway. And that is more than enough to just go ahead and melt down the enemy Winston. So Reiner gives his life for nothing. The cap is there, and it's five plus minutes in the time bank for the fusion as they start the street space. And it's such a shame as well, because Shu actually has a good Sune rush. So if they survive a bit longer, he pops down the rush. There's no response from fusion. I could see Gladiators getting that successful retake. The issue there is it's not really that Reiner goes in. He has to touch. Somebody's got to touch. It's got to be your tank player. Fusion, cut him off. They have a 4-1 split where the rest of the Gladiators are still stuck in the archway. Reiner's the only one touching. He can't get any help. And the fusion just clean him up, then get the rest of the Gladiators. Now they push through the archway. And now they have to be able to get this hold right here. They're going Watch for the it. Sunei Rush leads the charge. Shoot. Escorting them forward. Fusion just back away. They're more than happy to go ahead and wait this one out. And now they can just use their own Kitsune Rush to buy even more space. Should they need it. There it is. They've got popping it. Falls low. He'll start coming through. They keep alive. Kepsi are going to be taken down. M3 finds another headshot. Space is bought. Funny Astro not quite on for the sound barrier either. I think it was about 5% off at 95%. That would have been probably burning that fight, fixed it then burning as well. Now M3 to follow through the overclock. No response from Funny Astro just yet either. Successful. Right. Glad he is safe. Yeah. All right. So, yep. At least penny pinching with the ults where they where they can, which is good to see. And they still have those defensive tools, so they're not going to be forced to use anything here. But you should still also have a plethora of ults to use for themselves. More happy, under pressure. Overclock, he's gonna need to be big, but yeah, he is still under pressure. Now the final's gonna be coming through, and that is enough to force out the sound barrier. Fix up, matches, Bellas Rhea dives back in. Spots him for a brief little moment. Once again, on top of this Sojourner. Where are the Reapers? He is playing quite slipperily here, and then Capture goes in, Death Blossom this time around. Gonna be finding some immense value, cleans up two. Happy with the overclock, got Zest. And Bellas Rhea does get Astro in the end, but that is the cleanup, and Fusion have to be sent back, back towards the spawn of doors. So for now, Gladiators, they have control of the card. I mean, it was basically every single other ultimate burn right at that stage. You're looking towards the Reapers. Who's going to break the stalemate? No one's going down here. Happy survived. I believe Shu even suzed him when Bellas Rhea dives on end. Funny Asher with the sound barrier timing to put the team up, and this is what he was saving it for, right? For that clutch moment. Now, Gladiators finally slowed things down, forcing back the Fusion. First big reset of the entire map so far, of this attack so far. It's going to be Primal versus Zest on the Death Blossom. Now Shu also finds the ultimate as well. Aimgod's still trying to catch up. What is damn this? Just 11% shy, so not too far off. A couple more Kunai's through, a little bit of healing there on the MS3. And then we'll have it. There you go. Oh, it's the pop no line is dead. He has the Primal online! Doesn't even get to use it! Just gets absolutely blasted. Take it down, TP out from Shoes. and tries to stay alive, but he can't TP far enough because Fusion are so far forward at the moment. Wow. Looking for a little bit more. Fixa holds the cart, gets the cap, funny Astro. So he does manage to make his way back into the spawn room door, so we'll at least be grateful to have his life intact. Fusion, now can just pull away that and bring it further that that he's dead. Yeah, that will mean that Gladius can't really make an early fight happen at all. Fusion get a bit of a free push on this payload. And the ability for Fusion to burn down Rhinos so quickly, the guy doesn't even have time to pop the climb. It's like he's playing on a bang. And Philadelphia like Fusion's target damage so well played. M3 coming through with another overclock. And Clarity is the, they're just going to run from this one for now. But it's more free push. Look at where the payload is. You mentioned playing on pink. There's no Hawaii blame this time around. They are all on land. Rhinos does get the primal off, goes into the back line. The focus fire is looking too damn good. And they take him down all the same. The peel isn't there. They can't keep him alive. Sound barrier now used to just try to shield up the remaining four members. But he has to drop that one in. Fixit does get taken down. He was 5% shy of his own sound barrier. So for now, the fusion will be staved off. They pull back away. Yeah. They've got plenty of time in this bank. He's now under three minutes. They want to wait this one out. Oh, wow. Happy with a nice rail shot. Takes down MN3. That buys up even more time and space. Yeah, if the Fixer kill wasn't enough, that kill onto MN3 surely will be. Happy once again. He is going to be the one staving off the Philadelphia Fusion's onslaught here. That kill to fix it, by the way, earlier on. Really, really useful, as you mentioned. Only 5% off the sound barrier. Fusion otherwise would have been able to stay in. Belashria going for the this dive in. Ends. He's taking a lot of damage, though. This has to be a beat. It is. Overclock now from Happy. Chu falling lower. Pops the rush instantly, but then is going to be eliminated. That blossom in from Kepster. This time goes even bigger. Finds three for himself, looks for a little bit more, puts some damage down, picks up four, nearly has the ace. Reiner will be able to take the kill away there on Aim God. Now, Fusion again. 
Falling shy of the mark. Gladiators, they expend everything. Look at this. Looking good on the hold so far. So it's the Kachuna rush coming through from Shu and the instant burn on that Death Blossom. And Fusion were not prepared for that. They we're not ready for the ability for Kepsa just to turn that fight around. Gladiators survive once more. Time is starting to go a bit short here. A little low for the Philadelphia Fusion. A couple more good attempts, but the resources start looking a little bit low as well. They have to kind of manually force their way into these fights. Got the Blossom at the ready, forces the Wraith Walk out of Kempster. Looks for the TP up opposite side. Now we'll try to oh, go for the good. drop down. Funny Astro goes up there to try to poop off it. Nearly loses his life for it. MN3 in the meantime does get Kempster. So the Blossom itself not going to get too much, but they still do find some opening picks. Jump back now into the spawn room doors. It's the majority of the Gladiators. Reiner still trying to play out. The sound barrier comes through for Funny Astro. Shielding up the remaining four. Kempster now on the respawn. Reiner Good, taking Suzu, lower wow. and lower, but then gets the primal. And he manages to stay alive. The Suzu, as you say, instrumental. Fellas Rhea now sliver of HP remaining as we tuck down under a minute remaining for the side of the fusion. Overclock is at the ready. First Double shot goes across. Catch 20 Astro in the chest. They do not find the kill. Happy, however, does. Bellos Riet now eliminated. And the odds of finishing this map are dwindling for the side of the Philly Fusion. The last few moments, the Gladiators have found their footing. They found their stride. And they are shutting down the Fusion in every twist and turn. I mean, that could be it. Fusion have one look at shot here. The capital have to be the OT. Double support ultimates online. Airman 3 on the tracer here as well. They need the speed. They need the ability to touch that payload. And Aim God was just so close to responding to Shu. Shu drops in the Katsuna rush. Aim God's like 3% off or something like that. Fixer as well. So Glad's get aggressive. Blossom goes out forward. 12 what a seconds shot. remaining. MN3 take it down. Happy with a headshot. Punish the Tracer. Zesky's on top of Funny Astro though. Finds the elimination. Now Reiner going to fall. The two for one so far. As the cart is pushing forward, someone needs a touch. Kepsir TPs up, goes into the right walk, just trying to buy some time for the Winston to rejoin the fray. If they can clear out the Reaper, they should be able to get the cap. Trade it. Astro comes diving back, and Bell's really gonna be taken down. Now Fixa eliminated. Zest, Sliver of HP, taken down. It looks like the Gladiators have just about managed it. The last shot not going to connect, but there's nothing more that Aim God can do. They get the contest within two meters of the finish and they managed to hold it out from there. Gladiators have a win condition. So clutch at the end there from the LA Gladiators. Multiple Sword. fights in a row. They looked like they could have been down. Great Suzu safe from Shu to keep Reiner up in one of those fights as well. You have the fact that Shu and Funny Astro just barely outpace Aim God and Fixer in, I think, the second to last fight. And then you actually get to the last fight. Despite the double support ultimates being burned, it's happy that finds the opening frag. I mean, what a shot, what a play. MN3 down, five versus four. Gladiators, when they need them the most, happy delivers. Now everything on the line for this attack for the Gladiators. If they can just get to the end of the map, we'll be able to tie this up and take their map pick of King's Row. We know how heavily defendable some of these points can be, especially on that B stretch. Fusion, if they can start things off on point A, drain down that clock just a bit, really weaken a time bank for the next stretch, they may be able to take it there, but Gladiators definitely looking a bit more jazzed up yeah. At the end of that defense. Well, I mean, that same energy, that same impact, then, oh boy, they can steamroll on this attack. Yeah, so here we go. This is uh, the team coming up to this is the last fight it is. Big boob. Oh, Fixa. Just off the side, barely missed the lip. I mean, even if he stays alive, I don't think you see. No, the numbers were not good. Much of a fusion. turn there, but. Anyway, I was going to mention that uh, I'm glad that Gladiators got it together towards the end on C because A and B left a lot to be desired there, especially A. I mean, it was just like an instant cap coming through. There was a recontest. Reiner dying twice in a row in terms of first bloods. I think yeah. Funny Astro went down there as well. So multiple frags not going the way of the LA Gladiators. This time they are on the offense. But in for statue control, it's him in three unhappy. Finds one caps here as well, taking it low. Right, this is way out, bubbles used. Reiner just providing some extra protection there for everybody else to pull back behind the bus. But for now, they will be all right. MN3 still somewhat fearlessly playing forward here at the opening archway. Slides back around the opposite side, playing more in towards yeah. the point. Worth it to get the charge. He's got the rail charge off the back of that one. That's what you're looking for. Doesn't find a shot, but... Okay. I was say, does he realize the shoe is right above him? But they finally did at the very end. Suzu gone. They know that cooldown. Workable. That pop. Oh, Kepster. Yeah, got dinked and, and gets finished off. Bellas Rhea finds that kill. Reiner just has to leap out to 
safety trying to escape, but the final rail shot will be good enough to kill. And Funny Astro is going to be an even later stagger. Now Chu's got nowhere to go. They can finish him I mean, off. It's going to be a good pick. Looks like by the way, you have a time. M and 3 gets an overclock before any of his supports get an ultimate. He's the first player on his team to get an ultimate. Wow. Chu and Funny Astro actually do find theirs on the opposite end. And the difference between M and 3 and Happy so far is a good 31%. Maybe even a little bit more. So the opening damage and picks foul. M and 3 instantly swaps. Okay, rushes are out. Aim got eliminated. Chu gets the better of them this time around. He peeks back over to the rest of the squad. Down there in for fix, but they're still looking to hold this, and Chu will get traded. So that's going to be the character goes down on either side. This is going to meet the overclock nearly available. Now has it available. Does he decide to pop it here? And now we'll have to just wait and see. He's down to 46 HP, but the kills continue to be found for the Gladiators players. Happy with a final shot. Finishes off Bellas Rhea, and that should be them being able to get the cap without having to commit any further ultimate to the fight. Zess wants to go for it anyway. He's going to go for it anyway. I mean, is there going to be a retake? That's the biggest question now. Zess has to try and live here if they want the 5v4. Ryder and Happy still have ultimates. Happy's coming back from spawn. The spawn for Glides is super close. And Valus Rhea, where is he? They barely get the touch, I think. Contesting. Yeah, Zess goes in. He's the first one to find that touch. The Death Blossom is available here from Kempster right now. Just duking it out neutrally against Zess. Low HP, MN3 take it down. The final rage able to finish him off. Valus Rhea goes diving forward. Gets finished. Does fine shoot for his trouble, but Reiner is able to clean up too. Vixen tries to exit, the cap comes in. Fusion just buying a little bit of extra time. And they do take them down to below four minutes for this next phase of the map. But if the Gladiators can just have a very clean B take, they're going to be sitting pretty. That was worth for Fusion. I mean, they burn the extra Death Blossom, but they get two ultimates in response. Happy and Reiner pressure to use their ults to try and clean up that fight. Fusion, they get the retake, and the retake, while they don't win that fight, it does, again, cost Gladiators something to cap the point, delays the point capture a bit more, burns the timer down. Now Fusion gearing up for the actual fight that they want to go through with as the Katuna Rush comes up for Aim God. Shu's still very far away. Funny Ash will be pressured to burn the sound barrier unless they can, oh, unless they can get a kill. I was gonna say disengage, but they don't need to do that. Kips is gonna go for two. No, they do not. Kevster does find them, and that's just gonna be a very swift team kill, shutting down any opportunity for the Fusion to try and get that archway control. Now it's going to have to be a last-ditch defense over in front of point B if they want to be able to drain this time bank even further, if not get a hold. And they've got held on the line. And they've got, didn't get to use the uh, ultimate there. Shoe now catches up. So for the LA Gladiators, that ends up being a gigantic fight when Kevster wants more. His Death Blossoms have been finding some pretty mad value up the course of King's Row so far. Multi-frags on multiple of those Death Blossoms. Final contest here. Aim God, waiting. Hit rush her rush, goes out. That me. Real Bill looking for a target. Bubble comes down to break that one instantly. Gets the shot through the shoulder of MN3. Takes him low. The beat now going to be forced. Funny Astro wins the match. Overclock here on the high ground. Going to be popped. Happy still under a bit of fire as Bellas Rhea goes diving in. That makes sense to try to deal for the rest of the squad. Puts his focus back in over towards that Sojourn. The Death Blossom comes in, but Zest is instantly shot down by Happy. A great headshot off the overclock. Finds the kill, but MN3 with one of his own. Will get the punish on the Happy. So it's going to be a damage dealer for a damage dealer in the end. The cart still contested in front of B. But now that DPS are all gone, taken away from the Gladiators with Kevster falling. Reiner tries to trade it back. Gets MN3 with a primal rage. Gets the jungle Good here. Good trap. Wow. Defines the cleave down. Takes down the Lucio. Now the rest of the Fusion have their work cut out for them. Reiner is still low, hovering around half HP, but they need to be able to get the finishing blows. Looks like they might just make their exit. Gladiators need to reset. Oh, that was so impressive from Reiner, though. It was a kind of a risk to play through there. Could have been a really bad primal rage, but it gets two. It was a 3v5 situation. Kevs on the return now has Bellas Free, so 5v4. Yeah. They gotta get this cap. Yep, they have it. Playing around the rosy. Find Zest in the end. Gets the punish. Two minutes and 44 seconds that the fusion needs to defend for if they want to walk away victorious on the map. Yep, and they don't have uh, time back to play through here either. There was no capture for fusion on C. Gladiators, they have the time, they have the objective set in front of them. Win conditions are clear as well. Funny Astro close to sound barrier, the fixer is when we exchange the Katsune rushes. The extra sound barrier can make all the difference here unless Fusion can get a really good disengage. They have to be prepared. And the closer the payload gets to the cap, the less of an opportunity they can disengage. Okay, rush for rush again. Bellas Rhea assassinated. Kepster finds the kill, the Death Blossom. Laird in as well, help set up for the elimination onto Zest and the Fusion are just suffering losses at every twist and turn. Fixa, the last one standing as the cart starts to advance. Getting ready to go into that 
purple box and victory. Money Astro still holding the sound barrier. Nostria jumps for it. Nice primal. He needs some heals. Doesn't have something, it. but he gets taken down. 3% shy of the mark. Zest now the one who keeps the cart contested for the moment, but the rail is available. And Zest, he's just going to fall. MN3 sniped. And there you have it. The push comes through. Gladiators on their map pick of King's Row. Make it happen. They get to the end. They tie it up one to one. And all other things considered, you know, we look at A and B, okay. Could have been better for the LA Gladiators there, but it comes down to the C push and the C defense. They held the fusion stalwartly, not allowing the fusion to get any extra distance. So many clutch plays in the defense from multiple members. Happy, Shu, Kefster, all the fantastic things there. Even on the offense, I mean, I think you can't really overstate the fact that Reiner putting through the 3v5 primal to get two kills, and then having the LA Gladiators respawn, regroup on that payload with Kepsa then coming in for the cleanup, that ended up being a humongous play that caps them B, and an instant snowball on the seat yeah. that does not end, a Katsuna rush that heavily favors the Gladiators, aim got a shoot trade, funny Astro doesn't even need to use the sound barrier there, they just get the kills, they just outfrag Bellastria melted, a mirror of what we saw from Reiner being melted previously when they were the ones defending, and the Gladiators just push it through. Great map choice from the LA Gladiators, and a great comeback as well. Fantastically done, it's a tied up set, and that's what we like to see. No one gonna be bombing out of this with a 0-3 loss. So the Gladiators successfully fight back now. Fusion will have their map pick when it comes to Escort, so we'll see exactly where they want to go and whether or not they're going to be able to retake the lead and take it to match point, or if the Gladiators will now have the upper hand. Things looking a hell of a lot better for them compared to yesterday, compared to even just that first map of Oasis. Gladiators are here to play. Onus Sun Fusion to answer back. We'll see if they can get it done when we return from the break. Every single game we saw today went to map number five, so I don't even understand or know anymore. with 30 seconds to go, and the low health bar is a shock. They're gonna have to play safe, giving up even more ground. The shock, they have the spawn advantage, though, as long as they start getting picks here. Aztec, he's done oh. it again. He's going crazy. Give him a kick, give him a punch. Two kills for the Zen, a completion in sight, another kick and another kill for Aztec. He gets slept and finally put to rest, but not before the Titans can get the payload in. Just be the end of it all right here, right now. 6% left to go. Continuing to tick up. Leave gonna be displaced off that high ground. The stick, Jinmu, finds far away. A massive pick off once more. As the overclock is there, developed, trying to duck and dive. Should say one with the pulse bomb. Will manage to find Leave, interrupts that ultimate. Jinmu! Now, development, unique are gone. Jinmu starting to pop. Krong gonna be anteed out. Cannot survive. Jinmu finds the elimination. And that should basically be it. There's a couple of people left alive on the side of the charge, trying to fight back, but with choice they want far away, dying, the OT will bleed away. It's a 2-0 closeout on Oasis and a 3-1 victory for the side of the Chengdu Hunters. Fletter headshot, too far forward, and now Fates had to make a disengagement into a disastrous territory. And it's still overtime. Dragons have to fight this 4v5. There's Furies, Grab Flux. It focuses down Fate. It gets them low, but Fusion didn't pop the bubble, and they were playing far back because he got anti by Izayaki. Lip has killed two, and this is the performance you needed him to have. The Dragons are looking outstanding with him on the Sojourn. Gaga is looming above them, ready to drop onto someone like Lengsa and Molly. Sashin is taking the space. Notice his hunters on the left side, and there's Dia with the range and the picks and finds even a second one. They might not even need the ultimates, but they're still going to invest the Graviton Dragon Strike, and Dia with the ace, and Monk heads for the hills. They cannot get rid of the Echo. On top of the point is Victoria as well. Boston are going to go for it. This is their last shot. Sound Barrier comes out. So Martin has a call. Lessons! He had a call. Lessons! And Valentine burns him to the ground. Now the Mayhem have one support and no support ultimates to work with. It's our Salters up to the point, but the uprising of Lost Crimson. It's all on MCD to keep them going right now. The point is flipped in overtime. The Mayhem have got to respond and they do so. MCD is down and now Crimson has to come in on the Lucio. No healers for the uprising, but Valentine has a duplicate. Now he's Doomfist, drops him with a seismic slam, takes a ton of damage and can't disrupt the mayhem nearly enough. Margin comes back with a coalescence and a vengeance, but actually gets burnt down. There's got to be a touch. Crimson gets to the point.
point here, and Valentine is trying to pressure from the outside as long as he can, but the Uprising, they need reinforcements. Here comes MCD on the Moira. The point is allowed to flip now, but Valentine stays alive, and you can't be serious. The Uprising can't get there. Three players, but the Broom comes out, and the Mayhem sweep them away. Unbelievable. And we are back and getting ready to go into our escort map. But first, why don't you guys come see the matches alive? That's right, we are going to have a studio audience here coming up starting on, I believe, the 4th. So make sure you guys get your tickets. They're still available. And uh, you can meet some of our wonderful voice actors uh, that are going to be there live at the event. We've got Leah Denise, as well as Sherry's Booth, the voice actresses uh, for Sojourn, as well as Junker Queen will be on site. So go ahead and uh, hang out with them. Maybe you can get them to say something funny. Save yourself five bucks. You don't have to use Fiverr or whatever. And uh, <laughs> you can, you know, have, have Junker Queen say something cool. Why not? Sounds like a good time to me. I'd be there. But I have a wedding coming up in a week, so I can't travel right now. You know, you know what? I'm just greedy. I'll just go to both. I I couldn't choose, so why not both? That's true. Enough for me. You are doing that. You have a wild travel schedule coming up. It's, it is pretty crazy. Uh, but for the players here, for the teams, I mean, that'll all be postseason. Right? I mean, when I say postseason, I mean after the finals. And for them, it'll be a well awarded rest, a long awaited rest. Uh, for some teams and some players, so they would like to have that rest after the finals and not before. And for those teams, only one of those teams will get to continue in this series today, into the playoffs today, and the other will be going home one-to-one -one in the series. It's getting heated up. We had a very close King's Road. Oasis is a little bit more favored towards the Fusion side. And now a third map choice coming through the summit will come through from the Philadelphia Fusion. And uh, just so I can talk about it, it's going to be Route 66. And I'll save everyone from the long speeches ahead. Actually, before we get to that, let's talk about Happy first. Uh, we'll get to Route 66. Happy was already in a position that he was, in my opinion, kind of keeping the Glads alive on Oasis despite them losing. And then on King's yeah. Row, he got even more heated up. And on top of that, he also started to see some other players come in, kept some multi-fragging on that uh, Reaper Death Blossom primarily. For the amount of frags that Happy had, I mean, even shutting down plays when he didn't have the overclock, Shutting down him and three a couple times as well. I mean, that really gave Gladiators the edge when they needed it. I killed him and three in the last fight. Yeah, Happy. Months. Stuff like that. Happy's been incredible. And I, I always will love seeing Happy do well. I was, you know, I had the, the good fortune of casting that man in his debut all the way back in 2018 contenders. And it's good to see that he is still in the scene, still very much a force of nature when it comes down to that hit scan play. So, wonderfully done by Happy there on King's Row. Can he maintain the performance? Can all the Gladiators maintain the performance is my question. You already mentioned it. Route 66 is the map selection here for the Philadelphia Fusion. Let's see whether or not they will be able to go ahead and retake the lead from here. Winner of the map is going to be moving up to match point. And from there, they will be just one map away from keeping themselves in the tournament and eliminating their opponent. Just in case anybody doesn't know how best of threes work, or best of fives work. Best of threes, never mind. And what do I say about this? Because Fusion really it's early this map. Because it's it's the kind of thing where, like, back in the mid-season madness, there's a bit of tirade for me about, like, oh, why didn't they go to Circuit Royale? Jin, what are you doing? What is Jin cooking? And they had that sort of situation where they got full health, but they didn't think they were able to get a, a fuller hold. Might have been versus Dallas, I can't remember. Um, we're in a much different meta now, much different patch. I, I fully understand uh, teams maybe not wanting to go to a map like Circuit. Uh, that you want to keep Balistria in. You'd like to just take fewer risks here. You want to play more Winston comps. Uh, but 
Uh, beyond that as well, it just seems like across the board, whenever Fusion get the chance to go for a map three pick on an escort map, they almost always currently choose Route 66. Now, both teams, uh, not both teams, one of these teams, the Philly Fusion, actually did get to play a versus London Spitfire. They chose it versus them as well. A 3 2 result. They did not finish the map. London did. So, Philly now trying to rewrite history a little bit now versus the Gladiators. Here's my question. Do we see a forward hold? Zest right now going to be lurking within the train car. But given I mean, Ryan is gearing up for it. With him. He's ready for it. Okay. One. It's kind of what you do, right? You play the hog out the gate to try and break out of the spawn hold. It is effective. It is what teams find success with. How about that, though? Talk about success. Woo! Kempster on the board. Yep, the instant swap. They're going to try to go. Re aggress here, though, are the fusion. Veltria jumps forward, does find Happy. Now tries to make his way out. Oh boy, he's got about 15 HP remaining. That's actually grab the health pack because Vixen just. Hey, while well, he would love to get all that ult charge, it's just not nearly fast enough Lucky. healing to keep the Winston in this fight. Pulls back the big Earls. Oh, one for one, but the cart grabbed up here by the Gladiators. Looking good so far. Zest on the corner, linking up with Valisria now for the dive. Bubble breaks at the back on out a little bit, waiting for a bit more charge from M and 3, building it off that shield. But now M and 3 just lurking around the flank, trying to find some targets to build up for the rail. A couple shots in. Disrupting shot forces have to slide away. He'll jump back up on top of the girls. Hasn't really been able to build up that rail charge to try to find an instant pick so far. And no one's really that close to ultimates yet. Aggressive in the back line. Could be Shu and Aim God. I think they might be the first for the ultimates. Funny Asher actually really getting hit now as well. Low HP, but no one's down. Balasria, there it is. That's the first one they're looking for. Yeah, rail shot not connecting, but Happy still forcing position here against the Fusion members. Now MN3 very much out of position. Ends up getting clipped. Vixa will manage to exit, but they need Balasria to come back in no. if they want to be able to defend this point A again. I think there was a high likelihood if they don't give that kill to Bellas Rio or anybody for the 5v4. Funny Astro goes for the tempo beat, then Ellie Gladiators use their advantage of having the first ultimate. Now the fusion getting ready for the retake. This will be the Katsune rush coming on through. More ultimates from the fusion as well once this fight goes longer. Healing, there's the rush for Rush. Astro holds the beat. Death Blossom comes in from right, Kester. Susan. Everybody exits away from it, so not going to be able to fight any eliminations. The Suzu, as you say, is huge. Fixa now has the second beat. Fusion, the upper hand in the fight, and Reiner going to be the first one to get taken down. They successfully retake the cart for now. 1.28 meters left to go. Gladiators get close, but of course they have some more time to work through. But half the time bank has been drained down. Victor frags as well. Reiner dying despite the sound happy. barrier. Now happy getting that frag. That's going to be forcing the Philadelphia Fusion into a really weird spot. Zed pulls trigger. It's not going to be enough. Yep, got the shot. And the alley oop is there on to fix up. Finds the kill. As you say, Zed's not getting anything at all. With the Death Blossom, the cleanup comes through. And it's going to be just shy of four Hello. minutes now as we go into the second phase of Route 66. Okay. It's once again happy. He does the job. He gets the trick done. Finds the frag required for the glass to get the cap. So only one failed fight there, roughly. Ali Gladi is otherwise getting some decent pace going through Route 66. It's Philadelphia Fusion now sitting on just a primal, mirrored by Reiner, also having that same primal. Fusion currently don't have any high ground to work through, though. They've currently got a flank. Bellas Rhea forced primal. Goes for it. Reiner just up onto the high ground, shifts away. The cart rolling as the primal of his own, and Bellafree is not going to be able to really find anything. Doesn't set up for any eliminations either. It got getting dove on as the TP oh, comes just across, dead. but then it's instantly met with dead Chu. Able to line up a kunai, nicely set up. MN3 dead once more. Happy with a headshot, very much looking like himself now. Bellafree will find one, but Chu's just absolutely man right now in the fight. Oh, this is cap. such a swift take on B. They can oh, definitely yeah. cap off this as well. I mean, there's not really many players alive for the fusion. But it's really just respawns. They can't touch. They gotta give this one up. It's done and dusted. What is that? Only one fight on B? That is incredible from the LA Gladiators. I mean, what mastery shown in that offense. You see Reiner putting the pressure on towards Aim God and Shu is there to receive the communication there. Like, yeah, we're gonna force a swift step. He knows he's not getting the kill, but he knows one of his teammates will. Do you even call it a fight? It was pretty much just a primal from Bellas Rhea, and then everybody else is getting taken primal. one after the other. He got taken down to such yeah, low HP, I... they forced primal, and, and then you look at the Gladiators, they don't do anything because they don't have to. They're chilling on the payload while Bellas Rhea is trying to live, just trying to fight for survival. 
Gladiators are playing this to a T right now. Kevs are just eating the damage, rates away for a brief little moment. Now the rush comes in from Shu, aim gun gonna be matching. Look to the Reapers to try to find some impact. Kevs are going to the back line, nice little boop. Forces away the death block of Bellatory is still low on HP and the Lucio shielding does expire. Kevs to pushes into the bubble and there is just no peel, no hope for the little scientist on the side of the fusion. He's taken down M3, however, pops the overclock, will fight two quick kills. In got and Funny Astro. Trade it out. As it looks like finally the fusion will find some semblance of stability. Man, what a clutch. Him and three pulls through on an overclock. He's like, gotta put the ga game into my own hands here. Yeah, fix it even gets a frag in the between. LA Gladius look like they were gonna handle that fight. They were even pretty surprised, I would say. That fusion managed to come through that many kills. Ended up being a 2v3. The fusion having the three. Glad's only the two DPS plays alive, no one else. He just gets away on one HP, but now they have to fight up against Happy's overclock. Okay, and uh, oh, Seth just can't do that. Happy instantly doubles up his trying to get into position to use that Death Blossom, and now they're being rerouted. The cart getting closer and closer, but now he's not pushing. Still so damn close to the completion. Happy, however, does overstep. Goes a little bit too deep, ends up falling as well. Ryder is fixed, is filling the kill feed. The battle, Lucio making a return, and he'll make his exit. Stays alive, keeps the rest of the squad topped up as well. Nice little boop to force Funny Astro into the ceiling to get the kill. And another recovery from the fusion there is on, but that was another 4v5. Concerned that Happy pops overclock, Zest gets domed straight away, as you say. A fusion, understanding there's two options there. You back out into spawn, or you go hard and heavy straight into the Alley Gladiators 4v5, and that works out for them. Multi frags, fixer, like you said as well, getting super active. Surprising for the loose joke, but it works out. Well, Alec Gladiator is losing quite a decent amount of time here. That's uh, good will being brought up from A and B in terms of how quickly they capped it, and that's being shredded. Okay, the rush is in. Zest ripping apart Reiner, pops the primal, and actually just makes his exit, so won't be able to utilize that ult too, too much. Just uses it as a bailout tactic. Sound barrier is there from Pixit as well once you decides to pop his own Kitsune Rush. Kips are there. Zest has death lost him. Kipsa so far has been getting mad value on that. Okay, there it is. Zest is the only one that doesn't receive the shielding. Death Blossom into the back line. MN3 gonna be taken down. The answering Blossom shut down. Zest unable to find anything. Fix it again. The one coming up with a kill. TP out from Aim God. Belsria down at half HP. The contest touch to come in and needs to happen right now. The push away. They force Fix up back. And that is going to be the Gladiators getting to the end of the map. But just 59 seconds remaining, so we do have to give some credit over to Fusion with a defense in the yeah. final stretch because the defense was widely absent on the first two points. And Bella Sharia going down there, not quite alive or in position to go for the final touch. I think, like you said, Fixer got booped away as well. So Fusion can't quite continue there, but LA Gladiators with uh, still, I think, a pretty reasonable time bank, all things considered, right? C ended up being a bit more of a slowdown than the Glads would have been happy to receive. But a full finish here is possibly more than enough if you consider how history has gone. Fusion were not able to finish the map versus London. London got the three points here for the full cap. Actually, when you really think about it, both of these teams lost to London, which is why they're facing up right now. These uh, the victims of the London Spitfire firing off. The Fusion needed to get more done than what they had versus that London Route 66 match. Uh, they need to actually finish it, and hopefully with time as well. So we're looking towards the A and B offenses, which for the Gladiators was super quick. For the Fusion as well, you need similar pace. That they certainly do. MN3 going to be looking to recreate some of that Kevster magic with an opening pick, but something tells me that Gladiators are going to be well prepared for it, and that Chu is likely not going to just tip his head out from around the corner. Five, four, three, two, one. This is only step one as well. I mean, yeah, Kepsta managed to get the shot, but then Gladiators further forward had that opening first blood as well. I believe it was Belisaria dying early. We're in this together. So multiple things working out for Gladiators offense on A. Let's see if any of that happens for Fusion, because so far they still have to dislodge the Gladiators forward hold. But now a lot of people fighting, but Reiner again is going to get picked off. Funny Astro sliding in from behind. Not much that he can do. Needs to try to make his way out of here, but picks up. It's going to be a lot of staggers. Back, so it's not going to be any escape for him, and that's going to be a good amount of distance opened up here for the Fusion. But of course, the Glads will have enough time to get reset and yeah. prepared for a contest. 
Well, the staggers are important here because as we reach the corner to get on top of Big Earls, two members are still coming back from spawn. So instantly, you see this balance rear, the rest of the team, they take high ground control. This is something the Gladiators could do earlier because when they had their same A attack, they only got the one kill and Fusion had a full wave of respawns. There were no staggers here. With the staggers, Fusion have way more map control. Happy though. Off angle high ground for him. He's spotted and noted. Still, when he's got that rail charged up, you have to be concerned about him. Swap sides. That gladiator's just kind of shifting, yeah. Big girls conceded. They took they'll take the tunnels. As fix up needs to stay safe in the rail, it goes wide. And now Fusion get payload controls off, so this works out pretty reasonable for them. Both teams on the low ground here. Katuna rush about the online aim god so far here, shoe lagging behind. Yep, there's the rush coming through, but look at the HP bars right now on the side of the Fusion. Happy, able to find one. Astro had the beat, dropped it in. Helps keep them alive for now, but Reiner still falls. Bellas Rhea is swiping away like a madman as he's rushed up. Absolutely insane, just throwing the arms. And despite the initial kill, it's still going to be the Fusion trading that brings up, pushing up, forward. Brings a new meaning to throwing hands right there. He's got the whirlwind arms gone. I mean, good god. And funny, Asher, I mean, thank goodness that LA Gladys at least had that ultimate, but you really need the Katuna rush, and Shu is so far behind, he still doesn't quite have it yet. He'll have it now for the retake. This will be a very similar retake as what we saw from Fusion last time around. Him and three, the look for Oak has it, uses it. And Find it 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 there, finds Reiner. Yeah, he was so damn close to having that primal online. That could be a big turning point unless the rest of the team can clutch out. Death Blossom from Kevs are off screen. Not going to be able to find anything. Think he might have used it in that tunnel off of the left hand side of the car. Oh, now with Shoot Ball. That's going to be the cap coming in. Very similar time banks here as we get ready to go into the second stretch. I mean, so well played there by MN3. He snipes down arguably the most important member. If Reiner gets primal there, I think that's a maybe successful defense. You start batting people towards Kevs' Death Blossom as well. The Alec Gladys have a much more successful fight. At minimum, they delay the cap for a much longer time. At least the Gladys will get this respawn, get active quickly. They don't want to lose the speed. Part of the map the way that Fusion did, which is with a bit of a whimper. This ends now. Overclock, slide up over the top. Happy, looking for a target. He saw MN3, he saw Zest. He wants to try to eliminate Let's one of them, but just couldn't quite find him. Now the ult's going to expire. So Halo's stuck trail, though. But it's going to start decaying here pretty soon. And as you say, the payload has been locked into position for now. Reiner playing just up above the members of the fusion. As they try to get him oh, happy, man. but he's found Pixa. Great punish. More time fought. That's plus success. Not going to find too much. He's trying to clear the cart out. Reiner receives the shielding here from the sound barrier. They push into the bubble, trying to get the punish. They still continue to take him low lower, lower, but looks like he may be out of there. Bellas Rhea does hold the ultimate. He's going to continue to hold it. Doesn't need it. Gets the kill. Reiner taking down the cart now moving again for the fusion. Yeah, great call there from Bellas Rhea. Had the opportunity for the prime, but knows he's got the kill to Reiner. Now the staggers coming in through. And boy, are they big staggers as well. The LA Gladiators lose multiple there as the final push comes on in. However, here's a key difference. When Glads were in this position, they can't. There was no final contest. There should be now final contest from the Gladiators, given that the payload is not quite at the end. A full five-member respawn is there. Reiner in position to go for the play. Oh. After taking a lot of damage as he tries to get out of the door, Bellas Reed just holding it. Reiner now going to be left down on that low ground alongside Kevster. Shoot joins in, TPing down to try to keep them alive. Well, Bellas Reed just goes in deeper and deeper, trying to wreak havoc, trying to find these eliminations. Takes Funny Astro down to about half, can't make it happen, but now needs to come back in with the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. The rush one. comes in from Shu, and they're looking to turn the fight now that they're split away from the tank. MN3 taken out. Bellas Rhea picked off on the back end. Fusion have overstepped, they've overstayed, and Gladiators now have control of the cart once again. What excellent juggle of the aggro there from the LA Gladiators. I mean, I don't know if you paid attention to the HP bars, but so many members of the Gladiators were super low, but they would not go down. Shu barely gets the Katuna rush in time, uses it. Speaking of juggles, Bellas Rhea has a primal. He was keeping two to three members at bay the entire time from actually touching the payload. And when the Katuna rush from Shu comes down, only half the Gladiators can actually use it, but it's enough. And the subsequent oh. fight, Happy gets another kill. Well, the LA Gladiators continue the speed defense. Look at the time whittled down. How will Fusion supposed to finish the map with this little time remaining? It might still be able to make it happen, but with time remaining, certainly not. If they can get the cap right now, it would give them two and a half minutes, and they would have to steamroll to try to get close. I mean, they're not matching the 59. Remaining. They're definitely not matching Glad's 59, so it'll be an OT finish, if anything. Okay. Double support ultimates here for Fusion. Backside. 
themselves into the back. Death Blossom from Kempster, not gonna find anything. He gets melted down and back. Now Death Blossom in from Seth. Just chews through the sound barrier shielding and Money Astro offered up for his squad. And that'll be the cleanup coming through. Reiner wisely holds on to the Primal Rage for the next phase of the map. Yes, cleanup is there, they can finally start moving, but yeah, it's gonna be yep. shy of two minutes now. Oh, they the need snowballs in. They need big snowball potential here, and they're currently out of ultimates. They don't have anything really big coming online. Reiner can always stall with his Primal. Have to really credit the fixer there for the well-timed sound barry. It just barely, I think, blocks up Gipster's uh, Death Blossom, Happy pops the overclock as well. Has to chew through that green HP. So the fixer could not have timed that better. The gladiators, look, they waste no time. They just instantly get on the payload. They're trying to burn yeah. this timer down even further. I love it. It's perfectly played. Exactly what you want to do. Because even if you lose here, you have plenty of time to recontest. Spy time off the time bank. They've already guaranteed that they're going to have the superior one. If not fully denied the fusion from having a time bank at all. Happy gonna be taken out. Bell's Rea finding one. So Primal Ward trying to get this cart rolling, and now the Primal's gonna have to be used. Bell's Rea just trying to displace him as best as possible. The rush committed to the fight by Shill. Looking for some targets here. Thinks it takes a little bit of a zapping, but overall it's still gonna be alright. Bell's Rea jumps back in with the rest of the team, just trying to displace Reiner at all costs. And he saves. Should be helping for a little bit longer, but Avegod eventually finds that elimination. But I mean, Glads are more than happy to just throw corpses at yeah. the heart. I mean, that's so good from Reiner there as well. He saves the Primal Rage, knows that this is not the critical fight they need to win. Shu trades, it's good unit rush for Bellas Rhea's Primal Rage. So even though Fusion get past it in this choke, they had to spend ultimates for it. And Gladi has come out ahead because at 35 seconds remaining, Fusion are under a lot of pressure here. And Glads are able to hit some of the timings for their own ultimates. By the time that Fusion want to fight, this might be oh. good, especially with that kill. Huge pick from Shill. 23 seconds remaining. Staggers! They need to tuck out of here as quickly as possible, and Pix is taken down as well. Glass can spawn camp! More time bought. They can just chill, they can sort of just chill the choke here, wait for the spawns to come through. Fusion have to go for the touch, there are 10 seconds remaining. They can't swap heroes because they got four ultimates to play through. Glad's actually back out a little bit. This is going to be the fight, maybe in this lane here. Aim God's positioning for this Katsune rush is going to be everything. They jump over, Reiner goes into the back line. The Primal now popped, he's looking to isolate a target. Like everybody has been elusive though, and now the cart starts moving forward. Rush still held, the sound barrier gone. Plenty Astro drops in the beat. MN3 is taken down. That's the overclock now, completely unaccounted for in the fight. Kempster with the death blossom, not going to be able to find anything. Happy applying pressure from the back line, slides away for a brief little moment. Sets as well, oh. not getting much of anything done with a blossom of his own. Ape God, headshot taken down. The clad have this map in their hands, and it looks like they are not going to drop it. They are firmly grasping it. The cleanup comes through, Edmund 3 finally gets to use his overclock, he gets a kill with it, but not the map win. The map pick for the fusion does not work out, the gladiators successfully defend, they stop extra innings from coming through, and now they move up the match point. And the more things change, the more things they stay the same here. Once again, the Philadelphia fusion will choose Route 66, they will fail to complete the map. I only get the two points there. And when push comes to shove at the end, the LA Gladiators mastery of just stalling that payload plane for the time at the end, that very early push out from the defensive side to get on the payload in a choke of C, so masterfully played. Just wasting the time of Fusion, when Fusion actually have the superior ultimates as well. Too much pressure, B took far too long as well. Gladiators, considering how fast they got through A and B, that was the key difference maker to allow them to fully finish the map, but Fusion did not have the same time remaining. Now Fusion are on their last leg. They will have their selection as we get ready to go into push, and I think that you and I can take a very good stab in the dark as far as what that map pick is going to be. I'm expecting to see some new Queen Street unless they want to throw a curveball, but they need to get a win there to take us into a game five if they want to stay alive. So don't go anywhere. The action continues in just a few.
sports fans and competitors, they ask the same question. Who is the greatest? So far, the Gladiators have thrown the gauntlet down. The LA Gladiators remain undefeated. Kemp has found the play, killer vigilante already. Kemp's now, heads upstairs, he sees Kai on his own and track, it's a deep flake elimination. It's all over, there is nothing left in the Atlanta rain. Oh, let's break it, for Look at these health bars. Oh. Here's seven final blows. Yeah. The Gladiators snuffing out the fuel's flame. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Los Angeles Gladiators. A bit more to cheer for right now for the Gladiators and their fans as they have the lead in the series. But before we go into what could be our final map of this set, let's take a closer look yep. at the Kiriko showdown between Aim God and Shu. I had my criticisms of Shu early on, especially on Oasis, but I think the last two maps you really start to catch up, especially on King's Row. I know we'll look at the Route 66 stats here, but uh, the King's Row stats, I think, were even better for Shu here. Shu was very competitive. I think he got some really good shots up, some really nice kills. The one area that I think Shu still lacks and falls behind Aim God is in the charge rate of the actual Katsune Rush Ultimate, and some of that is represented by the healing statistics as well. So in that last map on uh, Route 66 here, we have Aim God still healing about three 3,000 more, so 16,500 for Aim God, 13,500 for Shu, and those numbers do add up. That you know roughly gets you a couple of extra ultimates, definitely one extra ultimate, and we saw some of those timings there where Shu was just slightly behind, especially after the neutrals, right? Where Shu was even, I think, up to 30% behind of Aim God in the opening neutral on A. So that has the one area that Shu still needs to be looking at, despite now catching up on the other, other areas of the uh, statistics. Well, we'll see if Aim God is going to be able to, you know, maybe catch up in some of the other metrics or if Shu will just fully take the lead. It all comes down to this for the fusion as we get ready to go into push. This could very well be the last map that the squad plays here in the 2022 season unless they can get a win and take us to another map of control. I mean, you think back to Oasis, how one-sided an affair that was at the end of those rounds with fusion getting the 2-0. If we go back to control, you maybe start to favor them a bit more in that regard, but they still have to get through this next one. And I think the good news for Fusion is they've been a pretty successful and consistently successful rush team. Uh, when I say rush team, I mean push team. We'll see if they're a good rush team as well. They need to be a good rush team on a push map as part of the reason why Fusion go to so many map fives is because, you know, they can pretty consistently win push, take us to a map five. Now, whether they win that map five or not has been pretty 50-50 over the course of the regular season. And that like Gladiators as well, they had a very shocking loss to London Spitfire on Colosseo, I believe, in that particular series over the course of four maps. That was the least competitive map from the Alec Gladiators out of all the four they played. It was a full capture for the London Spitfire, 140 meters to only a 25.75 meter capture by the Alec Gladiators. I mean, they barely got to play the payload at all. And I know you were alluding to a specific map choice before we got to this point before the uh, before the break there, Kilo. So you were mentioning maybe the new Queen Streak pick. However, this is going to be another one of those moments where, you know, we kind of feel like there's been historically a very strong map for the Fusion. In the case of Escort, that has been Circuit Royale. The Jin prefers Route 66 in the history for push. Has been the Queen Street, but today again, Jin prefers Esperanza. So, what is he cooking? We're about to find out. Yeah, well, let's see. I mean, I'm expecting, you know, more of the same as far as the cops are concerned. I don't think this pick is going to be coming through with any differentiation in that regard, but they must be feeling pretty damn confident in their play here on this map. We've already seen, I think this is what, the third time now that we'll have been seeing Esperanza in the yep. playoffs. Yep. So, still getting a good sense of how teams are going to look to play this one out, but somebody to keep your eye on. I mean, well, I was gonna say keep your eye on Zess because he's usually the one stealing the, the, the bot away, but that's usually yes. when he's playing the Tracer. Um, you can do it on other heroes as well, probably less effective on the Reaper. You get punished for it. So. Uh, as I sort of mentioned yesterday when we cast this map, much more consistent for teams to get that initial checkpoint capture, but the rest of the map can be a bit more dubious. So, two fights roughly is the benchmark for what it takes to get a point capture. And as you sort of mentioned, no changes in comps here as well. The early positionings I think will be also quite interesting, right? Just do both teams just fight for payload control right away? Does a team want to opt for more of the bridge control? Would be on the left side of where Glads are currently to the bottom side of the screen. And it's just going to be a raw neutral. Uh, both teams 
taking the same angles here with Bellas jumping in first. Self inserted right at the front line. Bubble in response to Ryan trying to keep people protected. Rail shot goes across, not gonna find an elimination yet. As we wait for the box to unlock. Just a couple seconds. But Bell's Rhea on the re-aggression. This time is punished. Kepster finds the opening kill. Now work certainly cut out for the fusion members. They go diving into the back line. Zest alongside Aim God trying to find something. A desperate play to turn the tide, but it comes up short. Cleanup is there. Glides in control. First to push. Comfortable first fight when Bellas Rhea falling down early. I mean, early in the series, we had mostly Ryan falling down early, and now is a Philadelphia Fusion that is unable to get any counter trades once Bellas Rhea is gone. Our aim goes low here, so all happy somehow gets him down, and a disruptor shot will have the finisher there. No Suzu, no Swift Step, not too sure what happened there, but it will cost Fusion more yeah. time. Technically not a fight, but watch the payload distance. It's getting very close now. Talk about that charge giving the kills. Aim God is a little bit further behind Shu. Not by too much though, so still Static extra death. pace, but the big difference is funny Astro versus Mix up. It's actually two deaths. Jumped right on God. there for a brief little moment. Yeah. Not been a good start so far, but it does finally get locked in place. Well, the key bars there for some of the fusion members. They do manage to Oh, Bellas missed the jump! Longer, but Bellas again, yeah, doesn't quite have it. Can't make his way into the window, and the glads are just feasting. What? Well, that's gonna be Kappa's off. Easy cap, three fight wins in a row. Snowballing now from the Gladius, and they haven't used any ultimates right with the late kill to fix it. This is going from bad to worse for the Philadelphia Fusions. Take a look at the situation again. Aim God, full HP, and then, uh, uh he's trying to hide. Oh, the Suzu doesn't land. The Suzu must have been half a second off. It was the Swift Step on cooldown. Maybe, I think he might have used the Swift Step out of spawn to teleport to a player, then get caught out, doesn't have the Suzu to hit. And that's it. Now we're gonna go trade on the Katuna Rush. Okay, jump into the back there, looking for Hab, and the sound barrier does come out in response. Funny Astro trying to keep him safe. The rush not gonna get much done either. Fusion able to persevere with a rush of their own. So that is a much needed fight for the Philly. Fusion, one ult committed. So, they get two out of the Gladiators. They now have control, but the distance let me say this. is still so monstrous. This is important to note, by the way. Angos died three times, and yet he still has a Katuna Rush on pace with Shu, who hasn't died, has not died. So that's what I'm saying. Shu is consistently still behind Aimgod in, in ultimate build time. The fact that he has three extra lives with Aimgod, he should have been way more relief. And nice and done. TP up onto the high ground. Funny Astro doesn't get out of there in time. Ends up dying. And MN3, and use the overclock as well. Comes up with two kills for himself. Cleanup continues. The bot, however, is still very far yep. to go. They, they need look to tie this up. Yeah, they need about uh, oh, two to three, three fights, fights maybe here. Definitely one more fight to get the cap. I think they can get the cap within one more, given how far away Gladiators are. But Gladys have ults to use here. They have plenty of resources. Even three cops shot on his way in. So it, it, if nothing else, I mean, Bellas and Fixer will have to pop ultimate here. But the two DPS ults from the Gladiators, it's going to be hard to get past. Belsria first to Primal, Ryan are now going to be matching. Kepsa drops down, keeps the bot locked in place, just going back and forth here against Zest. Overclock is not from Happy. Looking for some targets, gets chunked down to about half HP. Death Blossom in from Kepster, not going to be able to find anything. Just zones back to Fusion for the time being. Bot does start moving, but they'll catch it here in the underpass. Watch this trade coming up. Aim God 85, side, but... Shu 66. Once yeah. again, he will be outpacing Shu. And this is going to be important. Fix it! No, fix it! Dying. That's everything. That is everything. Now Glass of 5v4. I thought the drop down maybe was enough to save him, but no, Funny Astro manages to get line of sight, finishes him off with a nice little headshot. Yeah, that'll be the cleanup, and once Man. again, Gladiators in control, the bot not even halfway. What a bailout. The distance it, right now. If Fixer doesn't go down, and forget about it, the second player dies as well, but consider the 5v4 first of all. It's a weird situation for Fusion to be in, because they want to use this Katuna Rush. It would have been a really good situation, yeah. but Gladys don't have a response, but as soon as they lose one, your ability to pull through that ultimate starts to wane. Even if you do pull it for a 4v5, doesn't feel good. So Gladius with a very clutch kill. I mean, if they do not get that kill, I don't even know if they realize how much trouble they could have been in. Now they're going forward spawn, Zest dead, the rail shot from Happy gets him in the head, Aim God needs to TP out, he does, still is at risk, and now he's going to be stomped, Reiner leaps in to find the kill, and the Glads are going to be pushing once more right now, they're not even paying attention to the bot, somebody moves back to go ahead and bring it forward, but this is looking very dire, as yeah, 100 it's... meters is about to be online for the Glads. It will be, and this is a lot of distance for Fusion to try and catch up on, I don't, I don't even know if it's... 
Well, it's certainly possible, but uh, probable, unlikely. They still haven't touched yet. We're nearly at 110. This is free push. Fusion uh, just not active enough to stop this. 111, that's too much. Overclock from MN3 needs to find some value, but with the sound barrier out from Funny Astro, it becomes that much more difficult to make it happen. However, it still finds Kempsters. The shielding expires, but Happy will find Zeth, and they've got him taken down moments before. Belisria narrowly builds up the primal rage, gets the pop on that one, tries to displace Happy, who has since popped the overclock. A couple shots through. He's getting juggled back over towards the fusion spawn room doors. Reiner, in the meantime, taken down. They will finally get the kill. They've got again, though. Respawn sends right back into the room as Shu finds that elimination. The bot for now will be in control of the fusion, but they're gonna maybe get this okay. into a neutral position, but you have the, to remember the glass have the forward spawn. Well, uh, yeah, they do. And it seems like Shu will be able to confirm the spawn. Yes, he does. He was the latest member dead, and the payload not quite able to be shoved back in. Reiner instantly, he's even contesting from the high ground. That's a bit cheeky. There's the gladiators prevent the payload from even denying the neutral, uh, the, the forward spawn. Look, it doesn't even hit the mid. Yeah, starting to move again. He's gonna rush out from Shu. Sound barrier there from Fixa to try to keep them safe. Money Astro now is gonna be trying to build up for his own sound barrier to match Eighth God's rush. He's gonna be there in about 20%. Forward spawn now lost. Reiner taken down. Death Blossom comes through. Kempster's trying to get on top of MN3, but he can't make it happen. MN3 instead. A up double spawn. Three kills here in the fight. Can't quite get the fourth, but yeah, still. Scrappy, bloody, okay. not clean whatsoever, and clean is what Fusion need. And and they don't have enough players alive, right? And in fact, they're not even really going to be able to... They're not going to get it. Uh, it looks like M3 is more concerned about finding a rail charge. I mean, part of me would have preferred him to go for the push, but at the same time, I fully understand, right? They need some firepower in this next neutral. They need a straight-up kill. And the fact that Happy just gets double supports on his way out, I mean, even Shu gets a break. That's far too much for Fusion to lose. There's MN3 though. Okay, instant pop, instant kill. MN3 finds Happy. A good start. Funny Astro about to have the beat. Now is online. Is he committed here to the rest of the fight? I see Gladiators just kind of getting in behind the Philadelphia Fusion members. And now the sound barrier will have the trigger pulled. MN3 pulling back, shoot, pursuing, looking for the kill. A little bit of kill here for MN3. Goes down that disruptive shot. Still oh, trying to buy oh. some space, but eventually Astro gets his mark. Finds the kill. Now it's limited tools here for the Fusion. Fix up Aim God both down on slippers of HP, but Happy does get swiped. Bellas Rio with the primal rage finds him, finds the elimination. Fix up nearly getting zapped out of midair. And to stay alive at least for a little bit longer here, but Zest does fall. Kepster getting the elimination. Bot brought forward. Gets closer and closer towards that checkpoint that the fusion so desperately need. Glad to vault. else to have those forward spawns, but with Bellas Rio going down to the class once more in control. And look at the ult. And fusion just can't get a cap here, no matter how hard they try. 45 meters. No dice. M3 has to be careful not to get killed here. Ryan, a one step. Oh my goodness, or oh. even better primal for it. Might get additional value here. Gets a secondary aim gun. There's nowhere to go. And this is now falling to pieces once more for the fusion. I mean, Zest as well. Nobody else. He used the Blossom. He used the Blossom. And then Shu instantly kills him. He said, yep. die once. And then was wiped off the face of the earth. And die he did. And by the way, that 117 is now 120 plus. And Fusion are at risk of being capped out. Beat drop. Rush from Shu. Overclock now from Happy as well. Looking for some targets. Zest gonna be the first one to fall. Funny after his hands push up around the corner. It's Happy a white. Happy it's a white. And it is just not even close. They absolutely sweep them under the rug. The Gladiators will once again occupy the bot and start moving forward to victory. Could be our first ever finish on his like bronzer. The, line. the touch comes through from Zest for a brief moment. Velsria able to join back in, even if the Fusion can win this fight. There's just 38 seconds remaining. The sound barrier comes in now from Funny Astro. Velsria, he hits the floor. He's a sliver, and he is taken down. Shu finds the headshot. This is it. That should just be the beginning of the end. Shu with a second kill. Zest out of there. Happy fights MN3. And that will do it. The cleanup comes in. The bot will complete the map and the Gladiators will stay alive. A 3-1 victory for them in this series as they eliminate the Philadelphia Fusion from the 2022 playoffs. And the Gladiators live on to fight another day. The arena is where their lifeblood is, and they will come back for another challenger in that lower bracket. Yesterday versus the London Spitfire, they were capped out on Coliseo. A very disappointing look on that push map today on Esperanza, which is, by the way, 
the Philadelphia Fusions map choice, the LA Gladiators will find our first ever Overwatch League Esperanza full map completion. And with flying colors as well, the Philly Fusion did not even get the checkpoint here. And as you mentioned, their season is over, their run is done, at least S got to play one more match of Overwatch before the season is over. Beyond this as well, the rest of the teammates here, Carpe who played on day number one with his future uncertain, unknown, his contract expiring at the end of this year, five years on the Philadelphia Fusion. And next year, we don't know what's gonna happen. What will Carpe's legacy say after season five? For me, still the best player to have never won a title. I think you could definitely make that argument for sure, but it's going to be an unfortunate way to end things here for the Fusion to make their way over to North America. First land for a, a lot of these players. I mean, I guess we could count the, the one that happened here in South Korea as well. So maybe second land, but we, given the stakes, first big major tournament for them. And unfortunately, it ends in a 0-2 match record. Gladiators, however, m looking much more like the team that we anticipated coming into the playoffs yeah, sure. much more of a force to be reckoned with they they finally ride the ship they say okay you know what happy on sojourn good kevster improved his reaper performances compared to what we saw yesterday and they, they very much found their stride but there is yeah. only one player of the match after all and that of course has to go to happy i think so i think it's just well played across the entire uh, series, and I think even for some other members that start to heat up towards the end, like Kevs' Reaper started to look a bit better. Shoes, uh, Rico definitely looked a lot better towards the end. Oh yeah. Uh, but Happy, I mean, you can see it from the early highlights on Oasis. Guess what? Those other guys didn't show up on this map. Happy dead, despite Gladi is, I think, getting quite diffed on Oasis, to be quite fair. Happy was a one member keeping alive. Nine out of 16 final blows, easily uh, deadlifting for his team, even though they lost. And, now, when you look at the other highlights of the other maps, you start to see his impact. I mean, the final blows, the first floods, everything he's been doing, whether he's got the overclock or not. But even on Esperanza as well, where he just finds these critical shots and these critical kills, and that one trade sequence when it looks like Fusion are finally winning a fight. Guess what? Happy, when Glides are down, he still just kills the Fusion support line by himself. No issues. Unbelievable performance. And this is exactly why, as well, we were so kind of boggled in the mind about what was going on with the, the juggling of the two DPS plays. Sometimes Happy's on Sojin, sometimes he's on Reaper. Kev's is playing both the heroes as well. I think Clyde's have figured it out. I don't know why it took them the song to figure it out, but Happy is your Sojin play. He's got far more experience, far more time on this hero, far more consistent on this hero, and the first bloods and stats prove it. That they do. I mean, what a turnaround performance from, from everybody on the Gladiators is very much worth saying, because I mean, Everybody looked completely out of sorts yesterday. Funny Astro wasn't finding good timing to the sound barriers. They weren't being able to play off the back of those. The Kitsune rushes were falling shy. But this was very much just, I, I think we can now say that yesterday was a bit of A, London performing incredibly well, and B, Gladiators just being off. This was them fully turned, turning up. This was them showing the performances that we have come to expect from these players, from yeah. this team. They look damn good, but their work obviously is not done yet. They will have to play again tomorrow against whoever wins our next series, which is still going to be two formidable pro for, uh, two formidable opponents <laughs> in their own right. Because, oh boy, we've yeah. got the San Francisco yeah. Shock going up Take against your the Shanghai Take your Dragons. <laughs> This one's gonna be wild. I just hope that both teams can come out here and perform at their absolute best. Give me that five mapper. We fell just shy of the mark here on it in this first series of the day. If we can get the five in the second, I'll be damn happy. But yeah. we're gonna go to a quick little break here. The desk will break down the action from our first elimination series of the playoffs, and then we will return for that incredible rivalry matchup with the Shockers, the Dragons. So don't go anywhere. Monkey, 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 monkey. Let's go! Good job. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Butterfinger. Crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery. No one lays a finger on your Butterfinger.
Welcome back, everybody, to Game Break. I'm Danny Lim here, joined by player of the match, Happy, just uh, getting the win against the Philadelphia Fusion. Happy, congratulations on the win. Now, I got to first start off asking, you know, yesterday, uh, you guys had a, you know, unfortunately, you guys lost the London Spitfire, but you guys look to be improved today. So, uh, what sort of adjustments did you guys make coming into today's match? 자, 해피엔서 오늘 어, 승리를 축하드리면서 어, 어제 아쉽게도 패배를 한 이후에 오늘 굉장히 더 좋은 모습을 보여줬다고 생각을 합니다. 어, 오늘 경기를 위해서 어, 어제 패배 이후 어, 좀 어떤 조정, 좀 어떤 변환이 있었나요? 팀적으로. 어, uh, alright, I don't think Happy is hearing me. Happy, do you do you hear me? Hello? Maybe. <laughs> nope. Hello, hello. Happy. All right. Sorry, guys. All right, sorry, guys. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, we're having some technical issues, so we're gonna go back to the break. Zoe, take it away. Thank you so much, Danny. Well, you tried. We tried. Zoe, we certainly tried. But, that was uh, sick. Yeah, we, we might come back to that one a little later. Definitely uh, gonna keep on at it. Thank you so much, Danny. Uh, let's talk about the match we just got to witness. <laughs> Gladiators did end up on top, but looked a little scary there at the very beginning however reinforced i mean heading into this match there was just one wish on your list and that was uh to actually see happy on that sojourn and that's what you got that's what i got and it yeah. worked out for the la gladiators obviously i'm not going to pretend that that was like the entire thing like oh my god <laughs> they swapped the players and like oh my god it worked but no it did help the consistency and i think we can both agree that Kevster did play well on the Reaper overall and happy on that soldier and this is what we like to see him on and he has some real impact moments on that hero but to kick things off Jaws, I mean we saw the Philadelphia Fusion come out and win the first map this is a roster that improved themselves and look pretty good considering you know their relatively poor performance against the Lonos Bitfire that was a good toss Johnny I like that I like it from <laughs> No, it was good. Um, look, it, it's, I think it's a bit strange with the Gladiators coming into this meta because you don't really you don't really have too many questions about Shu and Funny Astro in the back line playing Kuroko and Lucio. That's kind of you'd expect Shu to be an absolute god gamer on that pick. Um, has showed just like exceptional level performances of the Kuroko, but you know maybe a bit of a, a slower start there. Although I don't think the peak of the hero has been reached yet, of course. But I mean, it was a bit of a question with uh, Kevster and Happy, but just getting Happy on a hit scan roll like Sojourn, who starts off a lot of fights and sets the tempo for a lot of games, just getting those railgun headshots is uh, super important. So it's good that Glads find their footing. And honestly, this loser's bracket is crazy. Like, what is this loser's bracket? Like, no team wants to be playing in here right now. Like, like Philadelphia Fusion, it's very unlucky that they went out, but would you want to play any other teams in here? Like, uh, judging uh, on the performances from yesterday? Unlucky Fusion fans. I mean, have to play the Gladiators first round in the loser's bracket. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, loser's bracket, is that, is that's not supposed to happen in the no. loser's bracket. No. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little unlucky. A, a few final words maybe about the Philadelphia Fusion and what we've seen, not just in this match, but also, of course, throughout the entirety of the 2022 season, as this was their last showing. Yeah, I mean, this has been a team that impressed us throughout, because I think going into the season, we talked a lot about the rookies coming in. Obviously, they refurbished their roster. Fix is a rookie, MN3, Cest, Belosria. These are all rookies coming into the league. But they impressed us throughout with all these tournaments, right? They made the finals um, of the kickoff clash in the Eastern region. They were the APAC team in the mid-season madness that went the furthest, further than Shanghai Dragons, the Seoul Dynasty. And now they go out the first round in the playoffs. Obviously massively disappointing for this team, um, but you can't understate what an amazing season overall they've had. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more of rookies like Cest, for example, in 2023. Absolutely. Anything you want to add? Yeah, we'll probably see MN3 and Zest back again. <laughs> like, there's no way. If they don't stick on the Philadelphia Fusion, they'll probably be on another team. Like, MN3's already shown up to be a very cracked hit scan player. And it's pretty hard to be uh, a cracked hit scan player and stand above the rest because of how many there actually are in the league right now. So, there's, uh, yeah, there's more hope in the future for them. Absolutely. So uh, once again, thanks to everyone from the Philadelphia Fusion for putting up a show for us throughout the season. Sad to see you go, but you made it to the playoffs, so that is a win in and of itself. Now, we do have Danny standing by once again with Happy, so let's give this one another try. Thank you so much, Zoe. All right, let's uh, give this a try one more time. Happy, can you hear me? Oh, that's me. 
Oh, to the other leader. All right, guys, we got him. I got him. Oh, happy. Congratulations, first of all, uh, on the win. And I just want to say, uh, after, you know, losing to London yesterday, you guys look to be improved today. So my first question was, you know, what sort of adjustments did you guys make coming into today's series? 자, 일단, 너무나도 다행이네요. 해피 선수 이렇게 들릴, 들릴 수 있게 돼서 너무 다행이고 어제 아쉽게 패배를 한 이후에 오늘 굉장히 좀더 좋은 모습을 보여주셨는데 어, 오늘 경기를 위해서 좀 어떤, 어제 패배 이후에 좀 어떤 조정을 했고, 팀적으로 어, 좀 어떤 변환이 있었나요? 어, 사실 어제 뭐 딱히 뭐 전략적으로 그런 거에 대해서 문제가 없었다고 생각을 하고 그냥 저희끼리 합이 너무 안 맞았던 것 같아요. 그래가지고 어제 어제랑 오늘 이제 좀 단합을 잘할수 있도록 그런 노력을 한것 같습니다. Alright, so I guess strategy or gameplay wise, I don't think we had a, we had much problem. I think the only problem that we had uh, from yesterday's match was I think the teamwork. There were a lot of little kinks that we needed to work on. Uh, the teamwork wasn't there, so that was a major problem. So coming into today's match, we really wanted to focus on that and to sort of work out our teamwork better. And I think that's what really helped today and what really showed today. Um, I completely agree as well. And I think another big thing for you guys today, what I saw was you playing that Sojourn. Uh, while yesterday it was you and Kefta sort of going back and forth playing the Sojourn, but today you stuck on that main uh, Sojourn role. So how did the Gladiators come up with that decision? 자, 어, 방금 말씀하셨듯이 뭐, 팀합도 중요하지만 제가 봤을 때는 어, 오늘 승리에 좀 크게 기여한 게 해피 선수의 소전이 아닌가 싶습니다. 일단 어제 캡스터와 소전 선수, 아, 이제 캡스터와 해피 선수가 둘다 이렇게 소전을 같이 사용을 하시다가 어, 오늘은 해피 선수가 어, 소전 역할을 이렇게 담당을 하셨는데 이 어떻게 보면 이 결정을 좀 팀적으로 어떻게 어, 만드셨나요? 어, 일단 저는 솔직히 잘 모르겠어요. 저희 감독님이 이제 결정을 하시는 건데 제 생각엔 아마 이제 캡스터 선수가 정말 잘하잖아요. MVP 후보기도 하고 그래가지고 제 생각에는 소전이 조금 더 캐리력이 높다고 생각해가지고 네 그렇게 했던 것 같아요. 저도 잘 몰라요 사실. <웃음> <웃음> Alright, uh, TLDR, I honestly don't really know uh, why I have to play the Sojourn uh, role today, but I think it's really up to the coaches. But from my understanding, you know, Kepsu is a really good player. Uh, he's a really good DPS player. Uh, he's an MVP candidate, but I guess and Sojourn sort of has to has that carry potential. So I think I really don't know why I was stuck on the Sojourn role. Alright. Well, uh, hopefully we'll get to hear from the coaches maybe uh, near in the future, but happy again. Big congratulations on the win and thank you so much for your time and good luck in your next match. 자, 어, 어떻게 나중에 가서 좀더 이야기를 할 수, 했, 했수 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 일단 해피 선수 오늘 시간 내주셔서 너무 감사드리고 승리 너무 축하드립니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. All right, Zoe, back to you. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you so much. Happy congratulations to the gladiators. I see some smiles from that corner of the desk here. It's like, Happy doesn't know why he's stuck on that. Yeah, what, what the hell? So like, weird. Pick yourself up, Happy. Come on, man. I love the conversation, though, you know, without getting too analytical and the data, the data, you know, analytics. But like, Sojourn has room for a little skill expression as well. So, you know, if you what have expressions some, of that, Johnny, if you have a, like carry potential players like Prophet on the Soul Dynasty, yeah. for example, Proper on the San Francisco Shock, you know, Proper has been an amazing, you know, hit scan when it comes to Tracer, Reaper, stuff like that. But now with Striker in the mix for the Shock, we'll be talking about later, um, they put Proper on that role instead because they realize that Proper has more potential to carry and take us further on that Sojourn role. So interesting conversation as we dive deeper into the playoffs. Absolutely. Now, uh, we do want to not quite let go of the match we just got to watch yet uh, because Reinforce, I'd like you to break down a few plays here, uh, specifically Gladiator's way of punishing the aggression coming out from Philadelphia Fusion. Yeah, I think in our first match against Alonso Spitfire, we saw the Gladiators struggle a bit with aggression and being synchronized. You know, Happy, he mentioned the teamwork, we're struggling with the teamwork. So one way to sort of play around that is being less proactive and more reactive. And we saw that really come out against the Philadelphia Fusion. So I want to take you through a, through a few fights here. So this is the first... Uh, one of the last fights on Oasis, the first map rather, and you can see that Velocria with the Winston bubble is taking space here for the Philadelphia Fusion. And the Alec Gladiators, they're forced to react here. And, but this time, 
they weren't really put in a position to succeed because they gave up so much space. So MM3 are going to close things out and Fusion, much to this fight, are going to take the win on Oasis. King's Row, however, this is another example of the LA Gladiators playing more reactive. Like, they're doing some Harry Potter impression in here, they're just staying in this closet, but they're going to fight their way through this. So the Kitsune Rush comes out from Shu before he goes down, and then Kevster with the Death Blossom, capitalizing on the Fusion extending into the LA Gladiators. So you can see many times here that the LA Gladiators, LA Gladiators they prefer to be reactive because they acknowledge that Velosria, he committed a lot of mistakes against Alonso Spitfire. Maybe this is something we can abuse. We go over to Rootsy, the six, our third map. And once again, Velosria, he's like primal raging, you know, on the <laughs> other side of the map over there. So the LA Gladiators, they wait for these mistakes to come through, through from the fusion. Velosria, he's locked away from this fight. Then Shu, he's going to drop the Kitsuna Rush onto the card. And now, when the fusion are already in an offensive position, that is when the LA Gladiators are going to react. That is when they're going to capitalize on the positioning of the Philadelphia Fusion and perhaps minimize their mistakes as well. I think it was interesting, Reaper uh, for the LA Gladiators, a hero they struggled on perhaps a little bit, right? But one of the biggest parts about Reaper, one of the biggest mistakes you can commit is when you're Wraith forming away, right? You go in for an engage and maybe the engage doesn't work out and then you have Wraith form out. We saw Striker commit the mistakes a lot for the San Francisco Shock yesterday. Well, let's just not like go aggressive. Let's stay on our side of the court and then when the opponents push into us, that's when we'll capitalize. And that's what we saw a lot from the Gladiators today. I think it was interesting. Maybe once they figure out the teamwork, they'll be able to be more aggressive in the future. I think that's a perfect point. It's actually Johnny with the Bellas like jumping in and that reactive style works really well in this meta because the bubble from Winston is so important. And if you lay that bubble down super early, oh, you're just gonna get a roll. Like it's a lot like Lucio B or like support ultimates. The one to use it last normally has a coming out on top. And it's exactly the same with the Winston bubble. You can't go too aggro with the Winston. You need to help your team and like separating healing away from the Kiriko from the enemy team is crazy good. And uh, yeah, funny enough, when you don't get healed, you die. So that's uh, pretty sick. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who thought? <laughs> now, that's heading into this. our next match, I can't believe I'm saying that. And people might be confused now thinking that we're somehow in the upper bracket. Alas, it is not the case. Our next match is going to be fought out between the Shanghai Dragons and the San Francisco Shock. We're talking two champions. That is the reigning champions in the Dragons and the two-time champions in the Shock. And those two will now actually fight it out about who will go home and who can stay. And that is... That's crazy. Unbelievable. Like, I, still, I can't actually believe that this is about to happen now. Uh, first things first, in leveling up presented by Butterfinger, I want to know who can't afford to, uh, I guess, drop the beat, drop the spaghetti. That, that's, there, there was a joke somewhere Please in there. Please drop the beats. Drop the Butterfinger. But you Please drop be the beats, it. not the spaghetti. Actually, yeah. drop the beats, not the spaghetti in our Lucio head-to-head. -head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's true. Don't Ajax yeah, the spaghetti. I, I like that. What? Huh? Don't Ajax the spaghetti. Don't Ajax the spaghetti. Is yeah. that what you said? Never mind. We're, we're too deep. We're too deep. <laughs> no, it's not. Keep Run going. us through it, Joss. What kind of spaghetti do you like? Lucio's, though. Butterfinger. Let's take a look at him. Lose us, please save us. Save us save from us. the spaghetti talk. Do you like fusely or do you like the shell pasta? That's the question. They're not changing the screens. I'm there a we pen go. Thank you, X. Person, I like yeah. that. I like that from you, actually. Ravioli's pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, so, like, if you look at the Lucio head to head here between Violet and Lee Gigant, it's kind of crazy to think that Violet was once, obviously, this is like old history at this point, where um, he was stepping in on the Lucio for the San Francisco Shock because they needed one and he didn't look that great. But now he's going toe to toe with some of the best Lucios we have in the league and obviously in the world. Like Lee Jigon is known as a god on the Lucio pick and Violet is just kind of you know, dominating in the stats. Like it's, <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. And you are right, Zoe, too. Like the shock and the dragons being down here is just absurd. It's actually going to be kind of sad, honestly, um, seeing one of these teams go home. And a lot of the play, and you can kind of relate it back to the Winston point, Johnny, and the way that the bubbles are used. Later beat, obviously, always kind of better. But the Winston bubble is also kind of key. There was actually a few situations in the last series where we saw Lucio's kind of go in with the beat, but the Winston was just either in their face, near them, or on top of them with a Winston bubble. And you're just blocking off the entirety of the sound barrier. And if you don't get it on, like your people like your Sojourn, your Reaper, you get dominated. Like there's no if and or buts about it. You will get focused out like super quick. So getting good timings on the beats and like forcing out bubbles and destroying them and stuff like that is like what you need to be looking for right now if you lose here. Yeah, and I mean, uh, the good news is uh, both of those teams, uh, the talent is there. So let's see who can make the best use of it. Let's take a quick look at our predictions to know where the desk is going with this. Did I pray? I, oh, I Oh, all right, all right, all right. 
Joss, go wow. in for the shock. We are sticking Let's go, with Jenny. the dragons. I thought I'd be alone with the dragons. I'm going to be honest. No, the man. They have, they have lip. Dragons. Excuse me. For lip alone, what? I would... Are you surrendering on proper? You said I'm that shock would win the tournament. And I you've been out of a proper all season like long. Yesterday, and now so. you're abandoning them. <laughs> they're out. If they lose, they're out, Zoe. I know. And I hate it. I hate it for them. But also, dragons, pretty good. Imagine how... Poo poo, you'll feel if the shock lives <laughs> right here now, and you just or would they I, win rather? I guess I, well, but I've been uh, I've been feel a bad anyway. die for them like all season long. It's time to make. I can't believe you play. betray them like that. <laughs> just it's just proper, honestly. I'm betraying like the rest of the shock. I'm, is a beast. So if proper was on the dragons, you'd be like, oh, lip and proper, like we're. Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, actually, proper was on the dragons probably. for five seconds. All right, well. I but anyway, there's yeah, only one way to find out what's going to happen. That is starting the game. The cast is ready, the players are ready, we are ready. So let's send it over to Avril and Achilles. Thank you very much, Zoe, and the rest of the desk. Yes, it is time to go into our next elimination series. The second out of four here on the day. Winner of this one's going to be going up against the Gladiators tomorrow. So another swift turnaround for these squads. And that's why it's beneficial to stay in the upper bracket. But what a clash this is going to be. The Shanghai Dragons going up against the San Francisco Shock. A tale as old as time, really, at this point. This rivalry yep. kind of starting all the way back in stage three of the 2019 season. A stage final that I was fortunate to cast. And it went the distance. Uh, best of four all the way to seven maps. And uh, Shanghai were able to stand victorious at the end of it all. The question now begs, is it going to happen again here in an elimination series in a best of five, or will the Shock be able to keep themselves in the tournament? And uh, of all the recent matches, you know, you, you bring up that, uh, that seven map series in stage three all the way back then. Uh, we often get Shanghai versus uh, the Shock in these sort of playoffs, tournament, final type of games, and we get them in the playoffs here. And, you know, if you're tuning in, you're thinking, oh, this must be really deep. But we look at the winner's final here, not quite. We're actually in the loser's bracket first round, which is what's so shocking about it all. Um, that specific win on, uh, you know, Sage 3 2019, that was one of the only two times the Dragons have actually ever beaten Shock franchise-wise. The other time was in the 2021 playoffs when Moon chose the Shock right off the rip and beat them 3-0. Those are the two times the Dragons actually beat them. Krusty eventually got his revenge in the mid-season madness when the Shock got 3-0 versus the Dragons. That has been the most recent yeah. result, and that was the last time that these two teams actually played. Well, the Dragon's likely going to be vying for some revenge. We'll see if they're going to be able to achieve it. But first, we'll go ahead and welcome the players out onto the stage, starting with the Shanghai Dragons. They make their way to their seats and get ready to have battle commence. Like you say, the record not too great for them, but in these playoffs moments, they can get the upper hand. They can go absolutely nuclear yeah. in the lobby. Just need to see that hive mind fully come online. And that's probably, you know, one thing that has been a little bit missing this year at times, and it's a little bit weird because when you talk about Shanghai, normally, you know, they are referred to as the Shang AI because their teamwork, especially from the 2021 season, of the dive compositions was phenomenal. It was unlike any other team. That's why they had so much success last year, why they easily had that championship locked down. Now coming into the 2022 season, you know, 5v5 change, the team shifting from, uh, you know, to their new base in Shanghai with early intent issues, all that kind of stuff as well. They've had a slow start but it's been a season of up and downs they did actually win the summer showdown as well but that was with void in playing the junker queen they're back onto fate now playing winston flit is back to the starting lineup playing the reaper here as well they can't use who are you here because genji has been nerfed and who are you gave most of the success to the dragons for this year but even without who are you the other member that has also been giving most success is lip and as we saw from the desk early on in the pre-show, Lip actually holds the number one position for a lot of these very important Sojourn stats, hero damage, final blows, charge shot kills, and overclock kills, all at number one with second tied for fewest deaths. That's insane for a Sojourn player and absolutely on par actually for a guy like Lip. Well, saw him begging at the near the end of his stream when the shock lost just yesterday. The question now begs, has super flown out to Los Angeles, to Anaheim, to join in with the rest of the team. He was saying, put me in, Krusty. I'm ready to play. We'll find out as they walk out onto the stage whether or not he is with them. But something tells me that uh, that's not going to be the case. But we'll go ahead and welcome the San Francisco Shock all the same and also see who the starting tank is going to be. 
Yesterday we had a bit of a swap up, Mikey starting out and then Kaluge came in. So one small to start things, it is going to be Mikey on the opening control map. That actually seems like a bit of a uh, standard thing for Shock now, right? They like to play Mikey to start things out with and Kaluge comes in for map two onwards. And for Shock as well, I mean, they had a very intense five map series yesterday versus the Houston Outlaws. Went the full distance, but Houston pulled it through at the end. Dante even on the arrest set, and it was too much for Houston. And Galooch played four out of the five maps there, so even when we talk about control, Mikey plays the first control map, but he wasn't there for the second control map. So, I mean, even that considered, the Shock still, unfortunately, could not pull the series through. They did win Esperanza, they did win King's Row versus yeah. Houston. I uh, think the thing about the Shock versus Dragons now is Dragons lost 0-3 versus Sparks, so they've actually yet to take a single map in this playoffs, at least the Shock have two. We'll see if this can be the turnaround point here for the Dragons. Never in our wildest imagination coming into the playoffs did we anticipate that this was going to be a lower bracket matchup, maybe an upper final, maybe a grand final if the Dragons found their form. But right now, both teams suffering some hefty losses, need to recover. Yeah, I, I think this man on the screen as well. Four days today. I think Fleta, Fleta, to me, has got to step up on this Reaper also because Striker coming on this here that we saw versus sure. Houston was very strong for oh, the team. Yeah. Even when other members were not quite finding their marks, when the Shock were in maybe losing scenarios, Striker pulls up results big time. And that flank on Esperanza that we know that we saw, beautiful stuff. And uh, that's what you need to see out of Fleta as well. I have no doubt in my mind that Lip's going to perform. Proper versus Lip, by the way, the Sojin heads up. It's going to be super exciting as we get up to take on Lee Jung Tower. All right, Lijiang Tower, first map here in this best of five series. Who will be able to take it in the end? Shanghai Dragons, they have that home field advantage on the map, you could say. We'll see whether or not it's going to be good enough to get through the San Francisco Shock. And as you mentioned, Stryker, definitely somebody that we have to keep our eyes trained on. Stryker, I think, for the side of the Shock, you know, huge stand-up performance with that Reaper. Great timings uh, with a lot of those Death Blossoms finding value pretty much consistently despite the loss. And then of course, for the Shanghai Dragons, as the desk was bigging them up, is Lip, who has basically been leading in every single metric as far as the Sojourn is concerned. Had the team on his back, but yeah, this wasn't quite enough to be able to get that initial win. And had his team on his back for the Spark series as well. I mean, super competitive. I actually don't think Dragons played poorly in that Spark series, but they definitely were on the back end. Fate, not quite on the same, you know, standard as Goose Rate, and that will need to change here as well. We up against Mikey first and foremost. Yep, it is the same compositions coming on through. Uh, Shock not going to try anything different here. Dragons taking indoor so far. Shock wanted to meet them. And the meet they shall as Mikey starts moving forward, leading the rest of the squad up. But the Shanghai Dragons do have that inside track right now over towards the point, which is going to be a locking soon, but Violet swoops his way into the back lines and assassinates Lim from the flank. What a play from him. The Violet. One of the things that we were talking about with him just yesterday with the another one time on those sound barriers. And yeah, he gets a second elimination. Now he's halfway to the beat. First lockdown, the point goes away, the shock. I mean, that's just great kill confirmation, right? Because Proper finds the rail shot and the lip puts him on a one HP. It's not the one shot that Proper gets, but it is available. It is what allows Violet or maybe Mike or somebody else. In this case, it was Violet, but to add the extra damage and find the final blow. The shock now in control. Ultimate's coming online very shortly. Dragon still have a window to play through, especially if Easy Aki does that. Oh. Okay, huge opening kill. Proper gonna be taken down. Shanghai Dragon's occupying the point. They have the shot forced off the opposite off the map. Of the map. And a couple of them looking like they were gonna go off the side of the map. I think it might have been thin. TP back in either way. Does die in the end. The cleanup is swift. It's relatively clean here from the side of the Dragons. They pick it up, they get the flip. 29% for the shock. Incredible kill coming through. Easy Aki really setting the stage. Recently named support role star as well for the 2022 regular season. Proving his worth here, but it is still Violet who finds the first ultimate. Is it going to be a tempo beat? You might want to save this one. Fate's already dead. Didn't climb by the way. Oh, he just opens with the beat. Yeah, Fate taken down. No rival to be found. Like, he does get traded by Flat Up, but they need so much more than that if they want to be able to turn the tide to this. That Blossom is online. He's going to dive in with it. The flip has come through from the side of the shot, but now it's going to be the rush committed to the fight as well. So they're looking for the fast flip back for their favor. Rush out from Finn, Slur of HP remaining on that Kitty Hope. He does stay alive for a little bit longer, and Striker is incredibly slippery. Don't oh, like it, should have died well before that, but now Primal comes in, Striker gets the Death Blossom across, and they look at the hold this point, not get the flip back over to the Dragons. 
One Fake, Shaw's so ultimate. On dead. That's the beat taken away. Primal is out here from Fake. Lit sets off the side of the map. I do believe either way, Cleave down. Might have found the kill. Mikey himself will also be eliminated, but now proper. He's got his overclock ready to go. The beat comes in from Legion gone in exchange. Fate's gonna be taken down. The headshot looking good. Looking for a bit more dragons in the meantime. They sneak the point away. Where's the shot? They're still in a rough position. They need Fate to rejoin overclock. very quickly. Overclock is in from Lip, gets the body shot there on a violent not good enough for the kill, and Lip gets shut down. Striker moves up right into his face, finds the kill. Point still held by the Dragons, 42% ticking up. Izayaki playing forward here, trying to keep Fate alive. But as he leaps to the sides, he will both go down. The shock once more will regain control. Huge shutdown, Lip going down mid. Overclock, that's everything you need. The San Francisco shot will maintain control 70% and still climbing. The Shanghai Dragons, they tried to keep that one alive with Fate's Primal after two members went down. Lee Jagon and Lip died in that fight very early on, so no sound barrier, no overclock until they could come back in. By the time they did come back in, as I mentioned, Lip shut down. Lee Jagon did keep the team alive for a little bit longer, but no firepower there. San Francisco Shock now, looking for that double sound barrier plus Katsune Rush combo. Yuzyaki has it, but Lee Jagon does not. Anything. Oh. Yeah, the Lee Jagon doesn't have anything. He's completely and utterly destroyed. Violet drops the beat in. The rush is up for Mizuyaki, but the damage is not really being found right now. The HP bars on the side of the shot, relatively strong. This far, push into the corner. Fate falls on low, gets picked off. Blood gonna be taken down as well, and there is nothing more that Lip can do. This all gets shut down, even with the overclock in hand. Final pop here for Proper. Doesn't have any more targets. There's a come over here, and we'll go ahead and take down 146%. Yep. Like High Dragons, I mean, a really nice extended fight to get themselves back in control of the point. Briefly, the shock retake, and they don't let go. 75% charged shot accuracy from Proper over the course of that round there, and a brilliant two-piece towards the end that gets the kills required. A first one into Lee J gone, denying Fletter from using the Death Blossom as well. He kills Fletter when he's on 99. He was the only member left that could maybe still clutch up for the Dragons in that 4v5. A lot of low HP members, but if Fletter pops off on the Death Blossom, that could save the point. But unfortunately for them, Proper is there to shut him down. The Shock have a 1-0 lead so far on the opening map of Lee Jung Tower. Looking over towards Control Center now. Still the same comps. Yesterday we did see some variation. A little bit of Ryan coming on through. That was from the Glads. Possibility of maybe playing Orisa here as well. But for these two teams here, we're going to stay true to what the meta is. Let's see who defines it. On control center. They will greet. Full skirmishing now opening up. Mikey jumped down about half HP. Rail shot goes across. Striker tagged low. Takes the race walk out. They move away from the point, which is now unlocked. Shanghai Dragons inside track there. Might be able to get the lockdown. Now with Mikey falling. Certainly looks a hell of a lot better for them. Rail from Robber as well. Not gonna get the connection that they're looking for just to find the kill. But it goes forward. It's looking for a kill, but Striker. She's the best of 20% lead. Oh, nice that shot. Awesome as well, but okay, nice shot there from Lip. We'll stop any potential follow-up, any hero plays here from the shock. We do pull back. I think that's super important as well because the shock we're gearing up to be able to maybe get that 5v4. As Mikey comes back up alive, Flitter goes down. You notice the reason Flitter died was because they traded aggro, right? Fate initially had the aggro, who's too low, he jumps back. Flitter tries to hold the front line, can't do it forever, goes down. And now as we enter the next fight, the support ult is about to come along. Easy Yaki leads. And another shot. Again. Left. Lip, starting to look alive, finds the shot. Violet gonna be Goomba stomped out of there. Nice little chase, making sure that Lucio cannot keep his life intact. The kill, Lip goes on the flank, looks for the shot. He's got Striker in the head as well, as Finn is just gonna go tumbling. And Shanghai Dragons look very well in control for now. Great staggered kills there, just delaying the shock even further as Proper comes up alive. Two extra members go down. Another consideration from the Shocker. They're going to try, try and just break through front doors here, through the choke. They'll need the Katsune Rush to do so. Double support ultimates are live online for both teams. Mikey like in the pliable. And Lip takes the striker. Oh my god! And he gets him ahead of the sound barrier as well. Crucially, what a pick! Lip is absolutely crushing it right now here on Control Center. Overclock still going to be held. Now it's just the Kitsune Rush committed to the fight to go ahead and get the win. Now it's 70% last fight territory here for the Dragons. If they can win this one out, they should be taking this over to Gardens. So many first bloods, so high impact as well. And another one, that's three Probably first bloods in a row. And he still hasn't even had to use the ult. He keeps it in his pocket proper as well. Not getting the opportunity to try to use his overclock. Rush goes down from Finn. Death Blossom dropped in. Striker will find fate. 
<laughs> right as the primal expires. Making their way over the point now, looking desperately for the flip. Clock. The clock, the beat gonna be layered in for the Shanghai Dragons, but again, the shutdown is there. Mike gets on top of Flip, he finds that kill, and that certainly gives them a chance to go ahead and gain control and maybe still win out this round. Closeout comes through. There's the flip at 99%. San Francisco shot. What ult can they hold? It's extremely important that Mikey does that because if Lip is going demon mode the way that Shy was doing up against the Dallas Fuel, Fear has shut down Shy here. Mikey has to shut down Lip in the same way. And he does that when Lip overclocks. But three first bloods in a lip in a row for Lip. Outstanding stuff. Puts dragons at 99%. Forces Shock to come back from 0 to 99. Dropper now this time has the overclock. He needs the same impact. Oh my god, and he, he does it again! Flip again! He finds Striker! Just magnetize these rails to his head! Death Boss will find two, and that's gonna be the round done and dusted. It spins the last one to fall. No chance to stagger this one out. Striker's still so very far away, so the OT will just tick down. And we are going to Gardens oh, man. to settle this first map. This is Lee Jae Gong's stomping grounds, and I'd start being a little bit worried if I was the shot. Well, the thing about uh, Shanghai Dragons is everywhere is apparently the stomping grounds for Lip. Talked about the stats for Lip on the Sojin earlier on. Number one leading in all of the most relevant stats that you want for a play. I mean, outstanding. And then he backs it up straight away versus Proper versus Striker, especially who died multiple times to Lip. The only time that Shock really found success was when Mikey just jumped on top of him, killed Lip, removed the overclock. That was the one fight that Shock won. Take a look at some of these again. That's what Lip is able to do here. Uh, I mean, you're, you're just looking at, you're following the rail shot coming on through. And it, as you mentioned, live during the cast as well, Striker dies just before the sound barrier catches him to give him that green HP. All right, on to guard to see who's walking away with the win. The rail is charged. Shock hiding back around the corners for now. Lip is waiting for a moment. Striker right. fearing for his life. He is violent. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, he did not. He died about four times. Lee Jae Gon, however, will be the first one to fall. I talk about his stomping grounds. He gets stopped. Mike finding the kill. Shot this time. It does hit Violet, but it's not in the head, so it's the second lease on life. Jae Gon is going to be rejoining here as quickly as he possibly can, but it's like Shock should have the first lockdown to the point. Yeah. They get tagged up, and yep, they will go ahead and take it. Tell you what. Dragons played that well though. They lost the player early. They just back on out, slow the pay, slow, not pay with the capper a little bit. And now they're coming back as five, getting ready. Let's take a bunch of damage here under pressure, maybe. Pulls back, pumping out the left clicks as much as he possibly can. Strike will finally find some much needed revenge. He's on top of the as well. So now it's a DPS with the Shanghai Dragons. Trying to persevere in the fight. The leap forward. Ninja Gun gonna be taken down. Fate will find one for his trouble, but now it's Proper's time to shine. Picks up three kills in the fight. Shock maintained control. 30% locked in. Keep that lid on lip as much as possible for you, the San Francisco Shock. That is their game plan right now. Striker, like you said, got the only kill. Proper with the final three. The shock because they already have that early lead on the camp. The lead will just extend further. The sooner rush now. Yuzaki looking to maybe follow up. There it is. Oh, but he's dead. They've, uh, they've figured it out. They found the win condition. Kill Lip first and foremost, and then things come tumbling down. The rush not going to lead to too much of anything here. Jigon eventually just going to fall. Just have that beat to try to match Violets. That's a reset for sure. And this is the thing, right? When the Katsuna rush comes down for Finn, uh, Mikey just gets to jump on in. He has the speed to work through. He knows what his target is. He has a safety back at the primal. So if he does get low and he does get punished, he can get himself out alive. Very well played there. Shock learning quickly after losing on control center what it is required of them to take this map still. Sound barrier basically going to be matched. Violet's a little bit later. Mikey goes into white rope, juggling lip around, and there is no reprieve for him. No hope of getting out. Lee Jigun will find Violet. Making a DPS for a support. His fate is trying to do much of the same, but he desperately needs some healing. Striker going to be taken out. That is going to be the main threat to fate, so he does manage to stay alive now. Mike is going to be taken down. Dragons have since gotten the flip. They're in control. 86% set up here for the shot. Now Dragons look to maintain. Six number of kills coming through and flitter there. So despite Lip going down, the rest of the Dragons come up big. That's what you need, right? If your big carry player is gone, the rest of the players have to step up. And they certainly do. With Mikey out of the picture, Dragons will lead the way. Striker as well, like you sort of mentioned, with him going down, allows Fate so much more extra room to play through. Bit of a catch-up still requires the 60% deficit. Lip overclocks. Yep. 
clock has popped, that sends, sends the shock packing here for the moment. He's trying to hound down Violet, gets him in the very end. And with that kill, Lee got he killed Violet prior. You see the ult charge right now, the difference maker. Well out. And by the way, that sound barrier. Sh Shock, is still, like head jump. Shock is still semi-committed here. They're in white room. I don't think Dragons will push this one. I think they'll give the respect over. Waiting for Violet to see the silhouette on the left side. So it has rejoined the team. Full 5v5 here. No, it's not. Lip takes him down again. Oh. Violet now. He's the one getting the striker treatment. Is punished over and that over again. He's got 5% ult charge in the last 30 seconds. That's just basically oh, the big natural. God. He hasn't gotten, he hasn't even gotten a Cheerio to connect onto an enemy player in the last oh, just, minute you've seen. Did you see, you you see Lips ping there? It's like, oh, oh I know who I want. That. I know who oh, I want. Lips back on it. He shuts them down. The Considerize was still committed to the fight here by Finn. Hoping desperately they can find something, but Izayaki also gets involved, finds a headshot connection on the proper. And that might just be enough. Shanghai Dragons will certainly take the lead now on this map, if not take it. Like the 99% is Legion gone against Violet once again. Violet just can't play. 28% of a beat in the last two and a half minutes. Not allowed to play the game. Legion gone has a sound barrier now. The one that Violet wants, 50% behind. One final right contest here. Primal available for Fletter. It's for Mikey, rather, as Fletter just goes on in. They can't quite get himself up onto the high ground, but it might not matter. Point is being contested for now. Mikey fighting two. Izayaki and Lip both can be taken down. Striker is here, has a Death Blossom of his own. The Dragons, have they overstepped? Knock off the side of the map, that should be Legion gone dead. Waiting to see, unless he got a wall ride back in. Either way, the Shock have gained control of the point. 90% to work with. They might have just stolen this away. The unlikely hero there, Mikey knows his target. He's got to be the one to kill Lip. If no one else can do it, then Mikey has to. Ichigon still has a sound barrier, but it still does not. This is what they got to do. They got the touch, it's the most important part. The overclock is popped here by Proper. They're diving in. Striker still holding on to the Death Blossom, getting juggled around. Ben has to shut him down. Proper finds Splatter, takes him down. Fate not really being able to get too much done. He's just trying to clear the point for now. Gets the shutdown there onto Striker. Much need. The beat comes in from Violet. Shields up the remaining four members, but Fate will fall. Izayaki taken down. Lip, he's got the overclock, but he needs to go absolutely crazy with it. And it just does not seem like it's going to happen. It doesn't. The Shanghai Dragons, they over-pursue, they over-commit, they lose the point in the follow-up in the San Francisco Shock. It feels like they steal the win away, but man, what a way to kick off this series. And I'll tell you what, despite all of the pressure on Violet, they're dying multiple times in a row, barely building ult charge. He gets that legendary sound barrier right at the end when they actually do need it. San Francisco Shock in the final fight. That missing sound barrier finds its way into the fight and it makes a big difference. Shanghai Dragons do not shut down proper. Fate is not able to get on top of the Sojin the way that Mikey is on top of Lip, and that's a big difference maker for me because when Lip doesn't have that pressure, he destroys the shock, but when Mikey's on top of him, that's when the shock can succeed and we never saw proper getting shut down the same way that Lip had been. I, I mean, Violet, the slowest buildup of a beat in the playoffs that we've seen so far from him but it arrives precisely when it needs to. His beat is Violet's a wizard, a wizard. a blue shell <laughs> lobbed in. When it strikes, it's absolute perfection, and it allows them to get across the line. You can already see Blue's making his way out to the stage, so it seems like Mikey's work here is done. But man, what a way to start off this set between two titanic teams in this lower bracket matchup. One of them is going home for now. The Shock have the upper hand with a 1-0 lead. Shanghai Dragons have map pick on hybrid. Don't go anywhere because, I mean, if you were paying any attention whatsoever, you know that you do not want to miss the rest of this action.
Wild Lightning doesn't strike twice, has never met the San Francisco Shock. Just the depth of talent on their roster that can't be denied. Some of the most hardcore carry performances that I've ever seen. This is going to be a wild ride. Somehow Violet's gonna come to the rescue, get a double kill. Kalu says, uh, how about that one? Chief, kill. see you later. Kill Dude, again. his aim is so crispy. Van Dazzi missed those, holy cow. Oh, a stick on Hardy. Strike is able to bring the Titan down. Sam straight to the back line, insta killing. Oh, Mikey! Pop up the pulse, it's good! San Francisco, the greatest team in Overwatch. And we are back in just one map into this absolutely crazy, colossal series between the San Francisco Shock and the Shanghai Dragons. Dragons looking like they had the upper hand there in the second, or the third round, I should say, of an on Lishang Tower Gardens. They had it in hand, but they overstep in one little moment, and the Shock swoop in to steal it away. And I think a lot of that comes down to Mikey, you know, for whatever performance he had yesterday, he makes up for it today, right? He comes in, does his job, refuses to elaborate, leaves oh, and yeah. luge, comes on in. Seven primal rage kills for Mikey to the four from Fate. I know it's not all about that for, you know, Winston comparisons, but specifically, who does Mikey kill? How does he get on his targets? He gets on top of Lip, he shuts down Lip. Lip was the guy putting Shock in the dirt, and Mikey was the one taking the Shock back out. Well, a bit of vindication for him. Kaluj does come back through, though, as we get ready to go into hybrid. As mentioned, Shanghai Dragons, they have their selection, so we'll have to see where they opt to go to and whether or not they can tie things up, because, I mean, you know, like we are, we have our, I have all of my fingers crossed right now, yep. toes included, uh, that this is going to go to five. So, you know, I, again, as per usual, Avril and I, we don't care who wins. We just want some good, honest Overwatch. I, and between these two squads, we should be able to have that achieved. I want the best team to win at the end of the day. Uh, and they shall. And if not, then whatever team proper's on. No, well, I do want the best team to win at the end of the day. <laughs> I'd also like to see, just for just for fun, because like we saw the Reiner versus uh, Kaluj standoff for mid-season Manus. I want to see a little bit of back-to-back -back with Kaluj rocking up the lip. You know, lip is eight foot nine, so we'll see what goes on there. I think they're the, the two Chad games that we have in the venue. True. Titans on the battlefield. On and off the battlefield, I should say, as the Shepard Dragons now choose Icon Volta. It's their map choice moving forward. Just taking a look at past matches here. Uh, we did not get to see Icon Volta yesterday. It was a King's Row that uh, the Shock ended up playing. So, Shanghai Dragons on their end, they also play the King's Row. So, so they're going to be the first Icon Volta of players for both teams. Alrighty. Let's see who can get the win. Think about, I mean, we didn't get to see too, too much of it. I guess there was a couple kills there on to Violet. Not sure if Lee Jae-Gun got those with, you know, by setting him off the side of the map or if it was just a straight up kill. But uh, think about that bridge where Toby used to dominate back during the days, the era of Lunatic High and then the early stages, I suppose, of the Soul Dynasty. Lee Jae-Gun as well around the bridge. Grandpa's giving me his war stories. Amount of impact. <laughs> back in my day. So the flashbacks right there. Uh, Good times I back when I could Volta was still. Uh, you do a good, you do a good like nerd voice. And an old one. Or I can do that. I can do like an older like change. Your nerd voice is seriously one of my favorite voices. So it is quite good. A chain <laughs> smoking. That's just the, okay. That's, that's what the that's what the chat sounds like. It's a, it's, it's a Timmy voice. All right, Izzy Aki oh, in a poor man. position. He's gonna be looking for a pick. Okay, still playing secretively. Get the one tap. Can't quite line up the second one. He takes Finn low. Close but no cigar. And, uh, Good knocked. rotation from Shock. Go ahead, swoop around the back. Finn does get picked, however. Finn giving the leap forward. Lines that kill. So now they have a good, decent hit, but they have already surrendered away a tick. Now Lip is going to be taken down. Kaluj, he is following the plot. He saw when Mikey was laying down. He is picking it up. Proper down low. 38 HP remaining for him, but it's under zero pressure for the moment. And this is just a bloody brawl. Oh, the shots man. are winning. That and that, that was 5v4. Point coming through. That was 5v4, yeah. but guess what? You're right, Kaluj instantly steps on top of Lip, gets rid of him first. Fate was also low HP. Easy Aki, unfortunately, does not say Lip tries to say Fate does for some time. 
and while they try and trade proper, guess what? They can't. Proper out duels EJ gone. He slides away from fate on 30 HP, I even believe. Finally gets a slide, and Shock will get that first point cap despite losing Finn nearly straight away. And maybe the Shanghai Dragons really overthinking their positioning here, trying to play this out a bit more aggressively. And once more, the objective gets away from them. TP to the high ground, Izayaki is going to be first by a fairly large metric towards this Kitsune Rush. So he's an opportunity for them to be able to regain control here of the Portcullis. Proper slides into the castle. Rail at the ready, but Kaluj left out all and his lonesome ends up falling down. And that will be a reset. I think Shock, otherwise, aside from Kaluj dying, actually disengaged well from that. You can see. Uh, from Promise POV, most of the members got inside the castle. Kalush was still stuck outside, and that was the one member the Dragons got down. You'll say that's a successful fight. Dragons don't get much more out of this it. Ends now. Lee calm down. That does not feel good. No, it does not. Striker finding the kill. The overclock is here. It's looking for the shot, but it does narrowly manage to TP out. Okay. Lip will get the punish, making sure they don't find the follow-up, but for now, the card is going to be moving forward by the shock. Lee Jacon in 99 here will finally have that sound barrier available. Finn still yet to use is Kitsune Rush Ultimate. The Shock have double support ults available now. Lip to pop his overclock. The oh, one okay. shot, fight and dead. Yep, could just do that, Lip, I suppose. I mean, it, it really is just a, like a flow chart. Is Lip alive? Yes. Lose the fight. Is Lip dead? Uh, you know, then you win the fight if you're the Shock. There's a secondary flow chart. There's is a tank on top of Lip. <laughs> yes, no, okay, Finn's dead as well. And yeah, if, if Kaluj is not on him, if Mikey is not sitting on Lip, then Lip just goes off. Time and time again, two back-to-back -back first bloods here. Oh, it's just so incredibly consistent. What a player. What a Going shutdown. And this has slowed the shock up. Granted, they still have a very healthy timing for now, but they need to get this cart rolling. So if they can get the punish on the Lip, they'll be looking good for it. Right now, it's pushing down this below the ramparts. Jump in, push away, Fate trying to get the stop, not able to do so. The rush comes out from Finn, Kalush falling low, pops that primal rage. It's a couple smacks around over on the lip. Can't quite get the elimination just yet. Jigon holding. More people to join in, trying to finish him off. Yeah. Jigon is still holding the beat. Izayaki nearly with a rush of his own. The cart now starting ready to make its way across the bridge. The beat's gonna come in first now from Violet. The Jigon's gonna be matching. Death Blossom out from Striker, not gonna have the elimination. I believe he actually, did he go off the side of the map? No, it looks like he might have TP'd back in. Yeah. He will get hounded down. Flutter finds the kills. Finn dead on the back end as well. The payload, it gets close, but not close enough. But this does split the attention of the Shanghai Dragons now. They can't play yes. Rampart's side the entire time because they have to be worried about a back cap. Now, that's the one mistake for the Shanghai Dragons, right? They were otherwise winning that fight, but the San Francisco Shock were running away with that payload. Nearly capped, really forced the attention of the Dragons. Izayaki finally pops in. His rush ultimate they will be able to stop the shot with Flitter leading the way. Very fast firing out by Shock. Proper, he doesn't get away. I thought he was about to, but it does get punished. Fate has found the script that Shock were using, reading from kills off proper. Finds a kill. I mean, Fate gets what three in that fight, if not four. Oh, there he goes, three. Clean up once more. Two minutes about to be remaining now. It's a good hold. Very successful hold, otherwise, from the Dragons. I mean, look, the payload might get close to the B finish line, but if it doesn't cap out B, then it does not matter. As it will be Proper's turn to overclock next in the fight. Can Fate get on top of Proper? Is there going to be a primal in time? Probably not, but you don't need it. You don't need oh, it. Okay. We'll get the kill again. I mean, how do you even approach this? Do you just have to use the Suzu every time you push a corner just in case you get headshot? I no, what you got to do is Striker has to kick over his PC and swap it out again, and then the 20 minute break will weaken ah, the Shanghai Dragons. That's what you got to do. That could work. That could work. All right. That feels much better. Well. What a start. Diving again. Oh, what? Are you kidding me? Line. Violet! He was wall riding. He was boosted up. He was sliding across, and Lip just says, Nah, that's an easy track for me. Striker is trying to get on top of him, but he's got no HP, so he just dies. His fate joins in, holds the door, making sure they can't get on top of Lip. This is ridiculous. Oh, this is ridiculous. Is he can't keep track. getting what away with shot. it. He can't keep getting off away with the it. the top of the castle, slides in, shuts proper down. And Lip is just absolutely Achilles? Achilles? I changed my mind. I changed my mind, Achilles. Shy is not the best soldier in the world. It's Lip. It is definitely Lip. No question in my mind now. I've changed my mind. It's Lip 100%. And right now, the Dragons, they're looking to maybe even spawn camp a little bit here. Shock might have to burn ultimate just to get out of spawn. I mean, this is, this is such a performance. I'm thinking MN3 on that new Queen Street. 
just pounding. Galu just like, he's carrying just their way to a he's win. Holding. And he's just going for it right now. The overclock pops, slides over. And just Crawford misses oh, the shot. Good. One more rail off the back of the ult. They're gonna go wide, but he still managed to just go ahead and spray him down with the, with the left click. Gets that kill. Kalouj not able to do a damn thing. Fleta finally wants to get involved. Oh, I, I think it's over. Finds one lift, claims the second, and yeah, that has to be it. Striker dead. One of the only people who maybe could have TP'd away. Tried to get in touch with the card. It said it is rolling back steadily. Look how far back it has rolled. That is how long it has been since they have touched this damn card. It's coming down the ramp. It's made no it time. all the no way time. back across the bridge. And Violet cannot get there in time. What an absolutely beautiful hold from the Shanghai Dragons. The Shock very well could turn around full hold this and still win the map, but that takes nothing away from the efforts of Lip on this defense. He absolutely dominated at every twist and turn. I mean, this level of control on a game, a single player, single-handedly dictating how the game has got to be played by sheer force of will, this is the 2021 Finals MVP player Lip coming in, and he does not want to finish things here. He would like to win here and continue on after day one, after they lost the sh this Hangzhou Spark. Lip puts out on Twitter, he says, I don't want finish now. Verbatim those words, I don't want finish now. They lose the Hangzhou Spark, and Lip says, no, it does not end here. My season does not end here. And he's coming in versus the Shock today and pulling that level of force through now onto San Francisco Shock. This is the rage pent up from that Hunter Spark loss. Now Shock are feeling it. God damn. Well, can we get an update, Mr. Avril? Share with us one of your fun facts here in a moment uh, as far as lip statistics, because it feels like he's got to be deadlifting. Uh. uh. 10 out of 26. 10 out of 26 is a few more. Okay. To be fair, I think that speaks well to the rest of the team being able to do some stuff here. Uh, I can say he is the only player on the server with 10,000 plus damage per 10. Everybody else is well below 10,000. Uh, the next highest is proper at 8.8. So Lip is clearing proper by about 2k because Lip was on 10.8 versus 8.8. There's that. 70% charge rail shot accuracy, by the way. 70% accuracy on Lip. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what that looks like at the end of the map. And Shanghai make their way over to the point. Lee Jigong gonna be the first one to fall. Robert able to find the kill. Rail does connect, but Violet avoids taking it to the face to stay safe. Proper sliding back over towards the attacker spawn now does find a second elimination. There's the sights over towards Fate. Just needs to break down the bubble, but Fate fights too. That's Who's so good. Who's striker? Both die. Violet under fire. Lee Jigong comes back into the fight. Manages to find the elimination. The Shanghai Dragons might still yet be able to get the cap, and they will. Lee Jigong picks up a second. This is the Oculus right here next to Proper, finishes him off. And there you have it, the cap's gonna be coming through unless they go for a cheeky last second. And by the way, Kalush, he's just gonna situate himself on the high ground. Instead. Let's take a look at the time, 526 to get where? Partway through B, I think they do need to push the end of B, so I say partway, it's actually to the end. I, it looked like partway because by the time we got to the end of B, the payload went from the end of the bridge all the way back to this first corner. So... Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so this is where you know you do you do give credit to Shock when they actually snuck the payload that distance. They give themselves a win condition still on Ike of to defend. That's the good news. That's a silver lining. Sure. They have to defend it for about five minutes. So roughly, you know what the Shanghai Dragons were able to do. I, for one, have always kind of had the opinion that I think that the cart distance should be wherever it rolls back to, rather than your furthest push. But that's just me, maybe. Clue's now going to be dropping down off the top. Fate swapping positions with him, goes up to try to pressure. The nice line of sight away from Proper. Overclock is online, not using it yet. So they rush comes oh, up to Miyagi. Down. Finn matches, but Flana gets on top of Proper, finds the kill. Finn as well going to fall. Lee Jigong continues to find these kills on the opposing support. Fate with the primal just juggling around absolutely anybody that he can find. He wants to get rid of Kalush, and he does strike your TP's right to the front of Fate, and then instantly has the Wraith walk away. The good position. This will be final fight now. Violet Prop Revolt Mitz Collusion nearly there. Striker not that far away as well for the Shanghai Dragons. It's lip time. Getting on high ground. Overclock ready. Proper is on the opposite end. This is going to be overclock battle to decide it. Lee Jagon desperately needs this beat as well. Payload is nearly there. One last shot. Proper needs to find some value. He needs to find picks. Oh, Violet got the it. one. Damn soon. Slides around the side, he spots Lip, the rails go out. Collusion's there for the alley-oop. He gets on top of Lip right as the rail connects. Managed to find that kill. Gets 
Mizuyaki spots Lee Jigon, pings him. Wants to go and try to find his kill. Lee Jigon's desperately trying to get himself out of here. Grabs the health pack, and I mean, he's just so very elusive when he wants to be. Yep. Will that frog life intact, but it's still three minutes twenty seconds. I'll tell you what, at least you're going. Yeah, okay, you should get the go. Yep. Violet took a rail shot from Lip. Wasn't a headshot, but the close margins. Lip got the first shot off, and if he had killed Violet there, no sound barrier. Shanghai might cap. Violet was so threatened by that one rail, he pops beat almost instantaneously. Doesn't want to lose it. Doesn't want to die. And also, I respect the dangerous spot to be in. Yaki is speaking of dangerous spots, but look at this push up onto the ramparts. Lip gonna be taken down. Striker finds him with the blossom. Beat from Lee on was expended. Just not enough to try to keep him alive. Might have been taken down before the shielding came through. Either way, overclock. Striker's still in. Elf proper trying to weave in some of this damage here. Sees Lee Jigon is down low. Wants to try to get that elimination. Dragon's just gonna make their exit. They swing back inside of the castle. The chase comes in. Finn and Striker both. Oh, what? Oh, that's gonna back, back up! up. He he back away! Up. Oh, Lee Jigon! You absolute madman! The shock! They completely lose sight of the objective, and Lee Jagon says, thank you very much! Grabs the cart, slides it into the win, and that is a tilter of a way to lose a map. We are oh tied up one to one. Oh my god. Shades of Mid-Season Madness Shades of Mid-Season Madness Finals. The payload just caps, and the shock are nowhere to be found. Oh my god! Lee J. God, he just sneaks it through, and the shot don't even realize. Unbelievable finish. That's wild. They, they get so tunneled in, saying we need to take the fight, we need to get some picks to buy more time off this time bank, that they completely forget about the objective itself. And that is definitely a feels bad moment for the Shock, but they are still in this. It is now tied up one to one. Shock will once again have a map pick as we get heading into Escort. We'll see where they want to go and whether or not they're going to be able to recover from this loss. All I know is I'm all about it. What an absolutely, can I say, I'm gonna say bad shit map from these two teams. I'm Good fully invested. You. I know you Good guys are you. as well. We'll be back <laughs> after the break. Don't go anywhere. If you leave this stream, there's something wrong with you. Get checked out. We'll see you guys on the other side of the break. Oh, man. New hero stepping into the fold. A few new maps, too. Yeah, it's going to be so exciting. Kevster keeps Pelican in check and makes sure that he doesn't get close to Ons, which is really good awareness from the Gladiators who force Pelican back. And now Houston's back, backs are against the wall, but Gladiators are not healthy and they're locked into a fight that they can't escape in. Pelican finally closes the gap between himself and Ons and Baron kills three. He is having an incredible series. Usually you want to save that sound barrier to counter the opposing Dragon Blade, but it wouldn't hurt to have that extra sustain about when does Yaki want to find that opportunity, especially after the shell, but the shout's been used by Doge. Here's the rally from Lastro. Houston push into New York, but it's the sound bear at the last second from Onsu J that gives New York a breath of fresh air as Yaki's blade is finally slicing through all the extra health. And New York come out ahead once all the resources of the Houston Outlaws have been expended. They have the rampage. Feels like they're just trying to bait the shock into them so they can use a rampage and get it onto the back line. That gets pulled in with that knife. There's the Rampage, comes out, hits four, that's good. Target priority right now is Kilo and Proper. They take him down with ease. A perfectly timed Rampage from Mag. Maybe that's what they were doing. Maybe I called it correctly there. Just baiting the San Francisco Shock down to low ground to set up for that Rampage. And look at this forward push. I mean, yeah, there, there's no hope for you, unfortunately, oh, Proper and Kilo. Straight back to the spawn, which we go to the cart and it's five on four for the Gladiators. This could be winnable for Houston to 3-0, one of the best teams in the league, and it's starting to fall their way. Glads are down two, no rider, no skewed, but you have Kempster and you have a dream to keep this alive. The DPS do it all, and it's just no us way. who cancels the bomb. Gladiators are still alive. Aspire used that overclock super early. A beat from the Titans, in fact. They just want to go ham. They're going to go in. 
Touch the spawn, maybe? Master gets the better of Tree Drone, the little Lucio 1v1, and Aspire cleans two. The Vancouver Titans. They're looking, they're hunting, the payload moving. A couple of meters to go, and this will just be it. Dredro used the beat at the last moment, and the Vancouver Titans have done it. They found their first win in over a year. They are now 1 and 13. August 14th was the day many were counting down to, and the Vancouver Titans can let out a sigh of relief. I mean, look, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a legacy, but maybe. The Titans have started one right here today. The Dragons teach us that if we want to climb high, we must do it against the wind. The Shanghai Dragons are your 2021 Overwatch League champions. That's the go button. Overclock triggered. Takes one shot. Beat from Legion gone. Smurf goes down. Doesn't need the headshots. The body going oh, up. He uses one well, for Fifteen. He uses one for Fifteen. Oh, lip. The blade comes in. Fixer hits the ground. Imgod joins him. Who are you? Two quick kills. Impy can come through now. the blade. Stop okay, he's gonna be taken down. He slept. They shut him down. A sleep gun from Izayaki puts Zest on the ground, nullifies the entire Dragon Blade. Fate, though, goes back in for it. Pyre comes down. He's gonna be anti, but the Primal gets popped. He whoa, finds Irene. He finds Shy. And here is the Primal Cleave as well. The Primal Blade from Fate, as he will just scoop up three kills. He's looking for a little bit more. The Dragons will wait no more. They continue to stand as kings of this meta. Boy, are we back. Tied up one to one. Let's take a closer look at Lip, who just went crazy in our second map of this already incredible, exciting series. What a performance. And if you remember, you asked me at half time for some stats. So when we swapped sides there, I said that Lip had 70% charge shot accuracy, which means we finished the map and he only dipped by 2%. That's insane. So the consistency on his accuracy for right click is unbelievable only dipped by 2% after halftime. And I also mentioned that halftime, he was the only member that held a five figure plus 10,000 damage uh, per 10. By the end of the map, he finished yeah. on 9,778. So he dipped a little bit, but he was still the only member almost at 10K at the end with everyone else definitely trailing behind. He was still the only member above 10,000 on total damage done though. So he ended up with 31% of the team damage, 10,186. Nobody else in the entire server, not any of the other nine players, reached 10,000 total damage done, only Lip. All right, well, in case you just recently tuned in because you saw Twitter exploding or whatnot, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how that map two lost in case you didn't get to see it. And also maybe just rub some salt in the wounds of some of the Shock fans out there because I'm sure they're gonna want to turn away in a moment. Lee Jae gone with the back cap. Just go ahead and take this one right out from under the nose of the shock. And let's see how he does it. By the way, his survivability has been so good. We commented about how much he just gets away. He notices no one's on payload. He's like, oh, look at this. Is that a free payload? A mega lol. It indeed is. And the shock realized far too late. Kaluj sees it, but he doesn't have the capability to get on the payload. And Legion smiles all the way from down the end. You see it. He loves it. He knows that he just won the map for his team. Well, what a way for the second map to go down. Now again, Shock have the pick in their pocket for Escort. We'll see where they want to take us and whether or not it's going to work a trick. Because again, they need to be able to bounce back. But we do also have a new face for the playoffs coming out here for the side of the Shock as Kilo will be subbing in for Striker. Very curious. I, I wonder what this is all about because Striker comes into the roster late this season and replaces both Kilo and Sam, and he kind of takes, at the time, Proper's Hero of Tracer to allow them proper to go over towards Sojin. So with Kilo coming back in, is Kilo here to play a Reaper? 
or is he gonna play his Sojin pick again? Because Kilo had spent most of the year playing the hit scan, playing that Sojin, which Proper currently has. If Kilo is oh. just here to play the Reaper, what does that mean? Okay, actually, this answers a lot of questions. Because we got a Circuit Royale, it's double hit scan. Kilo would have make it proper Sojin. That's the game plan. Glued Sigma, obviously. Actually, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, Houston versus Shock. I did mention there was this kind of extra ace up the sleeve for the San Francisco Shock where Kaluj, his best hero is Sigma. That's a signature hero. He probably is one of, if not the best Sigmas that we have in the league. This is a very good matchup for him. And by the way, Dragons did not make a substitution. There is no Void here. Dragons will not match Sigma. They're going to stick to the Winston. Well, let's see what happens. Circuit Royale. I think this is maybe the first time that we've seen it in the playoffs, if memory does serve. A bit of a different little bit of scenery for us for the escort map. It's been a lot of Route 66 uh, that's been showing up. Some Dorado in that mix as well. Let's see how these teams fare. It's going to be first on the attack for the Shanghai Dragons. The San Francisco Shock gets set up for the defense. He already mentioned the Widowmaker. Proper's got it right there. Well, one of them will have it. I expect a Kilo to play it, given that uh, Sojin has been mainly Proper's other hero, but. Uh, maybe some viewers a little bit confused as to why Proper is playing Widowmaker. He has a Widowmaker in his hero pool. He played it a lot in Contenders over the two years uh, plus that he was on O2 Blast, alongside Kilo, by the way, who was his teammate. So uh, he's going to be the one picking up that role now as Kilo fills in for the Sojin. That is quite curious, but you know what? I'm here for it. We're going to take our Sojin players off that hero and now onto Widowmaker. You saw how good Lip was on Sojin. Now let's see him on Widowmaker as well. For one shot only. Right. Oh, now he's back to the Sergeant. Lip and... <laughs> <laughs> For one shot only. Well, it seems like this is just going to be a lot of stock put into Fleta on that Genji to be able to get on top of Proper and find the punish. Oh. Get some cheeky deflect headshots coming through. Some the barriers come up. And, yeah, I mean, Shanghai, I mean, they have the full idea of what the shock is running, but it seems like they are not down the party. They don't want to try to match this. They're just going to... I got to say as well, with this comp. Teams do, I had heard murmurings that teams do want to play the Genji versus Sigma as a maybe soft counter pick. Uh, Dragons don't put Who Are You in though, and I think the reason for that is because Kaluj can still flex over towards the Winston. If we play meta again, you want Flitter in for the Reaper, so this makes a little bit more sense, yeah. a little bit safer, even though Who Are You would probably give you more value on the Genji. We'll stick to this and uh, make some plays and pop this first pick off. There he does. Cart inched up around the first, the second corner, I should say. Proper nicely peels back the Shanghai Dragons to wait for Li Jingguan to rejoin. You can see him just swooping across the map right there with the silhouette. Let's see how they try to pile this one. But yeah, I mean, also could have seen Void come in to try to match on the Sigma. You kind of anticipate that that is going to be the tank selection. I mean, the problem there is, map, is, is again, Kaluj has the flexibility to go between Sigma and Winston, whereas for Fate, he just plays Winston. Yeah. And for Void, if he were in, he'd just play the Sigma. So you wouldn't be able to flex between both. That's the strength of the Shark composition here. Yeah. Fate wants to get in deep. Okay, well, it's gonna be Kilo who gets taken down. Flana, whoa! In the fight, but Flana just carves up three with relative ease. The flex pops, goes around the corner, finds the fourth. Proper dead. Maybe he can even get the ace here if he finishes off Kaluj. He will not. And that's gonna be the breakthrough and the cap on A. Well played. And Lip with the opening frag on a Kilo here as well. I think that's the bad spawn, so a few of the shock members. Yeah, probably will respond, but you can see the silhouette. Some of them are still kind of caught in spawn right now, including from a fake on low HP. Has to respect it and leave, so the Dragons, they want to punish further, but they can't actually have track. Oh, okay, that was a Ooh, great shot. What Combination a combo. of both Violet and Proper, I think, landing on a fake there. But I was going to mention, if Dragons got more kills on Shock's bad spawns there, they would have been able to snowball this one a lot more effectively. But now that Shock's fully respawn together, they can actually play for this high ground properly. Okay, now Iziaki going to get picked off as well, Finn. Finding that kill. Pushing back out to get over to the cart. Can prove rather difficult What's here. What's Jigon doing? What's he doing? Oh. Oh, boy. I mean, he could just go right. down to the low ground. Okay, Infrasight spawns up here. Like that. Okay. I think Dragons actually wait this <laughs> out. I, I don't out think, the hallway. I don't think Dragons actually make any moves while the Infrasight is up. They will respect the ultimate, but it does mean the payload is significantly slow. I mean, look at the payload's actually rolling backwards. They've made no progress on B at all. Yeah. That hit shot up over the top. There's the dink on the fade. Takes him down low. Primal almost online for him. This will be a good amount of charge for Hizayaki. Just healing back up that Winston. So he's getting the rush nearly there. Lip tagged up. Grisha not going to connect. Uh, back See, they're waiting for ult. For a moment. Dragons are waiting for ult. Yeah. They're pushing the payload, waiting for ult. But getting ready to strike. 
Can we go now? Okay, overclock is in. Kinetic grass is gonna be used. Kalush now can't mitigate any more damage, and the headshot connects. He goes out. Then Ligion drops the feed. Finn gonna be cleaved down. Violet dead as well. Akilo did commit the overclock actually to the fight, ends up losing it. Doesn't find any value. Another Clark can move forward. Maybe eh, there should be enough time here for Shock to go for one there last is. Chance, and, and, I think, and I think the question is, is like, okay, well, why doesn't Shock just use ultimates there? Finn was on one, doesn't trance. They know the payload positioning is not good for the Dragon, so they are waiting for one more opportunity to come back in, and they can force this fight, window up from Violet to get positioning. There it is. All right, it's used. Dragon's waiting it out. Break, so for the Dragons. Flux now gonna be going in, gets to pick up onto Izayaki. He gets dropped down, proper dashes forward. Now swapping over to the Tracer. Does find that elimination. Kilo gonna be traded, fit, able to find one bin down low. Immortality kills to come alive. Now the Transcendent's gonna be coming in. Keeps the other four. Oh, Flit is dead. One picked off. That should be the upper I hand here for the side of the Shock. Yeah, the Blade not gonna be able to come through. He get the Trance out, so he's got a bit more. Use for it, I suppose, or a bit more opportunity for it to find an immense amount of value in this in this next fight, but the time bank is still going to be dragging down. That was clutched by the shock and Violet specifically because if they don't kill Flitter, once the trance is gone, Flitter goes for the blade. That was the one thing that was missing. Dragons were holding the blade because they wanted to pressure out the trance. They get the trance, but they can't use a blade because Violet gets the kill. So well played by Shock to recover there. And now we reset. Payload's in a good position, but the time is not good. Popper with a pulse, can he find anything? Blade comes in, it's gonna be leeching on Izayaki and Limb actually, who finds the eliminations. So Popper will get one. Blade still held, flat up, taken down, so he finds the kill, but with him falling, the chance of the hold seems like it dwindles down. Recall, used, Popper not gonna be able to get out of here. So he tracks him perfectly. <laughs> they find the kill, yeah, and uh, that will be the cap coming in. So just shy of three minutes here for the side of the Shanghai Dragons as they go onto the final stretch. I mean, it would have been legendary for Popper to live even longer there, but it probably actually lives for maybe like two to three seconds longer. The rest of the shocks show up in terms of respawns. So he actually nearly clutched that one up big time for the team. It took so long for the Dragons to actually get Proper down, and now Fate really limit testing there a little bit. Doesn't end up popping the primate, which is good. He wouldn't have wanted to waste it there. Changing the card forward now. Next corner, gonna be another breaking point for them. Looks like widely though the Shock are playing back. So maybe they can even get to the final corner relatively for free. Kalush is gonna have to backpedal here sooner rather than later. Just hold on to the flux. Could be a decent opening, but of course he catches multiple. The Yaki's in that mix. The Suzu can go ahead and keep them alive through the drop damage. Flux now paging up for the catch. Like a one. He gets one. Then it gets the, the shielding there from Legion who had dropped the beat, but it's still gonna be Finn Kilo taken down. Violet's on the side of the map. No way to recover from that one. Fate, excellent juggle. And a big opening once again here for the shock is Collusion gonna be the last one to get dropped. That Final was a good delay though. A minute and 40 remaining. Super important Collusion to die, and once again, the shock is big bonus. They're gonna get a final fight here. Kalush comes back on a win, so this is pretty winnable for the shock if they can get value on Transcendence. Lip can go off though. Lip has overclocked, but he finds the opening frag. That would be the cap. High ground control now, found by the dragons. Proper nearly on the pulse as well. It's so reliable for these opening kills. The whole last map. Struggling to find charge. Control. This ends now. Let me do it now. Overclock is popped, goes up over the top. Ben has to pop the transcendent. The headshot will still okay, kill. Okay, Mortality kill goes out, and then it's gonna be lip stuck by Proper. Finds the kill, the rest of the team will follow. Shock, go ahead and clean them up. A clean team fight win with 55 seconds remaining. Shanghai Dragons now in danger of not finishing the map. I was so ready for that to be a kill from Lip, but it was just the immortality field. Flitter now changing over towards the Reaper as we head towards the final contest from Dragons. And it's dubious as to whether they can actually finish the map or not now because they've run out of resources. So, you know, I said previously, if Lip can get a shot, well, now he has to. That'll be one of the only ways to can actually get this done. 30 seconds and. I think Izyaki might still find a Katsune rush, and that will be the final ultimate that will come online for the Dragons. As they once again will force the high ground. Kaluj, by the way, stays on the Winston. He got some ult charge there. He does not have the Lucio and the Kariko to play through, though. This ends now. Mark brought forward again. Overclock of Kilo does get popped. Everybody moves up onto the high ground. Kilo have to touch. wrap around the sides to greet them here. The touch does need to come through. Two seconds, somebody's gotta get there. Okay, they barely managed to make it happen. Playing it close. Super Rush now, early. comes in, proper into the back line. They're trying to find the lockdown there, but finally gets a headshot across on the Lee Jae gone. Opening kill goes the way of the San Francisco Shock. Fleta down to a sliver of HP. Lip 
Grail charged up, misses the shot. Finn strikes him down out of the air. The cleanup comes through just in front of point C is where the cart will rest. So the Shock have a very winnable condition in their pocket here if they can get a strong push going. Honestly, well played there. Uh, shock, especially on B, I think played that uh, B point so spectacularly. A left a bit to be desired. Uh, Shanghai Dragons push through with a little bit of slowdown, but ultimately they'll find the frags. San Francisco Shock end up vacating. But straight from the first moment to be where Shock come out from the A side spawns and then they lose the A cap. And usually, you know, the A attacking team would rush up, get some extra kills. In that case, I think Dragons got the one, but they couldn't get further kills. Shock recover, hold up on the high ground, delay the payload by a long, long time, really shaving that time down. And we get to see really clutch uh, Kaluge plays in the Sigma to keep the payload locked up. Dies, allows the rest of his team to respawn, comes back on a Winston, they hold, they hold strong. Trance from Finn ends up working out. Lip does not get a kill. Great timing by Violet on the immortality field, by the way, as well to stop Lip. We get towards the end, Iziaki throws in the Katsune rush, but the Suzu comes down so early, I mean, doesn't save or do anything for his team, and that could have been used, I think, in a better space to maybe save Lee Jigon or someone else's life. Ben. I've had a nice little relaxing play of the piano. Oh, he can't he can't him. Try to, yeah, try to rip people apart. He goes back over to the Zenyatta. So it looks like Prabra One. off the rip. He's going to try to open with the Widowmaker, just go straight to the Tracer. Which is interesting because the Tracer, well, actually, I see why the Tracer can work. He's just stealing the payload. Which is going to force Dragons back. No matter what happens here, Dragons are going to get forced back. They can't stay they can't here. Kill, oh, never mind. Never mind. They do kill Kalush, but Pete does go down as a cost. And now the rest of the cleanup starts to come in. Lift trying to escape. All right, Proper is here waiting. Pounds him down. Sets up for the kills here for Kilo. Finds another one. And now things get opened up. They find one pick. They lose everybody. The cart now advancing. And Shock actually win that. They win that 4v5 as well. Because remember, Proper wasn't part of that fight until the very end. It was a 5v4 the Dragon spawn camping. And the payload ever so slowly or quickly moving away from the San Francisco Shock spawn and Dragons have got to respond. And, and by the time they're actually respawning here, it's already final fight. Final corner. Well built up. He's trying to get flat up, but he just stay tucked into the corner. Push back out the opposite side, Kilo. Collusion of his ult shot. Hits lip and the accretions there for the alley oop. They find the kills. And again, it is just so clean from the shock. Point A grabbed over five minutes now for this next stretch. That, of the map. I, I think that's cleaner. I think that's even cleaner than what Sh Shanghai Dragons got on their A. Five Let them now go over towards the Genji, which means that Shanghai Dragons, they'll hold on and actually win this map. Their B point defense has to be solid now. Also, part of the reason why Lip is not having the same impact on this map, especially with Kilo just sniping him here, is because the extra shield, the extra compositional difference, it's harder for Lip to actually find these angles. Okay, you can farm some energy off the shields, but you can't do those headshots. Not much. Okay, they do get on top of Finn. They managed to find that punish as Flutter has since swapped back over onto the Genji, but Kaluj picks up two. The Frog is killing off Izayaki, faint dying moments before. And again, it's just a cleanup. Basically a team kill as Lip was dead right before the fight even started. Four and a half minutes just about a shock are at the top of the ramp. They only had to use one ult to get here. And they can play full range here. Violet can hold back, play for the game, make tricks. Finn has transcendence for safety. But Kilo's already got Lip. Yeah, again, just managing to find him. Fate instantly tagged low despite the sound barrier shielding coming in from Lee Gone, and he is going to die. Kilo able to track him as he tries to leap out the safety. And the San Francisco Shock are just storming their way through the streets of Circuit Royale. That's yeah. going to be a cap on point B. And I mean, nearly, what, five and a half minutes for them on the final stretch? Yeah, I think it's done. I think this is this would have to be the most gargantuan, the Mofile-esque defense coming through from Shanghai Dragons. And they've fallen completely flat on this map. And you really owe credit to the map choice selection, compositional selection from the San Francisco Shock here. As is this the first Circuit Royale we've actually played in playoffs? Can't quite remember, but it might be. It's certainly the first I time we've so. seen some... Actually, it's not the first time we've seen Serious Sigma play. We actually got that a little bit of that yesterday as well, but... Yeah, it's working wonders for Kaluj. That it is. Looking well at home. Robert into the back line. Close bomb at the ready. Still holds on to it. Doesn't feel that the moment is right. But Adash is in trying to force his position. Robert. 
continuing to push. He's trying to get in behind them. Continues to poke and prod. They know that he has this stick. Kilo in the meantime just get taken down. Fate popped the primal off screen. Not on top of the enemy soldier, but the card the is still there. Support. Kalusha's just walking this one in. Uh, hello. There you go. Not looking at the Charlie Niner this themselves after getting the back cap, but Lip's still going to crumble. And the HP bar is right now dangerously low to the side of the Shanghai Dragons. Pulls bump, lobbed in, goes into the corner. Fate leaps away up into the high ground and manages to avoid the blast. Kalush taken down. Maybe a semblance of stability found here for the side of the Dragons. It's still so much time to work with if they want to win this. Cosimo is going to rush ultimate to do so as well. Proper pulls in the pulse bomb, which is kind of free because you can just charge that one back up so quickly. And you got Dragons to actually reset Shock, I think maybe the first time so far on this entire defense. Flitter with the blade. Difficult to get value here though. Also, by the way, Finnet 82, so there's a very specific timing window for Flitter. And it's about to close. We're gonna need to use this soon or try to force out that transcendence, perhaps with an overclock. They just gone to eat to get the speed up. Window comes down, Lip taken out, and he pops the overclock, he loses the ult. Now it's desperation as Flutter pulls the blade. He's looking for a target, but he's down low. The trance is there. Kilo, the only casualty thus far. Lijigon falls, Izayaki stunned by the accretion. The cart glides in, and the shock, they manage to rebound. What a return to form from them. Absolutely crushing their way through Circuit Royale after that heartbreaking loss. Over on Eichenbaum, they make it look easy. They now have the lead two to one, the series in their hands. That was so critical. I mean, the entire way through, you'll give credit for Shanghai yeah. to even get to the end of the map, but for San Francisco Shock, the entire attack, they might have only lost, I think, one fight total. And the way they outplay all of the resources coming on through, all the weapons coming on through from the Shanghai Dragons, right? The blade doesn't do enough. Lip gets shut down instantaneously when he pops the overclock. Fade is consistently forced to Primal too early, well, earlier than you'd like to. And it costs Dragons, you know, plenty to even try and defend. I mean, Iziaki has to pull through a Katsune Rush Ultimate because Kaluj is back capping, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, San Francisco shot a fantastic map pick. Once again, shoutouts to Cross and the team because this one was masterful. Yeah, absolutely impeccable from the entire squad here on the Shock. Now the series is in their hands, two to one the lead, one more map for them to see whether or not they are going to be eliminating the Shanghai Dragons or if we will be going into a game five. Either way, the action does not stop yet. We will have push coming up. Shanghai Dragons have the map picked. We'll see where they decide to take us when we come back for the break.
all comes down to this, you can feel the momentum. The fifth season is coming to an end, and it's time to crown our next Overwatch League champions. To be back with such a fresh game, I'm here for it. For the first time in a damn long while, we have LAN. It has been a long time coming, and it feels great to be back. There's just something magical about a global tournament finally pinning the West and East regions together. Completely different environment out here at LAN. This is where legends are born, Matt. I feel like we have seen the ceilings go even taller. Come at me, bro. Let's see what you got. This one's for all the marbles. This is for last battle. The stakes are continuing to get higher and higher. It's supercharged with emotion. He's not going to touch. Touch. touch! They can't do it! Every upset, every tournament, every victory has led to this moment. This is the big international event. This is the playoff, so you got to give it all you've got. One last cataclysmic fight. This is the place where MN3 stuck his flag. Why did they beat him today? That's legendary stuff. Was that triple collapse? But Pelican comes out of nowhere. That's two of the Storm Arrows millimeters away from victory in that diet. All Prophet sees is fear and dead men. Beautiful stuff. What is more satisfying than that? But it's hard for one man army up the front. One man, four foes of one flip of the point. Everybody fighting tooth and nail here. It is do or die. Oh, man! This guy's a real deal. We are going all the way. Today is about maximum Overwatch. Are you not entertained? And we are back. The Shanghai Dragons backs up against the wall. They need to win out this next map a push to extend this series all the way to a map five if they want to stay in the playoffs. One of these teams is going home at the end of this, and right now, Shock have the upper hand. And again, you really have to credit how well chosen that Circuit Royale map was. The flexibility of Kalu's to go between both a Sigma and a Winston, something that the Shanghai Dragons, you'd have to pick one of your tanks for, not both. You can't have both Fate and Void at the same time. And also, didn't get to speak about it much, but Kilo coming in, full striker, playing the Sojin, while Proper goes over for Widow, for Tracer, and Kilo actually pops off really hard. He had some great impact on that match, plenty of final blows, even out playing Lip at certain times as well. Something that Proper stri struggled to do on uh, the Icon Vault map. And as we move forward here, San Francisco Shock winning that beautiful circuit royale we are going to get off the escort maps head over towards push striker comes back in as well over kilo to play the reaper prop will be back on that sojourn and likely that means we're back into the winston mirror as well this is going to be far more comfortable for the Shanghai dragons in terms of playing the mirror they can ideally on their end go back to what was working on Eichenwalder, which is uh, a lot of actually just lip getting the first blood. Can he do that again? He struggled to do that versus Kalooj the Sigma, but lacking that Sigma shield now, that can maybe get more success. I can just wait and see. But yeah, the Sigma very much through a spanner in the works for all of the Shanghai Dragons. Just looking a bit out of sorts. I mean, the attack going decently for them, but couldn't get to the finish. Shock just making it look easy. Breezy on the attack of their own, but it will be Esperanza once more. As this map continues to pick up some popularity amongst the playoffs teams, it would seem. Yeah. Coming through. Can this be the staging ground? We saw the Fusion electing to go to this map rather than New Queen Street earlier on today, and it did not work out for them whatsoever. The Glads managed to give us our first eve, the first ever push to completion on Esperanza. So we'll see how the Dragons now fare. We haven't seen Dragons on a push map so far in the playoffs because, well, they got 3 0 by the Hunter Spark in round one. San Francisco Shock, they narrowly beat the Houston Outlaws on Esperanza. The scoreline was 86.62 meters versus 86.61 meters. So, literally, just, you know, they basically got that last flip in the map and remember how that happened. So, no overtime in that, that particular map yesterday. So, I think Shock don't mind running it back. They're pretty happy with it, given that they had success on it previously. We have no idea what Shanghai Dragons will bring to the table here and how they will perform. Don't get baited by the Echoes. This will definitely be the Sojourn. Or well, for Striker to be the uh, Reaper. Five, four, Everything now three, for the Shanghai Dragons. One. 
fairly new territory for them to be in a lower bracket, at least this early on in the tournament. Now are at risk of being eliminated. Cannot leave anything on the table as they rush out now. The shots flying, Lee Jigong getting tagged up, but Wiley's gonna be okay. They'll occupy the bot first and foremost. Dragon's a little bit quicker though, and shot playing towards the bridge side and better damage from a oh, limp. Huge pick off to start things off. Could that just be the beginning of the end? Still nine and a half minutes of play through. So we'll have to just wait and see. Is he trying to get some shots across right now? He's going to be ahead of hit by about 5%. But then Violet gets on top of him, finds the follow up kill. Lee on nowhere to go. Melted down by the nade. Faith will just try to get any charge that he possibly can, but it's not much of anything at all. As proper mind slips straight out of the respawn doors once again. The headshot is crisp. It's clean and it's devastating. And it's a smile on Proper's face as well. He knows he's turned on the heat now. Putting limp to the sword. All the damage, all the kills. A shot suffered against Lip early on. Eichenwald has now been turned around. Dragons quickly now need to contest this payload as one more fight for the shot and they get the cap. No ultimates up for anybody just yet. Proper does lead. Okay, they go ahead, they grab the bot. It can be held with the choke here. Proper builds up, looks for another instant execution, sends it towards Lip, takes him low, the follow up. Nearly there, but he does manage to stay alive this time around. Lip needs to be showing us some of that magic that we saw from him on Eichenbaum. He wants to turn this. Already 40 meters set up on one fight. Pretty there he is. good. And now, Overclock comes in. Proper finds fate. Takes him out. Lip will answer back with one, canceling the rest of the ult. They need a lot more than that if they want to try to get the spot moving. Lip finds a second. Zap's Three. coming in. Lip gets a third. And that's what we're talking about. Finds the kill. Spit will fall. Final shot. Violent will go down, Lee Jae God picks up both the supports, and now the Shanghai Dragons can finally start getting some distance for themselves. No cap for Shock. They did not get that first checkpoint. Let's take a look at the replay here again. Watch how well protected Lip ends up being. HP down to 37, I just saw there. As everybody's on him, he knows 3 HP, by the way. Everybody knows that Lip is the target. So Shanghai Dragons throw everything on Lip to try and keep him up, and Shock throw everything on him to try and get him down. About halfway to match, the rushes come out on either side. Kalush pops the primal rage. The bot's gonna be stolen away. Shanghai Dragons need to try to get back over on top of it. Wait to the dive forward here from Fate. Oh man! Clock in place, Lip. Overclock comes in. Violet's gonna be eliminated. That's gonna be the beat now out of the fight for the side of the shock. Unless they get along in the fight with Finn falling as well. That should be the end of it. Dragons be able to take one, but Fate, okay, he does go down. He Another does pop the primal. They don't want to have to commit it in the fight, but they would they would rather have him still alive here, but they should be able to get some good distance. Lip goes from 3k to 4k. Alrighty. Should get some decent distance here. They might get a flip, but it... Oh, wow! Oh, what is that? God. Okay. Yeah, we're back. We are back on Eichenwalder. Shock still need to contest this one, otherwise it will be the camp. The flip is now coming on through. Just a few tens of meters remaining here for the Shock. Violet's now respawn. Speed required here. Shock got to get on this payload fast. Feels like Lip and Proper playing horse against each other, having a match on. Cap gets the shot out of the spawn room. Yeah, the Cap is there, the forward spawn established for the side of the Shanghai Dragons, but they don't want to be done quite just yet. Beats out from either side, Death Blossom thrown in by Striker, will find Izzy Yaku, could get himself out of there to save the Legion Gone now. Also in a bad spot, down the low on HP. Fate does hold on to the Primal, says it's okay, we've got the checkpoint, we got that out of the way. I'll just die, save the Primal for the next fight. Yep, so that was an very obvious choice there from Fake, given that he was on critically low HP. Ops to not Primal, would have been a 4 5 I wouldn't have hated them for going for the Primal, I think it would have been an okay decision, but they'll hold. Playing for the future fight, playing for the future opportunities here as we're about to trade Kitsune rushes. Ben has one first, proper pulls through, instantly gets a shot. For it. Now he's, he's thinking about it though, and he thinks about a little bit too much. As I'm getting taken down, that's gonna be the shot he will equalize. Should be another flip, cap and a flip here. And that's yeah. the Dragons, you know, unfortunately when you kind of get ripped apart very quickly there as Proper wants to get the same early spawn frag that Lip has been getting that Proper also got on Lip a little bit earlier on. We're actually dead tied up. We're tied up. We do have a, a cap on both ends here. here. So Dragons, yeah, they want to contest. They have the ultimate, superior ultimates as well. Okay, there's the Tsunade Rush from Finn Hizayaki. Throws out his as well, Lee Jigong getting collapsed upon. Falls low, but does stay alive. The Death Blossom from Flutter tries to buy them a little bit of space. Primal now out from both of the Winstons. Flutter continues to fall low, Fate as well as the Primal expires. Down below half HP. They desperately need some healing, they desperately need some headshots here from Lyft. 
for a target. So the clock rolling. Finally, the shock can shift back and break line of sight and deny him access. Kills not found, and now the beat in from Violet. Lee Jae Gun still 13% away from one of his own, and the Shanghai Dragons can get barreled over. The shock play off the back of the shielding perfectly, and now they continue to take the lead. And this is going to be a lot of distance here as well, assuming they keep on pushing his strike has barely got the payload. Great timing by Violet. The sound barrier will be the difference maker when all rest is stalled up. Lip does not find the rail shot. Violet will push it over the edge for the shock as we now hit above 80, reaching towards 90. Dragons look to contest as Lee Jae Gun builds the sound barrier up himself. Violet dead. That's a huge pick here for the Dragons. Proper still going on the offensive. Slides up, tries to get behind Lip to find that elimination. Still has them at risk. Bubble comes down perfectly timed to go ahead and block that rail shot, which otherwise might have taken down Fleta's life. Xavier has to be used by Legion Gun just to ensure that they went out the rest of the fight. They will do so cleanly. Bot again going to be shipped back, but it's nearly a 40 meter advantage now for the shot. Let's take a look at that early shot coming through from Izayaki. Okay, yeah, just... Ooh. Sends it through. Oh, it's a long yeah. range. Barely finds the head, but we'll get it. I heard two dinks in there as well. So the midpoint recaptured for the Dragons. Ford spawn denied. Well, when I say denied, I mean it's taken away. This force one has been claimed by Shock. And we swap sides, actually. The Dragons are on the Shock end. The Dragons will have to spend ultimate move. He's the holder for now. Burns it. But they do have that rush. They're going to use it. Plenta immediately falls low. Shots flying, Robert trying to line somebody up here with the overclock, and he'll okay. make just a brief riddle. Clips of Lee Jae gone, and he strikes within that window. What a hit from him. Fate now popping the Primal Rage, trying to keep them in this one, but Izayaki is all by himself. He's got no one else to try to heal him up, and he gets taken down. Planet now dead, his striker will claim two. They only pick up about five meters here, still at a disadvantage of 32. The bot once more in the hands of the Shock, three minutes remaining. And it costs Dragons an extra fight every single time they get reset like this. Well, it's going to go back for a couple of uh, taxiing players. So we're not going to see a ton of distance being pushed up by Shock in terms of... Well, okay, but they're going to try and shove it as much as they can, but they're not going to increase the 92. This ends now. The overclock is out. Lip looking for value. Bubble taken away. Primal gets popped by Kalush trying to stay alive. So far, Lip isn't finding any of those low HP members that he would love to just can't see anybody. assassinate. Instead, it's just the Winston. Spots one there for just a brief moment, but has not sent the rail out quite just yet. Just continues to hold it as the bot is locked in place. Time's running out. It's on Dragons here to move things forward. They're currently getting stuck. It's shocked with more ultimates here as well. Dragons need a build. They need a rail. They need something. Violet. They need Violet. He's got the sound barrier. He's going to be taken down. Fate able to play off the back of that shot. Proper is well down low. Fifth sends some healing over his way. But it uses the death blossom. They fall right into his trap. Pulls the trigger on that. Cleans up the kills. The bot again in control of Shanghai. But they need to get distance on this push. Otherwise, the shot, they might as well just go ahead and close out this map now. I think there's split spawns here. If I'm not mistaken, Kaluj did not get a... No, okay, he, they all got the spawn together back in. Never mind. It's looking out to see if they were getting that uh, midpoint quote-unquote cap in time for the Dragons. But a lot of distance still remaining here, about 30, right? So they need to win, I'd say, about two fights here. The strike getting low, but it's finally the strike to have the ults, and Tempo Beat coming up through both teams. The beat comes through, Rush nearly there for Izayaki. Now has it on the line, he's gonna pop it instantly. Shielding gone from Legion, gone Fate taken down! Striker just plus four, it's over towards it. The boot comes in, they knock away the Death Blossom. Suffer any losses from that one, but the HP bars continue to get shredded down. Violet nearly giving his life to get the kill on a lift, but he still does stay alive. But it doesn't stand a chance. Only fights one, three meters gained. Shanghai Dragons again reset. One minute left on the clock. And they'll get the fourth spawn here, so they'll at least be able to take a very quick fight, but they basically can't lose from now. We're going to head into OT. If Dragons yeah. can turn this around and win the map, take us to a map five, they got to do it in the overtime. Backs against the wall. Their season on the line. Dragons will be falling the playoffs 0 and 2 if they lose this map now. And they need ultimates. They need something they have bot control at least. As the shock start building up for more. Kaluz looking towards Primal. He'll get it before fate. Proper. He's got the overclock. Pushing around the back. Puts a little bit of damage here. Tickling his Iyaki. Overclock now popped. He swings around the corner. The bubble blocks it. Doesn't get the hit there on the lip. Great timing there from Fate, albeit likely inadvertent. The bot, though, taken by the shock. They continue to ship it back to the opposite side of the- Oh my god! He gets the assassination! Shoots him right in the thigh, gets the melee hit. Lift knocked out of the park. What a play from Proper. That might just be game winning. 
Primal does get built up. Fate alive. The bot contested for now. Kalush at the same time. Primal is rolling. He's got the juggle going through. Izayaki needs to get a TP the hell out of here. Flitta barely manages to Bubble. escape. Flitta with an end boss. I'm not going to be able to find anything. The bubble blocks it out. He gets taken down. The beat gets dropped. The shotgun looking to end it. Lee Jae on a declaration uses it. The rush comes through. Lip rejoins. The overclock pop. He does get proper, but they need so much more. He'll find a second. Does he find a third? Slide up onto the high ground. Kalush still here, still healthy. The close quarters contest for Finn. The rush is nearly available. He's down to a sliver of HP. Limp slides in to keep the bot contested, but he gives his life for it. The cleanup is there. The OT bleeds away. And the Shock have done it. Three to one. They deny the map five. And they eliminate their longtime rivals in the Shanghai Dragons. Somebody had to go home today, and it will be the Shanghai Dragons. Esperanza goes the way of the San Francisco Shock. The early lead they had has been kept 92 meters. And the Shanghai Dragons do not get more than 63. It has been a hard season. A lot of difficulty in there. Ups and downs the entire way through. They won the Summer Showdown off the back of Void. The meta shifts away from off tanks over towards Winston. Void can no longer play in this meta for the playoffs. He already announced his retirement basically after the Summer Showdown, saying he's going to go to the military next year. And for the Shanghai Dragons as well, so many contracts I'd imagine ended after being signed as rookies in the 2020 season. You remember Lee Jae Gon, Lip, and all of them. No matter what happens, the Shanghai Dragons will look a little bit different next year. This might be the last time that we see them as this exact unit between retirements and contracts. The Shanghai Dragons, they already won the 2021 season. I mean, their legacy is protected. They are the final team to have won a championship in Overwatch 1. But in Overwatch 2, it just wasn't there yet. No, it was not an unfortunate end here to the Shanghai Dragons, unable to pick up a single series in the playoffs. Looking a hell of a lot better, we must say, though, in this set versus the Shock, but just not quite good enough to be able to take us all the way to five and then try to close it out proper. What a final map from him, the so whole good. team yeah. throughout that map of Circuit Royale as well, just firing on all cylinders. The Dragons, seems like they just ran out of gas at the end. Lip still putting up some solid figures for a brief little moment. I thought maybe he was going to make it happen with that overclock at the end to keep them in yeah. this map, but not to be. They get the shutdown in the end, and the San Francisco Shock will hold their heads high as they stay alive in the 2022 playoffs. The man on your screen walking towards the left, Kaluj, is going to be the player of the match there as well. And I think in some ways, you know, a big shout out to Mikey, already gave him one off the back of Lee Jung Tower. But it's the tank players that I think coming through from the San Francisco shop that ultimately puts the pressure onto Lip. And that's the only way you're going to really shut down the Dragons, right? Because otherwise, we've seen what Lip can do. When he takes command of the game, he becomes unstoppable, and it has to come down to win supply. But I also got to say, this map impressed me so much from the shock. Kaluj coming on the Sigma. Yeah. I had teased and hinted that maybe we would see this, that maybe they would even bring it out versus Houston. Wasn't to be the case, but versus the Shanghai Dragons, boom. The Sigma finds value. And he absolutely carried on that map and had a stunning performance on Esperanza as well. Proper, of course, getting a number of important frags there. I think when you see the final fight coming on through and Proper gets their rail shot onto Lip, you know at that point, Shocker in the driver's seat. And with Kaluj to back them up, play the match today on Winston, on Sigma. They get the 3-1 victory over the Dragons. And as you mentioned, they stay alive. And at I this mean, point, they are going to be playing the LA Gladiators in the next round. Should be I mean, another look banger. at his statistics versus the Dragons. I mean, already nearly 7,000 damage per, per 10 as a Winston. That's pretty damn good. He almost had averaged two eliminations per minute playing this one out. Just fantastic performance here from Kaluj. The man's jacked. He's out of his mind. And he has uh, helped his team pick up this win. Yeah. So the San Francisco Shock, they keep their heads above the water, but they are still at risk. They are going to have to play tomorrow yeah. again. Fast turnaround against our previous series winners in the Gladiators. And I got a, you know, one last, I think, send off for the Shanghai Dragons just because, you know, they are defending champions, a super important team as well. As I said, I think the last time that we see this specific team of Shanghai Dragons together, um, if, 
you know, if there was a crowd, I'm sure a standing ovation for Lip's performance. Again, verbatim on Twitter, he says, I don't want to finish now. I know it's heartbreaking to see that the Dragons go 0-2. Lip specifically did not want to bow out this early, but I gotta say for his individual performance, he really gave it his all. He put all the chips on the table and he performed the best he could. And that's all you can really ask for. Yeah, uh, an incredible just set of play uh, from Lip. Everybody, honestly, just playing their hearts out there on the side of the Dragons, but it's those minute mistakes that kind of caught up with them in the end, that overextension on Gardens on Lijiang Tower that allows Shock to get back into the point. They could have started this series off up 1-0 rather than having the fight back and pick up a win on Hybrid. Um, it's just, you know, something that we've seen from them time and time again throughout the season, which is why they haven't been as dominant this year as in the, se the seasons prior. But still, a, you know, a great series for them to go out, out on. I wish that it went all the way to five, but still very much a smorgasbord what we got from them. Uh, but GG's to those guys. We'll hope to see a lot of those faces again next season for the Shock. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing if they can continue to run it back. That's going to do it for well myself done. and Avril here today, though. UberX will be jumping in to guide you through the last two series of the evening because, yeah, we're just at the halfway point. There's so much more action. There's still two more teams to be sent home. But before they take over, we'll go back over to the desk after a quick little break to break down the action from this absolutely crazy series. I won't say the word again. I don't want to get fined twice. But, uh, yeah, it was a wild one. See you guys tomorrow. Oh. The shield one, the shield, the shield one. I'm there. I got you, Sha. Baby keep, baby keep. Yeah, yeah, Saber, Saber, Saber. It's okay, Saber. Oh, the shield's done. The shield's done. Oh, so done. Oh, we know where it is. Oh, so done. 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 Oh, no one lays a finger on your butterfinger.
Welcome back to another game break. I'm here joined by the player of the match, Kluj from San Francisco. Shaw Kluj, uh, big congratulations on the win. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. I, I mean, that match was a lot closer than I thought it should be, but you know, we pulled through. So. Yeah, and you guys did clutch out the win. So I want to I wanna start this interview by just asking you uh, about the San Francisco Shocks tank subbing strat, I guess you could say, because uh, it seems like Mikey is the one uh, coming in for like when the beginning of the match uh, in, I guess, map one, and then you sub in after that. So how does that subbing strat work for the team? Uh, Mikey, he's better at like cough maps. Like the play style on cough maps is a lot faster. You need to be more like a space taking Winston, like know where the rotates are. He's a lot better at that than me. I'm more like slower playing on the pay, the payload, like forcing our resources and then going. So that's like the difference in our play styles and I feel like it works pretty well. Oh, okay. So it's just, it's sort of just like difference in play styles and that's how yeah. you guys are like subbed in depending on like map and the play style. Got yeah. it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right, and not only that, you know, uh, this was this match was your first time going up against a Eastern Region team and, uh, for the playoffs specifically. Do you think there's like a big stylistic difference between the East and the West West right now? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that the the East kind of plays like a slower type of game, and they're more resource intensive. I feel like the the West, we kind of just go in and we don't really think about it too much. If there's five people doing one thing at one time, I mean, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, whatever. I feel like they, they like slow down the game so, a lot so you, and try to outplay the opponent. Okay, so do you, you think you think the Western teams are more aggro? Yeah, than, a lot faster uh, playstyle versus the East teams are a lot mm. slower playstyle. Would you say that that's sort of better? Uh, in a way, because right now the comps are sort of, re they're pretty much similar. They're pretty much the same. Do you think going aggro is more beneficial or do you think it's just the Eastern region style is better? Uh, I think the West style is better. I mean, I don't think the East is going to do too hot in this tournament, in my opinion, but I, I could be wrong. I think mm. if you look at the Dallas play style, they're, they're really fast sometimes and then other times they're really slow. So they kind of take parts from both sides and mix it into their, their uh, team style. All right, interesting. Kaluj, uh, that's all. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for your time again. Big congratulations on the win. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Let's head back to Zoe and Rest of the Desk. Here thank you so much, uh, Danny. Yeah, I am back with Rest of the Desk, and we are here to break down yeah. all the action. The rest, of course. the rest, the rest. Of the desk. Yeah, now I've reinforced, and of course, Jaws are joining me to break it all uh, down. Interesting opinions here from Kaluj. Would you generally agree with the assessment of playstyle and uh, playstyle, and which of those uh, might be better for the current meta? Yeah, I mean, I think that you can't really classify some of the teams like aggressive and uh, reactive when it comes to the region per se. Because, for example, like the Philadelphia Fusion, we see them two times now and they've been very aggressive. But we do have other teams like the Shanghai Dragons, for example, that sit a bit more far back in that regard. So there are definitely distinctive styles. Hydro Spark is another one, for example. They have gone pretty aggressive with Fusion at times, right? So um, I don't really think it pertains to the region as much. I will say, though, that some of these Western region teams like the San Francisco Shock, for example, especially with Mikey in the mix, they are being more aggressive, and I think Dallas Fuel is the leading candidate when it comes to those aggressive teams that are finding a lot of success with that playstyle. Also, I mean, look, I'm biased, all right? I'm a super aggressive Winston, so I'm always going to say that being proactive is better than being reactive, but also the LA Gladiators, they won a match just recently playing that reactive style. So I'm not going to crown one superior style, but I love seeing, you know, people being aggressive, like Lip was just there with the way they got the shots as well. <laughs> Man, Liv just went kind of crazy in this game. I mean, if someone tried on. to carry it, it was... Oh, damn. Was, he, was, he was trying his best. Yeah. Uh, may his back rest in peace. Unfortunately, it was just not enough. Yeah, that, that was actually insane, the performance Liv put up. Like, ridiculous levels of carrying on the Sojourn. Like, um, we were kind of looking at the stats during the game, and we were surprised that his final blows weren't as high as we thought, but, like, it wasn't necessarily... Like, how many final bows he had, it was more like the impact of them, especially on the Icon uh, map, it was ridiculous. Um, I, I just want to make a small point on the Kalush, um topic too. I think it's a really interesting way of looking at it, like a slower paced style in the Eastern region, Western style is uh, a little bit more fast paced. Um, and I 
also kind of agree with you, Johnny. Like, it's, you know, a little mixed bag here and there. But it's quite traditional, I think, to have um, slower teams in the East. We've seen that over the last couple of years. Um, and then faster teams in the West. Although, this meta, man, you have to play quick. Yeah, I mean, like, you just have to. I yeah. think you have to play both styles. Depending on who is your opponent, right? Like, you, 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 you kind of have to be able to have that ebb and flow, which you broke down so well yesterday, Reinforced. Like, you need to know when it is desirable to be more aggressive versus when you want to play reactionary to like counter it just like the gladiators did in their previous match uh, now i uh, do uh, want to take a quick look at a little highlight and or mm. low light low light both low light. depending i mean who every asking, highlight is a low light for someone that is very true how poetic <laughs> it is but this one in particular <laughs> it's uh, a, very much a highlight for Lee Jae Gon and the Shanghai Dragons, but also a bit of a low light for the San Francisco Shock. But I mean, Shock, they won the match, you know? You, I'm not bagging on the Shock here, all right? Because they won the match, you advance to the next round. Let's celebrate that. And also a bit of a funny moment here for the San Francisco Shock. Of course, I'm talking about the Lee Jae Gon back cap here on Ike Maldo. So let's break it down how it actually happened. So Shanghai. right here, we have Shanghai Dragons on the offense, and they're going to try to contest this card. So we can play this clip forward. And what we're going to see is how these teams are like vying for positioning. So Shanghai are doing the card right now, and we can see if we pause it right here, that the San Francisco Shock, they are going to pursue uh, when they find that opening that I talked about yesterday, right on this Winston. So you can see now, if we play this out, the Shanghai Dragons, they're going to commit, or rather the Shock are going to commit. They go forward, they are pushing in, and we see the leap backwards from Fate. Now, if we go ahead and pause right here, the Shanghai Dragons, they've actually rotated into the castle. Fleta has just used the Wraith form on Reaper. We broke that down as well. Wraith form, that's an opportunity to engage. But all the while this is happening and Shock are seeing that something's like they, they can win this fight. Look on the left. It's Lidia Gonna La Lucio just abandoning his team. So while we play this out, we can see that Shock, they are so focused on trying to win this fight. But Lee Jae Gon, he immediately rotates to the card, and it's a bit of a C9 from the San Francisco Shock, obviously stating Cloud9, that's a historical team that stepped off the card way too many times and earned themselves a name for it. Not what, it, what you want to be known for, but once again, let's look at it from Lee Jae Gon's perspective. They have to disengage here, but notice like the immediacy when he gets into this cattle, he zoom into the cards, like straight away, not even second guessing himself. The shock, they're caught off guard because they're trying to win this fight. And Lee Jae Gon with a beautiful back cap. This is one of the best plays I've seen all year because of the presence of mind. There's no hesitation, there's no second thought. Lee Jae Gon, he recognized how close they were to capping the payload there on Eichenwalde, and it paid huge dividends. They win a very close map just because of that small play. Yeah, what you didn't see actually in the Italian green room was Johnny flipping over an entire sofa <laughs> on top of me. That was very epic. On top of yeah. you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. You didn't brutal see? You were, he was in a blinding was, rage. Yeah, like he, pure he red. <laughs> <laughs> I primal rage was rushing IRL. through him. Literally. And he True. flipped the sofa over, almost hit the TV. It crushed me. It wasn't a good time. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, this is totally not made up. This is exactly no, this what is happened exactly in what that happened. green room. Uh, I HR, do, however, uh, want to take sweet. just one quick second before we are previewing the next match. A few final words uh, to the Shanghai Dragons, who unfortunately are now officially out. They are the current reigning champions, and they will not be able to get that back-to-back -back trophy. Yeah, it's insane uh, having them go out this early, but we were talking about it at the very top of the day. This loser's bracket is ridiculous. Like, how many top-tier teams do we have in loser's bracket right now? Like, Glads, of course, we have Shanghai Dragons and the San Francisco Shock. Who thought we'd be here in losers with some reigning champions. I think obviously a lot of the uh, Shanghai Dragons can pat themselves on the back. Lip especially after that performance was ridiculous. Like heads should be held uh, highest it could ever be. I don't know how high you could really get. The guys are pretty tall anyway. But um, <laughs> at the end of the day, the Shanghai Dragons, they're going to come back stronger next year, you can imagine. It's just this playoffs has just been disgusting. Like how much talent we've had, new and old, coming in. Well, that is the big question, right? Will they come back stronger? Because in many ways, I look at this loss right here. This is the closing of a chapter for the Shanghai Dragons. Of course, it started with a horrific 0-42 run for this franchise, but they clawed themselves back with the help of Gamsu, for example. They won a stage time in 2019 and then committed to this roster that they pretty much have now set in store in 2020. They found massive amounts of success. They won a title in 2021. But tons of rumors about a lot of these players retiring now after this year. Void, as Avril said, pretty much confirming that he's retiring to join the Korean military. Of course, mandatory in Korea. Um, so in many ways, this is the closing of a chapter. Um, I'm very appreciative of so many awesome highlights and moments this franchise and this roster has brought us here in the Overwatch League. And I can't wait to see what all these players pursue, whether it's in the Overwatch League 
or in real life. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Yeah, and that does, uh, you know, open up room for some new dragons, dragonlings. Dragonlings. The hatchlings are coming hatchlings. out to play. Let's, <laughs> let's see how it goes in the next season. For now, we say goodbye to the dragons. Thank you so much. Uh, everything Jonathan just said, he summed it up just so nicely. Now, we are looking at our next match, and that's going to be a rematch already from day number one. Of course, I'm talking about the Atlanta Rain facing off against the Florida Mayhem. Florida knocked the Atlanta Rain into the loser's bracket on day number one. Why are you smiling? I what think it's hilarious on? that like Atlanta were like, oh, we got Got swept by the Florida Mayhem. Let's go to the losers bracket. Oh, it's Florida Mayhem again! <laughs> Come on, like we gotta play you guys. This is this is Halloween moment right here. Yeah, but like looking into that first match, the the big question we had for the Atlanta Rain was like, who is gonna pick up that main tank, Winston? Uh, we we had a, a lot of questions now. Looking at the starting lineups for this one, we actually see a change coming in because Gator Ooh, there he is, is back in reinforced. How does that make you feel? Well. Actually, yeah, actually, Hotei coming out, it does make me feel pretty good. Awesome. We haven't seen Gator in the lineup since about the kickoff clash. And the big story was, of course, that Atlanta Rain, they put all their faith behind Hawk as their tank, you know, named as the Jot, the, the jack of all tanks, because he's able to play so many of these tanks. But now we're heading into a Winston meta, and I think it was quite clear that maybe Hawk struggled to, you know, pursue that Winston specialty. We've seen other teams around the league struggling when it comes to this pick. So. Relying on your uh, main tank instead, Gator, of course known for the Reinhardt and the Winston pick, maybe this will suit them better. I think this will be a jolt of energy, like, hey, we lost 3-0 to the Florida Mayhem. Maybe you're a bit, like, you know, disenfranchised and a bit, you know, un not confident in yourself after that loss. Well, Gator, different circumstances, new roster in for the Atlanta Rain here. Maybe that will be like a jolt of energy of like, hey, we can do this with Gator in as our Winston player. Maybe this will lead to a victory here for the Atlanta Rain. I mean, we've already seen it once. The Dallas Fuel didn't play a whole lot of fearless throughout the entire season, right? And now he's coming in and kind of dominating for the Fuel. So like, what's the better time to bring in your main tank player? Well, right now, uh, and yeah, the loss is gonna hurt for sure. Maybe bring some bad memories back against Hydra and Sojin, but look, <laughs> uh, Gator is still, we haven't seen him play since Kickoff Flash, so it's, it's hard to really tell because we haven't seen footage of it, but he's probably still as good as he's ever been. Like, they were the dynamic duo in the Atlanta Reign last year, uh, playing an Overwatch 1. Like, their off-tank and main-tank play was just so sublime. Um, I can't imagine they've lo lost any of that kind of pizzazz. I'm ex super excited to get it, honestly, and I think this is a kind of a perfect metaphor, obviously, because of the Winston, but um, just that refresh big jolt of energy like you were saying, Johnny. Yeah, it's going to be a good time, I think, for Atlanta Rain fans. Yeah, and now that we talked about Winston, we also have to check the Sojourn box. And for that, oh, yeah. we're heading over to our leveling up segment presented by Butterfinger. And we want to take a look at the Sojourn head-to-head -head between those two teams because this one is going to be pretty spicy. It can be quite explosive. Uh, we have two phenomenal players. I'm going to be so interested to see who's coming out on top. But if we're looking at the statistics here so far, Hydron is looking really good in the majority of metrics. Kai, of course, with a little bit more damage output here, though. Yeah, a little bit more damage, but you're looking at charge shot kills. That's what you're really yep. looking at. The majority of the final blows are coming from just those railgun headshots, whether it's overclock, whether it's just a regular charge shot. Uh, even overclock kills, Hydron's kind of um, beating him there just a tad. The stats are fairly close. I mean, final blows is uh, more for Hydron right now, uh, but this is also in playoffs, too. It's kind of worth keeping in mind that Atlanta Rain did end up losing 3-0, so you're still thinking, yeah, of course your Sojourn's going to be behind on stats. Everybody's going to be behind on stats because you ended up losing. So you're kind of shrugging there just a little bit, I think. But Hydron's just been unreal. Like, Sojourn plays stepped up to another level. I don't know if it's Lamb or, like, something else, something in the water, something in the breakfast, uh, in the hotel. But the spirits Jesus. of Anaheim. <laughs> just okay, like, oh, no, okay, not again. And on that note, we are ready for another match. And for all the action, we're going to send it over to Uber and Mr. X. As the sun has set over Anaheim, so has it set over the campaigns of two of our Overwatch League playoff teams. And two more are to follow today in our lower bracket matches, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Overwatch League playoffs. I'm Mitch Leslie, joined by Matthew Morello, presiding over, first up, a rematch. These two teams have only had, what, yeah. a couple of days in between the last two. time they played each other. And that last head-to-head -head was the first time this season that the Florida Mayhem was able to win a series against the Atlanta Rain, and they're here to run it back. So nice, they're gonna have to do it twice. 
Yeah, it's funny that, uh, you know, these two teams met up two days ago. I think I saw Noah, our uh, stats guy on Twitter, was saying the la last time our next uh, match after this, Hangzhou uh, versus Toronto, it was like 1,300 days uh, between their matches. Uh, I I'm excited. I I look, I love elimination matches. It's sad to see people go, but this is where you see the best out of teams, I feel like. Uh, and Atlanta making a huge gamble, I would say, here, uh, you know, putting Gator in. Uh, we don't know how much scrim time he's had, I imagine. Uh, you know, just in general, right, with the game being live, he's been able to play more. We know he's a fantastic main tank player. Uh, what will it be like seeing him in the lineup today? Yeah, been an interesting season for Gator, right? For a large amount of it, he was sort of designated as a non-functional tank, and now he's thrust into the limelight at a critical juncture for this team. The, the Atlanta Raider fighting for survival after, frankly, a lackluster showing earlier on in these playoffs. The pieces are there on this team, and there's redundancy, and we've seen much of, you know, the Speedly and uh, Venom look from this team, but as the meta has dictated, it's now about Nero, it's now about Kai, and Gator is again added to that list. Matt, he's known for a couple of tanks, right? But bringing him in in a Winston situation is interesting, given that we knew that sort of Hawk was being groomed to be the tank player that kind of does it all. So I'm really interested to see what they come out with today. Let's not waste too much time. Let's get them out on the stage here. Let's start to put the microscope on the Atlanta Raid. And like you mentioned, right, when the kind of uh, meta ships here going into playoffs, prior to this, the Atlanta Rain are playing, obviously, Hawk all of the time. It's really been like that since stage one. Uh, they were playing a ton of uh, Speedily, Venom, uh, you know, and Vigilante, uh, who they acquire from the Washington Justice. Uh, and with this meta swap, they've decided to kind of like change things up completely, so to speak. And now even further seeing Gator in the game. Uh, and look, we talk about Gator like, you know, it's some kind of like crazy move they're making here. He is a fantastic player, let's be clear. We just have not seen him playing in a very long time. I mean, much of, uh, you know, Gator's best looks were like from Reinhardt, for example. He played a lot, a lot of Arisa, Arisa for this team. Yeah. Back when obviously she deployed a shield and led towards that bunker kind of style. We have seen Gator play Winston this season at times. And it, it, it passed the eye test, I think, by all accounts, even if the players joked about it in that very match that we were sort of playing the Winston. But yeah, we, it, this subverts our expectations. We thought that, uh, you know, Hawk was going to be the guy, the one to play all the tanks for this team. And that's what Brad Rajani at the range sort of said. So now you have to wonder, why this big course correction? Do the Atlanta Raid have something else up their sleeves, right? Nero and Kai, I've seen Nero yeah. comes in here and is playing a lot of the Reaper. This is something he did a bunch for San Francisco as well, uh, back when he was on that roster in what we coined at the time, the Zombie Cop. Very much up his alley, that Reaper pick. Yeah, and you gotta wonder, like, is this more, instead of just the Winston pick, right, for Gator, he has more experience playing these more rush, uh, you know, how Scott kind of refers to it as like Zombie Cop style of play, right? Where, you know, he's a main tank by heart. Traditionally, he can probably pick up that role as the tank in that type of composition pretty quick. And now let's bring out their opponents, running it back once more after a victorious 3-0 against this Atlanta team. It is the Florida Mayhem. And I really like this team. I think they've been ascending really through the play-ins and whatnot. Uh, Hydron secures his spot, you know, in this lineup about, uh, you know, probably a little bit through the Countdown Cup. That's kind of when we start to see, you know, Exe moving out, Hydron being in all the time, Sir Majed being fantastic on the Kariko, and then also, you know, having the kind of veteran experience of Animo in. I think this team has been one where, you know, they've been trending upwards for a while now. Uh, it did not get for them in the it looks good otherwise. Yeah, I know that about a tough matchup against the Soul Dynasty for the Florida Mayhem. But I think something that Gunba sort of said, he said, you know, if we are winning maps against teams that have had that extra time to practice, to prepare, obviously, teams that didn't have to compete in the play-ins, that's pretty embarrassing for them. But I think we've established now that the Florida Mayhem have the pedigree to allow them to overcome that lack of time when it came to scrimming, when it came to preparing. I mean, Christ, they said RuPaul came in and played a map on Kiriko. Uh, I think just randomly. I don't know if they submitted the roster wrong for that or whatever, and he played really well. So it's quite clear to see that we're dealing with five players who are adaptable, who are extremely flexible, and on the fly, they can make the changes that they need to. It's a whole of a great team. The first map choice here is going to be Ilios. 
Now, we kind of talked about this off air, Matthew. Maybe expected to see Lee Zhang based on how well the Mayhem did on that map last time they played this yes. team. But now, we'll have to see what they bring on Ilios. And it does still feel like a map that lends itself pretty well to their stock. You're a little bit more comfortable with, which is, I, I assume, the Ilios here. Uh, going into the first map in the series. Someone with an opportunity to, you know, play a, a little bit more of an aggressive Winston-style play, depending on which kind of maps and points you get here. Uh, I also think it's not the same team. You can't really kind of treat it as the same Atlanta Reign, right, with a new tank in the mix. Absolutely. And that's why our expectations kind of need to be set for a, a different look team. This Atlanta Reign, Atlanta Reign team, rather, already Hydron, uh, Making some intimations in the match chat. Ready. Definitely the expectation of the Florida May can continue to come out strong. Atlanta had better hope that this mix up, this last minute change, is conducive to some more success for them. Because after the season they've had, we expect Atlanta to have gone a little bit better a little bit earlier on in these playoffs. But the Mayhem are not a team to ever doubt. And we expect to see Matthew here pretty standard compositions, right? Shouldn't be any big yeah. mix up so far. Uh, I would be shocked if we see some kind of like large shakeup. Uh, maybe you see the Orisa come out. Uh, we see the Outlaws uh, with Dante use that at times, but kind of fully expect this mirror matchup to continue to play out through the majority of the playoffs. Okay, already Hydron gets identified as playing an off angle, and Gator wants to cut that to the quick as soon as possible. But Hydron's able to find Kai already. After repositioning, he zeroes in on the enemy Sojourn and removes him from the map. And OG fares a little better, lingering a little too long in those crosshairs himself. Because, you know, the Florida Mayhem, Hydron is so good on this Sojourn that, you know, he starts to get rolling. You know, it's kind of like how Kai is on the other side. When Kai gets rolling, he's so difficult to stop. Uh, you don't want to see Hydron start to pop off. Well, so far, so good for the Mayhem and Hydron here. Atlanta already back to start another fight. Majed, a little bit of an extension there. He's able to swiftly walk away to his Winston. And look at this, just Mayhem responding very well to these probes from the Atlanta range. Gator just gets caught amongst all of them. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, really no, nothing that they can do to get back towards the point, right? 30% counting here for the Florida Mayhem. Death Blossom here for the Atlanta Reign, so maybe they can actually make a play for this. Is someone not close to Primal just yet? Yeah, good opening here. We saw Hydron fall fairly early in that fight, and a successful Death Blossom there from Nero. Good way to come alive in this round, as he is accounting for four out of the six final blows from this Atlanta Reign squad. Good way to turn up and start to get some percentage on the board here for Atlanta. Of course, Kitsune rushes are now online for both these teams. Things are about to get a little hairy. Yeah, online for both teams, but you're gonna have someone with this Primal Rage and then also Animo with the Sound Barrier a little bit earlier. So I think you can play a little bit more aggressive here to take the point back if you're Florida. Tech Bites TP from the backside here, trying to get behind this Kitsune Rush is coming out. A lot of roads being paced so far, and Checkmate's gonna be the first to fall. He's discovered in the back line, another Primal Rage from someone really pressuring Kai. He waits and catches the falling Kai like a damsel. And that's it for him. The Atlanta right now struggling as they push into the middle of the map and someone just gets his jump online. Able to clamber back out of the pit and now look to pressure the remainder of the Atlanta rain. They still hold the point right now, but losing Hydron here again, less than ideal. Yeah, you see for that brief moment there from Ultraviolet, he drops that you know, immortality, the protection Suzu there, just keeps Gator himself and OG alive for a split second, but not good enough to win that fight. Someone incredibly able to live throughout that entire period of time, already halfway up to another Primal Rage. I uh, kind of just see how awesome he is on that Winston, but also I think kind of like one of the new breed or potential new breeds of tanks as we see moving forward in Overwatch 2, right? A, a tank that can truly play everything. He's only got one death so far, three final blows to his name. And to compare, I mean, Gator has three deaths. I mean, Gator is getting picked on pretty badly by the Mayhem when he tries to engage. Speaking of which, that's happening right now. Bubble gonna be thrown down here by someone, but Hydron has this safe pocket to play in with a fully charged rail. He's in a pretty decent spot, and Gator realizes that, oh no, the slide gets interrupted by Hydron. <laughs> he can't believe it. Oh, you can see on his face, he was absolutely stunned. Because that's where he ended up. As sub players here from Florida who are gonna be able to contest. You just gotta get this up to like that 90, 95%. Oh, they actually get pushed back off the point. You see Animo and a few what? others still here. 
He's able to lock Nero into the pit somehow. I mean, OG tried to give him the same kind of send off, but he's able to clamber out naturally. Hydron was actually booped into the pit by OG there, that's what happened. Kitsune Rush now comes out straight away from both sides here. The Mayhem trying to use it to engage. Someone for the Primal Raid, looking for Kai at the moment. Sound Barrier now expiring off the Atlanta Rain. Someone wants to try and track his quarry, but there are five people turning towards him. He has to go for the Mega Health Pack and double back now. Checkmate has a Death Blossom, but he's a little exposed in this position. And Nero's gonna go for it. Hydron gets riddled with bullets here. Checkmate wants to reciprocate his battle. Ultraviolet, but that's all he's gonna have. The Atlanta Raider up to 93 and counting, and the Mayhem decimated. Yeah, as you see it, Mayhem, they're gonna go with those, some desperation picks here towards the end. The Doom, the Tracer, but it doesn't matter. Not able to get a touch where the Atlanta Rain take round number one. Nero has an unbelievable round, Matthew. Nine final blows, two deaths out of a total kills of 16 for his team. His Reaper really on another level early. A lot of pressure being put down on the Mayhem, especially someone who could see trying to play aggressively, trying to look for Kai, and is getting thwarted by Nero multiple times. And uh, Atlanta's got to be such a scary team to play against, uh, especially in this type of scenario. We can take a look from Ultra Ally. Oh, yeah, that's oh, buddy. Beautiful. The protection there right on to Nero. He's able to pick up a few kills, then just use the Wraith to just back up away from Checkmate. And really nice sequence there. Someone locks himself inside a lethal oh, snow dome yeah. with Nero to yeah. try and prevent that damage, but it was already too late. Uh, it, and do you get a vibe, Mitch, right? Like, you know, putting Gator in, I thought Gator looked, you know, good there on the, the Winston to kick things off. Uh, it's also like Atlanta is just a scary team in these, you know, lose and go home scenarios, right? It seems like they always, you know, pick up their play in moments like this, where they're not going to be, it's like almost like Florida 3 0 them the other day just gives them like a little bit of false confidence going into this series. It'll be the same thing, where I think it's a much different team they're playing today. They love to be doubted. They love to be underdogs. They thrive on that negative energy, uh, and you can see it because they kind of invite it a lot of the time, Matthew. Kai to the high ground invites company of Winston right now, and someone will break on in there and remove him from the equation. Hydron now can get a bit more aggressive, not worry about being picked off after the nothing across the map. Frustrating, uh, yeah, healing overclock there from OG. He's able to bring him down eventually. Gator looks to be on the way out here. As neither team is capped early. It will be Florida who start with the lead. Yeah, which is pretty similar to what we just saw in that previous round, uh, I know, on Wells. So Atlanta will have to you know, bounce back. You see Gator making an actual uh, you know, really strong attempt constantly to just get in Hydron's face, you know, put that bubble down, block the line of sight, towards the Sojourn off of those positions up on the high ground. Getting close to Kitsune Rush here for Ultraviolet. He's going to be ahead, but they've lost Kai already. Checkmate is able to isolate that key target. And now the rain look a little bit, uh, I guess, embarrassed with four players that have to make their way through the left-hand side to throw Kitsune Rush down. That's going to help Ultraviolet's healing output. And of course, that haste buff. Nero is looking to make good use of it, but it's a disengage by the Mayhem and the Soundberry defensively. The rain uses a little bit later now, when they actually have to fight the Mayhem are behind in their durability count. But they have point control. Looks like the rain are backing away from that Kitsune rush. Yes, uh, Kai's got an overclock though, so maybe right after this primal rage, oh, you'll start buddy. to see the Atlanta rain press forward. Is you see someone on about getting both real oh, low. Oh my goodness! It takes two <laughs> to tango, they say, but uh, I think Nero had the right idea there. Checkmate just throws himself into that one. Both Reapers went into raid four. We knew that was coming. Pretty messy fight so far, but the rain are able to cap it in the background despite having lost Kai again. Yeah, and, and you can kind of see when Florida was, you know, deep and engaged in that fight, right? And someone is using Primal, you know, the sound barrier and the Casino Rush is worn off. Like, they start to have players getting quite weak, and Checkmate ends up using the Death Blast for trying to, like, save the day as they try and exit. But Atlanta just kind of played that 50-50 stalemate for oh. so long and so good. And then they were able to get away, but look at this. Server Jet opens things up with a headshot pick. Yeah, medium range shot there with the Kunai. Great connection, but Checkmate also will fall to longer range damage. And Kai now has that overclock. You're asking for an Atomo. Up in the air he is, and Kai just picks him off. The Atlanta Rain are going to be able to maintain control for now. And that Kai pick is a big part of it. Uh, they don't have to push forward anymore. They can back up play from the point here. As if you're Atlanta, you're going to get, uh, I know, probably about even in terms of percentage off of this. This fight should last for a decent amount on the point. But you have that continued rush here to use. 
Yeah, Ultraviolet, who can let that one go pretty much straight away here. Wants the pressure for the front line, needs to be careful, because if he's not healing, then there's not going to be a ton of it going on. Hydron gets caught out again, though. This is looking good for the Atlanta Reign. Now they move into the lead behind that Kiriko ultimate, and they have to hope the sound barrier from OG is enough to answer March He'll be back with a vengeance. Yeah, this will be the next, uh, you know, really probably the last difficult test for them. So actually, Nidra goes in over the top. They're going to sound barrier, try and catch them off guard a little bit. Someone's seen better days, but he's been topped back up. And Anima's going to have a later sound barrier. If the Mayhem want to fight, now might be the best time. Overhead again goes Gator Hydron, aware of it, so he repositions now towards the point, hoping to try and pressure down, but the yeah, protection Suzu was in play. Checkmate's able to pull Kai out of the mix regardless, and Hydron is everywhere at once. Nero doesn't even realize he's crept up on him. The Overclock's doing some serious work, but the Bubble Dance doesn't end up so well for Hydron. Gator eventually is able to bring him down, and now it's up to Summer with his Primal Rage. You might, you've got the point under your control. Uh, yeah, but Gator's gonna actually primal. Uh, that's the one that I was talking about. As he's knocking players back all over the point here. You know, in favor of the Atlanta Reign, he's gonna have some teammates coming back off the spawn. This long, drawn-out fight is could be difficult for Florida. Bunter didn't have a protection Suzu available. He also couldn't switch step. He's brought down by Gator, but Checkmate and Hydron are back. And it's now 85 and counting. The Atlanta Reign make it close, but we're into last fight territory here. And I kind of like the idea there from Gator. You, both, you know, you get both primals out, and you at that time you had Kai and Nero alive with you on the point. He's got both of them now, and they both have their ults going in this final fight. Checkmate got himself into the back line well and truly early. Looking for an opportunity now for a Death Blossom. Does he go for Nero? No, he just takes it to the face. Nero blossoms first and actually catches Martin somehow. Perhaps he switched them into that fight. Regardless, the Atlanta Reign, they managed to flip the point back here. And maybe, just maybe, Checkmate is punished for holding onto that Reaper ultimate too long. The first map in this series goes to Atlanta. And you can see a, li a little bit cleaner there, I think, with Gator in the game. Gator just making, you know, the consistent plays, you know, jumping right on the Hydron, making his life very difficult all throughout. The primal tech is good. And I think, it, you know, Florida probably came in here, Mitch, like, hey, you know, we get the same opponent as the other day. It's going to go just like it, how it went. And Atlanta making a statement right off the bat that it is not going to be an easy series. Can't ask for much more than that from the Atlanta Reign. Gator comes in on the Winston, looks really quite solid. Eye test and stats included. Nero's Reaper, though, head and shoulders above the rest. So important to have that consistent piece of damage firing on all cylinders, and you better believe Nero is in the thick of the action more often than not. Good start here for the Atlanta Reign. The Mayhem now need to recalibrate themselves for this different lineup their opponents are bringing.
It would appear, ladies and gentlemen, there's much more to the Atlanta rain than meets the eye. A roster mix-up coming into this survival match. And Gator turns up in a big way on that first map, playing the Winston pretty darn impressively. And I guess if you're Atlanta, because uh, we were talking a little bit about this morning and, you know, just kind of when we got the lineups, and it was like, is this the right type of move, right? Because you announced ages ago, now Hawk is going to be your tank for the rest of the season. We're, we're going to roll with him on every tank, right? He, he Hawk plays tremendous throughout the entire season, right? Uh, it's not like we ever saw like real dips in Hawk's play. Uh, and then make the swap at this moment. Uh, I think if, if you're kind of just like you know the viewer, right? You probably just have to you know keep faith in that Atlanta coaching staff and Brad. Like they know what they have in their players. I also think. Uh, the Gator, it's, it's kind of like a no-lose scenario, right? Because you've already lost to this team 3-0. Uh, so, so like, what would happen yet again, right? Like, what's the worst-case scenario? Uh, is, you know, maybe this meta just wasn't for you when you're kind of out. But put in a player who, you know, historically has always played those main tanks and played them in compositions and metas like this and see how it goes. And uh, maybe a little bit of a change-up after, you know, the other day gives some momentum to the team, right? Uh, you know, a little... Uh, Little jump start, so to speak. Absolutely. Something a little fresh here as well, maybe just to allow them to recalibrate a little bit after a very tough start to this playoffs. For to Mayhem, they lose that first map, so they turn around, they select Eichenwalder for our hybrid battlefield. And again, you know, we're talking about tank selection. We may see Hawk later in the series if we head to something like Circuit Royale, for example, where Sigma may be more desirable, just like we saw from San Francisco, for example. But for now, no changes to either of these rosters. Gator, as you saw on the stage there, remains in. You can tell he's serious because the blue cap's off his head and on his table. He's here to gain. <laughs> is, that, is that how you know where he takes his hat off? Yeah, he's worn that uh. darn thing all season. <laughs> uh, okay, sure, whatever you say. Is, uh, how, how scared do you think Florida is right now? Maybe not scared, but like worried, right? Uh, in the sense that you beat this team the other day. 
Uh, now you come in, they got a new player in the mix, and you lose map number one in an eliminator. How, how worried are you if you're Florida? Well, I think you're less worried, maybe more frustrated, because you can't, you probably can't get a real read on this rain squad right now. Especially Hydron is constantly being in check by Gator. You watch him. We see yeah. his POV in that first round. He's forced to slide early and often, sometimes into OG's boop, into their well, sometimes just into enemies in general. He's being forced to put himself in some risky positions to avoid just getting flattened by Winston and shut down by the bubble. Gator's done a great job of just neutralizing him. He's Florida Mayhem's, he's one of their biggest weapons here. But if he can't function, it's hard for them to stay in step with this Rain Squad, especially with Kai smiling from ear to ear on the other side. Yeah, I wouldn't say Gator's doing anything flashy, right? Uh, you know, not, not like kind of uh, coming in and looking like Smurf per se, but like just playing the, the, the Winston role in a way that he's just trying to take or make Hydron's life extremely difficult. And you think if you can neutralize the Sojourn's effect, you have a pretty good chance in this series. Florida having to fold back a little bit here as Gator's been probing. You can see his health bar. He's actually able to get out alive, which is huge. That's great for Ultraviolet. It'll top him up and get him back in the fray and hope to build to that first Kitsune rush when things start to get a little bit hectic. Hydron as well. Okay, he's on a flank here and he's used his mobility and he's in the perfect spot to catch Gator. Checkmate also runs into that. Winston's able to pick him off. Hydron again finds himself yeah, in a sticky situation. Kai roundhouses him. I was wondering if you could fight this, you know, if you're the Atlanta Reign, but now that you've lost your Reaper, I don't, think, I don't think you can as effectively. I think if you would have had Nero stay alive there, you actually could have came back rather quickly and maybe you're actually able to kind of catch them you know, further up at the choke and make a play for it. But like, Sunit Rush already here. I'm surprised someone gives space even without Reaper on the battlefield right now. But maybe it's all part of his plan because he seems to have lured OG into his trap. It's a trade though and Kai's able to get the better of Hydron for the second time in a row. Ultraviolet tries to run away, but that's the lion's share of the healing now taken away from the Atlanta Reign. But someone gets caught inside the PC shop. That's not what we mean when we say check in PC, ladies and gentlemen. Florida able to outlast though, because checkmate and march it stand. Yeah, and even with that continue rush coming right around the corner from Ultraviolet, and Atlanta actually making uh, you know, a pretty good play for the point. No progress gained. Nice. And pretty slow here for the Atlanta Reign at the start. This you know, Florida Mayhem, you know, you'll have your sound barrier here, and you'll have your Death Blossom. That'll be the overclock early there from Kai. Kata makes the first jump, but he's caught out of position as we see someone make the counter engagement. The Mayhem are waiting for Gator to try and go after Hydron, and that's when they strike. Hydro being pressured once more by the aforementioned. This time gives him a parting gift. That's right. Railgun catches him, and Nero finds two. Into the hunting lodge, he tries to go, but Hydron posthumously is able to catch him inside, then disrupt the shot. Now Kai needs to make the flanking play, but his team is gone. He's going to find himself up against the wall. Uh, and Checkmate has gone, you know, he has gone unmarked by the opposing team. As it feels like every kill in the feed for the Florida Mayhem is Checkmate just running around, you know, kill after kill, just finding these targets low. The DPS passive is like massive for Reaper, right? Uh, you know, Reaper really struggles with like that movement speed and you know, being able to reload faster and get a little bit of a movement speed buff. You can see how the Reapers start chaining these kills together. Not good for Atlanta. It's going to be Kai dropping off the rip. Hydron flips the script and actually gets the first pick this time. Florida winning the fights, even losing him first beforehand. The Arnimo getting caught there, not great, but look, the mobility not as important for Florida because they're backed up against the back of the point as it is. Oh, OG getting zoned away by Hydron. That's a fantastic disruptor shot. And look at Gator. He's caught away from the rest of his team. Easy to drag down by the rest of the mayhem. Yeah, and I think right now, you know, you're seeing the Atlanta reign so split from each other, right? Gator on like a little bit of a... You know, a flank and off angle, he gets taken out. It's just like that, 30 seconds on the clock here for the Atlanta Reign. They made no progress here on point A. It's been all dominance from the Florida Mayhem. All the coordination we saw in that first map seems to have evaporated for the Atlanta Reign. They cannot get Gator matching up with the rest of their dive. And there's a Kitsune Rush on board for both sides. Look to the Reapers here to make the big impact in this fight. Frontline standing tall is going to be crucial. Marty trying to play from the back line here. The healing on someone is good and he drops. It removes Gator. Checkmate lunging forward, but Nero catches him there while he's in that Death Blossom. Nero getting close to his ult, but it may not be a factor in this fight. Hydro needs to double back here, going for the overclock. And what a connection. OG falls straight into that railgun. The sound barrier. Definitely helps the Mayhem hold out. It is a shutout of the range here on Archenvolt.
Yeah, it's uh, not able to get in front of Hydra, and you see how much space he has when we go to his first person POV. Uh, and then also Checkmate able to just pop off on the Reaper. Now, there was one uh, there was one moment where we were talking about Gator using the Primal Rage, and he actually had to use the Primal Rage a little bit earlier than I think he would have liked, because what happens is, is he's like around the corner by the pillar, and then Checkmate comes flying around and uses Death Blossom. And Gator's got a, you know, one of two options, right? It's either pop primal, live and get out, or, you know, uh, just kind of stand there and die, right? I mean, he's just going to eventually die to the death loss of the damage. He actually uses the primal and, like, starts to try and almost, like, get him out of the way, but doesn't have the primal that did knock around Hydron in the back line, and that's when Hydron is able to pick up, like, two kills during that fight and win it for Florida. So uh, just those little things like that, you know, primal is such a, a, a big ability uh, from the Winstons, right? The ultimate to be able to just displace the enemy, Sojourn, or force cooldowns out, you know, whether it be Sojourn or Kuriko. Uh, not to have it at that moment in really one of your only two, you know, options to have her at that ultimate during an attack there is really difficult for Atlanta. It's bad beats for Kai as well, Matt. The first two fights for the rain. He's the one that serves him up that elimination on Hydron. He finds the first pick in both those engagements. And still, the rain can't leverage that player advantage into any capture progress whatsoever. No ticks, no nothing. Now the Florida Mayhem's win condition is so clear. Just one tick. They'll be taking this map away very quickly. The tables seem to have turned, and Hydron is on the hunt. He wants Kai. He wants him bad. Look how deep he is into the belly of the beast. He goes, and he gets away with it. Protection Suzu thrown up there. Hydron now face to face with Gator, who picks off Margin. Maybe a little over eager <laughs> for the Mayhem in that fight. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so, right? Uh, you know, coming flying around the corner. Uh, he, he does get Kai weak, but he slides in. They use a protection Suzu. Like, uh, you have to use so many different big abilities there to be able to land that kill, and they don't get it. And then they're just kind of stuck uh, with absolutely nothing. So uh, Florida getting really aggressive early on. Hydron took a huge shot there from Kai. Uh, has to get healed up basically from death, but... I uh, you know, first fight goes fast for the Atlanta Reign. See someone, he jumps there, but he's not engaging, right? He takes some space, but Hydron is still taken down. The aforementioned trying to take an off angle to the left of Kai right now. He just gets picked off. And once you let Kai get started, you're in a lot of danger. The Mayhem now scrambling to get back in the spawn. Yeah, it is, I, I think Florida needs to be careful, right? You're taking these fights fast, maybe trying to build up some ultimates. You're not accomplishing that. Uh, you haven't really gotten any target in in a zone where you would say they're like you know, extremely weak or near death right where you would be a little bit alarmed if you're the Atlanta Reign uh, outside of that first fight with uh, you know Kai. But other than that, it's been just dominance by Atlanta. You can see it in terms of the ultimate charge game. Here Kai goes. Still very safe, very conservative. He's not playing this left angle that he's standing in right now at the start of the fight, right? He's only transitioning there once the Mayhem are fully committed. He's sitting right at the back of his entire formation. Not wanting to get picked off for free. Disrupt the shot thrown down on the Mayhem. Looks like they're pretty clear about wanting to stay around here. Majed doesn't have the Katsune Rush yet. Ultraviolet is going to use it straight away. Sound barrier from Anima. Was it going to be enough? Primal Rage inside a computer shop here. Hydron eventually brought down and Checkmate in a compromising spot to say the very least here. Well, under two minutes left and Checkmate tries to go for the Death Blossom here. He's able to find two kills, make it three. Somehow he's able to catch Gator. Unreal! Now he's in a position to do some real damage. Kai goes down, Ultraviolet follows. The Atlanta Reign tip the king because they've seen Checkmate come in hot and heavy. And I feel like Checkmate is really the big difference between these two teams on this map because Atlanta's D was looking pretty good there for a bit, Mitch. And then once the Reaper for the Florida Mayhem you know, got in position, right? He, we see him being primal raged, like basically to death in a corner, uses Wraith Form to get out. And then once he gets in towards that back line, I know he is just dominance there from Checkmate. In a matchup of superstar Sojourns, incredible hit scan players, so far, it's been all about the Reaper guy. Both Nero and Checkmate in back-to-back -back maps having outsized impacts for their teams, and that's not even counting playing inside those Kiriko ultimates. What a crazy run there for Checkmate at the end of the round when his team was well behind. It looked like the harebrained attempt to go for the Death Blossom, but it paid off, and that's why he's there, and that's why I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, and you need to stay there. We're going to be back with map number three after this. Two of the 
summer showed on qualifiers. Everybody's been beating everybody. The upsets have been in full swing. You have to kind of bait to walk forward though, because even if you want to blade here, first of all, he's outpaced the supports, which is very nice, not just Becky here. Importantly, you have to get past the rally and the sound barrier, but you need to make sure the Valley are committed in a way that you can chase them down. Okay, this time he does not wait to pull the blade. He pulls it immediately, and it's four swift kills in the blink of an eye. Zest to shutting him down. That's half the time bank now drained away as he nearly oh, comes up forward. with the team kill. And oh, they're looking for some oh, more. Becky got You're going to be able he to take that forward. one. Yep. He yoinks him right sick. back out into the open. Monk's gone. Zest being the one to take them out. There's Fury's Doomfist coming into the fight. Lee Gargamel hiding it back with the overclock. I don't think they're gonna be able to do anything here. Wait, Gar where's Gaga? Have to expend that. Wait, Jimmu just took out Aim God. Jimmu again finds Fury. Jimmu's keeping the team alive. Zest takes out Leave. Twenty seconds remaining. This is gonna be one hell of an assault coming in from the Hunters. They got Gaga's rampage. If Gaga goes down, this is gonna be the. Dude, Jimmu. Jimmu. Jimmu is back in this fight again. They cleaned it up. They didn't even have to use that pivotal ultimate, and they're back on their points. I mean, goodness, Jimmu really clutched that fight. Figured out how to break the, the meta even further. It turns out all you need is a profit on Brigida. Blade now going to be pulled out. Nisha taken down by Did Benham. The bomb will even get involved. The, the coach gun to take out Jinmu, and it is such a swift I, cleanup. I didn't, did you see a sound barrier? Because I didn't. I think that was an Ajax from Nisha, sadly. The I Nisha think he got Ajax. Oh, here Contested. it is. Oh, what a boom! And what the hell was that? Benham pooping him further up into the so air and then good. dragging down. Just give him the trophy. Just, just, just. They win. They win the season. It's over. We don't need to play out the rest of it. I don't care anymore. Vin Dame, Vin Dame is the Rookie of the Year. Rally out from Irony. The anti from the Rampage only catching two. Bernard, a little bit of pressure, but now can be healed. An Architect finds Fitz. Blade pulled out immediately. Gets in, finds Prophet, finds Smurf, and it seems like we are not done yet. Architect Huge. picking up four eliminations with the Blade itself. Otherwise, I believe, just completely aces the squad. And that is going to be okay, the cap so now on to point B. When the Sigma comps were a thing, you would either take two fights, like fight on the first corner and then fight on the last, but a lot of teams just held on this last corner before this point. Oh, Victoria, 13 uh, HP. Someone pack him, please. Oh, no, that's so unlucky. I feel like this, uh, Dude, this map. Look at him go. Game, I mean, like, uh, look at this guy go. Like, that. five kills, just like that in a blink of an eye, quick team kill. This guy's just, uh, he's a freak on the sticks, man. Take a look at uh, Proper from his POV. One, dash through two. Yeah, I mean, this is just... <laughs> that is just filthy stuff. It's coming out, Primal, and a nano tactical visor. It's matched by Merit and shut down just as quickly. Hydron with the 4K! Call that one a 5K, Lemon. The American Tornado spins up and gets those Houston Outlaws out of here. You can go all in, but I hope you got insurance against the weather, baby. Hit with a bionic grenade and the follow up. Oh, it's there. He'll rue the day. He let RuPaul into your back line. Snuck in the corner there. No way. Animo booped the duplicated Winston. The sleep into the pond. The broom comes out and the mayhem sweep them away. Unbelievable. Well, everybody, looks like we have a bit of a game on our hands now. Perhaps we were singing the praises of this slightly retooled Atlanta Rain squad a little too early because an Ike involved, there was a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a strong showing from the Florida Mayhem on their map pick. I also think a little bit of a wake-up call, right? 
uh, losing map number one. Like, hey, this is not the same Atlanta rain we played the other day. This is a win or go home scenario. We need to turn up. And Checkmate definitely did in map number two. This was unreal. 10 final blows for three deaths. You know, a good portion of those coming in that very last fight. Checkmate not really putting himself in the spotlight early on in the round, but absolutely helping punish Gator, who was trying to engage, trying to continue this trend of pressuring Hydron, but it's a different map. Hydron has much safer pockets to retreat to. On defense, I can volley. And sometimes Gator would find he's just jumped and all of a sudden someone's gone over his head with the rest of the mayhem and are engaging on the rain. Florida on the same page when it came to the counter dives in a big way. And that's so crucial. When you're playing Winston comps on defense, you have to be on the same wavelength. And the Florida mayhem, they look like a well-oiled machine there. This is what, I mean, this is really the fruits of this team's labor all through the season. A team that was doubted by so many. They've come together at such a crucial time. They've evened up the series now as Route 66 will be the Phoenix pick. I mean, look at a, look at the team like the Florida Mayhem and London Spitfire, right? Like nobody was picking these teams at the beginning of the season to go deep, uh, you know, into our playoffs. I mean, hell, even qualify for the playoffs, right? Uh, just tremendous showings from you know those two teams. Uh, we got one of them in the series here with, you know, Florida Mayhem starting to get things going in the right direction. Route 66, an interesting map choice here from the Atlanta Rain. Uh, a little bit more space, a little bit more open. Maybe they feel like this allows Kai to get things going a bit more. Atlanta definitely looking to leverage that part of their arsenal as it was pretty critical on Eichenwald, or at least in terms of starting off the fights. It's a matchup we get really excited about, seeing Kai pitted against Hydron, two players that have spent Many years honing their craft as long-range kit scan players, Sojourn fits their styles so well, and we've seen them quite often go to battle with each other at the start of these fights. I mean, let's think back to like one of those uh, that first fight in Eichenwalder with the Florida Mayhem just sent Hydra, yeah. and he dove into the Atlanta Rain, backed up, of course, by Majid on that Kiriko. It didn't work out, but you can kind of see the game plan. Take Kai down at any cost. And, and, and what's your opinion here on this? Because I, th I think this is a map that it's probably a lot harder to play the Reaper on. Uh, I mean, you're still going to play it, right? But uh, just harder than a map like Eichenwald, right? Like Eichenwald, a lot of different, you know, area of the map that you can kind of get behind cover, you know, use different routes, the TP. Route 66 is, you know, obviously not Junker Town in terms of wide open, but uh, it is pretty open. The areas where the fights take place are more lengthy. Uh, you know, choke points, where I think it could be a little bit harder to get value out of Reaper in the same way. Yeah, I mean, the flanking routes aren't exactly as plentiful on a map that's more sort of, uh, you know, singular level. Of course, Big Earls is a factor here, but trying to obscure your position as Reaper can be difficult. Sometimes that's why teams don't play forward and actually hold Big Earls to give a decent flank angle to their Reaper, who can head up to the cave on the right-hand side, or flank behind that side. Hydron hears this. He hears Nero teleport into what we believe is the lower level of Big Earls. We see him there in the wireframe. So Hydron very aware of when the Reaper may come knocking. Yeah, a Reaper not the, the, uh, the most silent, sneakiest flank hero uh, with his teleport, just screams like... What gives like, that away? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, just gets right, uh, right on the other side of Big Earls, but uh, no, Atlanta's gotten a decent amount of payload progress here. Uh, you know, before this fight is kicked off, like Florida's had to back up numerous times where you know you lose this, it's going to be a one fight point eight take, which is great for the Atlanta rain. So I'm looking for the counter dive here from Florida. Right, they're giving a bit of ground. They're allowing the rain to potentially over bit of ground. themselves. I mean, there it is. They, they almost have the payload home. But there it is. They eventually able to carve Gator away from the rest of the Atlanta rain. So their patience really pays off them. I am more of a fan of seeing that earlier fight. I mean, here's going to be the continue rush here from the Florida Mayhem. So you have to actually have to use this ultimate, uh, you know, just to be able to live and maybe solidify the fight in your favor. They're going to have to back up now. I mean, uh, yeah, how, how do you like that passive play now that you've burned that ultimate, right? They're coming back with you know, both support ultimates and the payload oh. very close to completion. Oh, that would have been a big shot. This is a problem, big problem. Python has to now face Nero, one versus one for a time. Yeah, the entirety of the Mayhem, or at least half of them, have to double back. And that allows Kai to find checkmate amongst the thinning mass of Mayhem players. Now they're being stretched across the map here. Atlanta can now start to poke at some of these weaker extremities and start to punish this. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, Kai. Looking like a very nasty mural on the wall of Big Earls there. 
Oh, and this is massive from the Florida to him. Now you're able to stay alive on the payload while someone is juggling Kai inside of Big Girls, gets him out of the fight. I believe you had Onimo and Checkmate there able to do so, stay alive for a period. Now if you're able to hold this here, it's because you were able to just stall that out for a while. All right, OG down. And crucially, Gator is still in play here. It can be healed up by Ultraviolet. Death Blossom, though. Checkmate is the cactus upon which the rain fall. Perfect. He catches him with open arms and the Hellfire shotguns go to work. Great turnaround there, considering that, you know, Majid not really in the picture through much of that fight. Someone gets picked off because there's not enough healing and still the mayhem. Hang on. It, it's so difficult. I mean, you see... Uh, no, it's really just Kai in someone inside of Big Girls. There's a few players alive for the Atlanta Reign. Still in the cart trying to get it over the line. It's so close. But, you know, Reaper in terms of, like, obviously he gets a lifesteal from doing damage. Uh, Wraith form to be able to live for a little bit, uh, you know, longer. Be invulnerable. And then Animo on the Lucio, so slippery to hit. They're not able to get those players off the point. It's Foxy is on. The Mayhem are on the rush here. Paving the pink road as they charge ahead. And again, it's Checkmate leading the charge. Where's Gator gonna go? <laughs> I mean, down to the end of the chasm by the looks of things. An hour, 23 seconds left. The Atlanta Reign have to come up with something real quick. These two support alts are gonna be absolutely essential. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have Sound Barrier for Florida Mayhem and Animo. I wonder if you decide to like get aggressive behind this or you try and like, you know, force this fight Atlanta Reign trying to go in. They're gonna Sound Barrier first. Yeah, both teams actually end up getting the beats off there. OG really wants to get this fight started up. Katsuna Rush thrown down and a disengage for the Mayhem. Look at them spread out here. Trying to wait it out. This might expose them though to getting picked off, but Hydra uses the space to find a kill on OG. Not too shabby, but Ultraviolet turns up and those Kunai are going to work, shredding through the Florida Mayhem. And it looks like those double support ultimates are the difference maker in the end. Yeah, have that extra support, support ultimate was key. Uh, Florida Mayhem, I actually really like how they play that though. They end up disengaging like you mentioned, and they actually oh, yeah. jump right in. And I think what they're trying to play for, I mean, you lose, uh, I believe you lose Animo really early at the hands of Ultraviolet. Uh, what they're trying to play for is someone getting that primal rage. Uh, as we see this from UV's POV is, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's able to get checkmate and Animo. Uh, but they're trying to that play for there. Is like if those two players can live, uh, now those are the two players key installing the previous one out. If those two players can live, someone gets primal and they keep that going. That's what they're really trying to do with that disengage. Oh, that was dangerous. Lining up on the stairs like that. It's an easy railgun shot for Kai to send a killer. Checkmate's gone down and primal range here from someone. To what end? I've got to ask. He goes deep. Should be able to climb back out and join the rest of his team. But Gator is sowing disarray in the back line himself. Yeah, someone has to fail. I mean, he is so low, he actually goes back and gets the Mega Health Pack. I think like, he's almost like behind Big Earl. So, it's overclocked oh! both teams. Oh, that is clean. Fantastic. Hydron was probing for something just like that, but Nero prefers the more brute force approach. No finesse required as he spins to win. Checkmate, though, is going to get away with this. I can't believe it. Makes out like an absolute bandit. Slams down that Reaper Ultimate, and the Rain do not have the ability to get away. Uh, uh, Checkmate is so happy he is not playing tank anymore for the Florida Mayhem. <laughs> so he is able to just do stuff like that. Looks like Nero, you know, he gets that one kill. Looks like he's going to, you know, make it out with his life. He's got Wraith for He's just staring down Checkmate with the Death Blossom there. It's uh, nothing he can do. Not able to survive long enough past that. But Lana trying to do like a, a little bit of a, you know, they're trying to like be a little bit sneakier, right? They get in towards the saloon. It gives them options to go out the backside, come back out the front. Make it Florida guess a little bit. Doesn't take much to slow the rain down though. Disrupt the shot, throw the doorway. The mayhem are savvy to what the rain are trying to pull off here. Suzu already used here by ultraviolet, so the rain have to come up with something and do it soon. Might have been trying to like bait, you know, uh, whether like if someone would have jumped down, they could have Kitsune Rush and just charged it down really quick. I think they were trying to bait them in there. How do they line up a good Kitsune Rush now? Look at the Mayhem, they're playing the high ground here. They're playing readings quite sparsely and safe. They're going to go for it anyway, though. Sound barrier here for the Florida Mayhem, but Hydron is king of the hill for the time being. And he looks down upon his subjects with a glint in his eye. Ultraviolet will join Gator up on the high ground. Suzu deployed. Now the sound barrier comes out for the Atlanta Rain. That's a huge advantage for them in this fight, but they can't get to someone. Hydra's able to pick off Gator, because Gator eventually has to leave him alone on the high ground. This guy, a consistent thorn in the side for the Atlanta Rain, a superheated one. Of course, as those whale guns ring out, and the Florida Mayhem stop the rain in their tracks.
Is it just me or it's a really bizarre Score. offense there Zero. from the Atlanta Reign? And, and I say that because they actually almost like get that second checkpoint. It just felt like they didn't really win any fights, right? I mean, Florida gave up so much payload progress for absolutely nothing uh, at the start and then just kind of held it right before for the entire time, pretty much. Uh, it's one fight that goes Atlanta's favor there. Uh, and then once the gate opens, it's basically one fight that goes Atlanta way there. And then it's just all Florida mayhem. Just, uh, you know, when you see a uh, an offense that's so one-sided in terms of fights, typically you don't see the payload obviously go that far. Like you would have seen it, you know, just in before that A checkpoint. Uh, but Atlanta is able to get a lot of free payload progress and then take advantage of that. Well, you kind of hinted at this map selection maybe being something to try and cater to Kai. But he's not able to have impact at all. This is Checkmate turning this fight around, by the way. Look at how low his health is. Look at how low it is. Unreal. Talk about, yeah, flipping the script on the Atlanta Reign there. They thought they had Checkmate six feet under at that point. He, he was awesome on Aiken Vault here again on Route 66. Oh, Observers, do you have to... Ah, <sighs> uh, they, they, they look like teeth. Yeah, you can't unsee it. You cannot unsee it now. I mean, I've seen it and I can unsee it. <laughs> I was just reminded though. Again, Kai, one final blow, five deaths on that attacking side. He isn't able to find the angles to punish. Hydron having a lot more success on the Sojourn, having a lot more space to work in. To be fair, it was really one-sided. Uh, the, the Florida ends up giving up, basic, uh, like they almost give up all of point day right off the rip, right? Yes. The cart makes it like all the way around Big Earls. Uh, it, it's not like there was like some, you know, fight win early on, like in a scenario like Gaida. this from Atlanta, and then movement. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be Florida. They're going to get the payload moving right away, uh, it seems. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't expect anybody on Atlanta to have like amazing stats, because really it was like just two fights that went in their favor. Uh, Florida really otherwise it would complete control of the game here on Route 66. Really odd engagement there from Atlanta. Uh, I think after they lose the first play, I think it was Kai that fell. Uh, you see Gator is pretty much resigned to the fact the fight's over. He's like AD strafing, trying to right-click a soldier <laughs> from like medium range. You're like, oh God, if he gets caught here. He takes, he takes so much damage. Uh, I think like he doesn't want to jump right in towards Hydron, uh, and, but he ends up just getting right in like checkmate space. So he takes a ton of damage and has to back out. And then Nero is like kind of left in no man's land. He dies. That is uh, things not looking good for the rain. Animo is bigger brain. He actually positioned himself so we can redirect Gator on that dive there. Gator cannot touch Hydron. Hydron again, his teammates allowing him to keep Gator at arm's length, where Sojourn really thrives. You watch Gator. You watch how much he's struggling to, to get on his targets. And it's not because of a mechanical deficiency or anything like that. Is it the mayhem know his game? They know exactly how to protect Hydron for this constant Winston pressure. Uh, Kai gets a huge pick there. Uh, you know, Sermon Jed had the continue rush, so you're not going to have that here for a fight at the choke. And Florida looks like they want to press the issue anyway. Checkmate had his death blossom, does enough to use it there. The Reina forced apart uh, with the key ultimate here. I was going to say, is that, is that worth anything for Florida, right? You know, that they end up using nothing and just pushing in, and you're just the threat of them continuing to fight that. It was really just, uh, when we're watching from Kai's POV, just someone in checkmate who actually like kind of like push forward and look like they're going to get aggressive and that gets the casino rush out right away. Uh, where now I feel like Florida has a big advantage. Uh, and they really need what, two fights and that's it. Gator quickly takes to the skies as the mayhem again, mass their troops. Hydra there actually getting a bit of a state of execution there as it seems that Nero backed away. Kai goes down before the sound barrier can even be a factor here and that's a swift step away. By Ultraviolet, leave someone free now to find anybody and start to give them a bit of a tickle. This is very good for the Florida Mayhem here. They do use both of those support ultimates, but it's house money for them after it, after the Atlanta Reign had made use of their support ultimates uh, just prior. Uh, they have a ton of time to, a ton of time here for, for the Florida Mayhem to be able to take this point. That, that'll be a disruptor shot right in the choke and an overclock from Hydron on the high ground. Gator, Primal Rage, doesn't really offer him uh, very much solace at the moment as much of that health already stripped away and someone's able to connect with Kai. Looked like that was at range after Hydron had done much of the groundwork there. And Gator, unfortunately, is going to be lifeless as he touches down. But Nero now trying to make the game, but only the one kill from him with that Death Blossom and eventually he'll be brought to heal as well. The Florida Mayhem light years ahead of the Atlanta Reign and they'll snap this one up comfortably. Florida go up 2-1. to one. 
yet, although that the Atlanta Rain almost get that second checkpoint, uh, now they make good progress, it still feel like that entire map was all Florida mayhem. Uh, you see, you know, some nice shots from Hydra on that range, and then the follow-up from someone with the, the Winston right clicks, you know, being able to do some long range damage, and then Checkmate getting in the mix. Three players playing lights out for Florida. 12 and 4 for Checkmate, 10 and 3 for Hydron. Again, it's the elite DPS line on the Florida Mayhem that pumps out some serious numbers. But you got to hand it to this squad, they are on the same page. Getting away with a Winston composition on defense is hard for even the best teams, but the Mayhem have it on lock. And they're threatening now to send Atlanta Rain home.
showing us a multitude of different looks and someone is helming all of them. This guy can do anything. Uh, what? Someone already... Uh, what? Sorry? Excuse me? That's not allowed? Uh, is he the luge? What is this? Cool Runnings? Sorry? Someone just slurped up proper on the way through. There's like someone just bolted a bloody hyper-powered Dyson to the front of him as he charges through the middle of the map. I mean, someone has to yeet the spaghetti. Someone was just able to follow him up, clean him up indeed. Someone's going to flat Yurio here and Dallas Fuel get absolutely good stop in this first one. Someone trying to clear a few mines. He's very, very low, but he catches Violet still somehow. When it comes to rookies, I think someone is someone that we're really going to have to start heavily considering as one of the best. Hopes were high for the Atlanta Reign at the start of this season. This infusion of talent really getting people excited. But on the other side, the Florida Mayhem, definitely underrated by everybody. And of course now, the error of our ways has been exposed. Look at this. Someone pretty insane play on Route 66, backing up his DPS actually in a huge way. Opening up so many opportunities for Checkmate, for Hydra to get in there. This team is absolutely stacked and I can't believe it's taken us so long to realize. It's crazy, right? Uh, he's been such a talented player for the entire year. Uh, it's like when you do the roll stars, right? You're like, you wish you had like just more roll stars to give out. Uh, but I, I think someone is. I don't. McGravy's already um, frothing at the mouth on Twitter, Matthew. Don't give him uh, any more ammo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, well, uh, nah, it's more fun to give a great more ammo, let him go crazy on Twitter. Uh, uh, if someone's a player who he's going to be in that conversation for, you know, his entire run as a player, uh, he's just you know, being able to uh, pick up all of the different tanks in the new 5v5 the way that you know, Overwatch is played and be at that level consistently. I mean, how many teams have we seen that it's really kind of hurt their season not being able to do that, right? Florida, uh, they have no worry with him in that slot. That's something that the Atlanta Reign were touting, uh, that Hawk was going to be able to bring to this team. And yet, for this entire series, including this next map, Hawk has been conspicuously absent. Somebody who's been thrust into the MVP conversation, the Role Star conversation, you name it, over the course of the season, is not present on this team right now. And the Atlanta Reign are hoping that Gator is their ticket forward. But they've got to win out from here. Esperanza is going to be our next map in this series. And this is the last chance for the Atlanta Reign to show us the fruits of a long season of hard work. Oh, it, it's, you know, how we just talked about how, uh, you know, someone is able to fill all those slots, right, where it's derailed a lot of teams. Is that going to be kind of the story of the Atlanta Reign, right? Uh, you know, they, they kind of make this play where uh, Hawk is going to be their tank for the entire year. Uh, and, and maybe just at this time with this particular meta, it's just not working out. And to put Gator in last minute's kind of tough. Uh, now, I actually agree with the decision the Atlanta Reign uh, made earlier on. Sure. I actually think that was the right decision to make. Uh, it, it, it's just maybe at a time like this, uh, you know, is, is there a way you could have got Gator some more run or more scrim time or, you know, a little bit more experience with the team throughout the year? Just in case, right? Uh, you never know, but uh, still a really rough scenario for the Atlanta Reign to be in this type of position. Uh, like how we mentioned, you know, the Countdown Cup, we saw a lot of Speedily, a lot of uh, Vigilante, uh, Hawk, Venom. Uh, the meta doesn't really dictate towards that type of lineup. They have to change things up completely coming in here and go up against a Florida Mayhem team who already has their number in this tournament. The Mayhem said that their purpose in coming to Anaheim was to chill and have a good time and eat some Korean barbecue. But now it looks like flaming chicken might be on the menu after all. This team had three days to prepare and only a handful of teams as willing scrim partners. And they've turned up now to threaten Atlanta's run in this playoff bracket. Already our teams are clashing now, of course, around the bot. And Hydron preemptively just making a move there to make it harder for Gator to draw a bead on him. He will be scrutinized heavily. And here he goes again. I mean, you see how healthy someone is. Someone just playing inside of that doorway there and just inviting Gator and the rest of the Atlanta Reign around the corner. Right, look, it's so low, but nice movement, able to get out. Kai looking dangerous in the back line, but Artemo's able to bring him down, force-feeding him those Cheerios, and the Florida Mayhem come out on top in this fight. 
They'll clean up and they'll get on the board early. It's a long map, Matthew. It's a slog, but it's a great way to start here. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it's getting control of that little doorway early, right? Someone is able to put himself in there so he doesn't have to play around that corner. You can put down a bubble and you can use it to kind of strafe around if you're high drawn. Uh, and Gator has no choice but to go in, try and make a play. He goes in, takes a big headshot. And at that time, it, it's someone's opportunity to go. He knows he's got a massive HP advantage. Kai's down. Hydron's having to find him with the rail gun there. Checkmate, though, crucially absent. And Hydron doesn't get this sound barrier. Here's the engage, though. The rain trying to push him out. Kitsune Rush also deployed by Ultraviolet, who really values that extra healing that he can give over. Someone's forced to go for the Primal Rage here. Majek does have his Kiniko ultimate online as well, and he lets it go. Someone needs to be tended to right now, though. Trying to stumble away from the Atlanta Rain. Barely clinging on. That healing coming in thick and fast from Majek, though, keeping the Winston in the fight. Gator's Primal, though, is on the horizon. Yeah, the Kitsune Rush is awesome for DPS, but you also see just how much healing he pumped out. I mean, someone was really weak throughout a lot of that, and a nice headshot there from Kai is that should be able to get the bot going. This is what Atlanta Raid want. They don't give up too much ground to the Mayhem early here. Nero, in he goes. Trying to spin the checkmate, cuts him down. The Venn diagram of murder disperses. And the Florida Mayhem are back in control. If, if you're Atlanta, you got to be able to capitalize that, right? It's Even in terms of players, Kai gets that headshot. You got to be able to you know, secure those fights. It's kind of how we see a lot of teams end up winning, uh, you know, engagements, right? With the Sojourn opening things up with an early pickoff. Uh, those are the fights you absolutely have to win. 45 meters now, that checkpoint looms large in front of the Mayhem. Just need to punctuate the sentence, and there it is, Hydron! That is beautiful. Full stop if I've ever seen one. Kai silenced instantly. And the Florida Mayhem can double back. The bot does get away from them from a moment here. Cheekily, the impish rain have three players to try and get it away from that checkpoint, but it will swiftly move back into position. Enemy down. Every time it feels like the Atlanta Rain getting a little bit of an opening. Uh, it's just the Florida Mayhem, they bounce right back. I mean, look how far they've actually pushed up through this choke and just letting the bot eh, escorted by one person get the checkpoint on the other side. They are gonna get a large lead here, Mitch, which, you know, we're not even halfway through the game, but it looks very difficult to be able to bounce back from. Make no mistake, this is a significant lead to have so early in the game, and the Mayhem look to extend it now. Kitsune has deployed, but Ultraviolet finds Sir Majin. Brilliant headshot there with that kunai. Checkmate is forced to back up a little bit there. Wraith Walk defensively used, but someone is still showing discord in the ranks. And it looks like Kai might have an audience with the King, but someone gets taken down. Nero is able to chase him, clip him with the Hellfire shotguns as he hastily tries to beat a retreat. The Mayhem may have overextended themselves here, but Checkmate again comes out of nowhere. Oh, hits him with the RKO. And somehow Nero has to try and find a way to survive. Absolutely dominated. Uh, it is always oh, Checkmate and Animo, like, alive. It was like Route 66. They didn't end up winning that one fight uh, that they were alive forever, but, uh, <laughs> man, this time it feels like Atlanta. They clear house outside of Checkmate and Animo, and Animo just bouncing around on the bot as the Lucio and, you know, escorting Checkmate around, letting them just kill everybody. The Atlanta Rain is short on options, Matt. They have to throw themselves in and hope Nero can find some value with a Death Blossom of his own. How telegraphed will this be is the question. Nero walking up, he sees someone already try and put himself in between the two halves of the rain, and that's the death blossom they were looking for. Hydron gets his slide forced early there. Hey, bro, I, I ain't seen a fight as done until I see Checkmate's body on the ground. All right, yep, there we go. Atlanta rain, they win that fight. Wait, check, uh, check his pulse, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but now what? You're going to get the bot to just back around, you know, almost like the, the middle of the, the field, kind of back to neutral, and then you're gonna have another fight. I mean, you're you're like three, four fights in a row away here for the Atlanta Reign. Uh, Gator. Taking a lead or getting close to one. Gator's primal rage forced Trouble. for no, oh, that is, that's devastating. You lose your Winston for hardly any reason. It looks like Gator's trying to go in, but the rest of his team has a completely different plan. He's isolated, brought down, ultraviolet, masterfully able to pick Hydron off here at what must be at least medium range to at least keep the rain in this fight. Throws it to their rush down and someone's gonna get picked off here. Who will the Atlanta rain? Lucky they've got the talent to make up for the blemish at the start of the fight. 
But how? But but with what we've seen from them, right? They've actually gotten the first pick in some of these fights and lose them. That time they actually win with the fight. Hang on, it's harder. Hold the phone. Checkmate. Got a 911, but it is for him this time. Apparently, only OG falling. Atlanta Rain have a chance to get that first checkpoint here. Finally, getting in the game. Uh, and, and this is massive, right? Being able to get that checkpoint. You know, maybe it starts to get Florida a little bit, uh, you know, anxious. They end up using the Death Blossom there. They get nothing for it. You, know, you got double support all coming in here for the Florida Mayhem. So this will probably be the most difficult scenario for the Atlanta Reign uh, you know, for the moment, right? You know, 3.30 on the clock, you're going to see those come up again. But if you can win this fight somehow, it would be huge for Atlanta. Oh, the Kitsune Rush gives them all they need and more. Look at those Atlanta Reign support ultimates. Nothing to work with. Not even two sticks to rub together. It's the Mayhem that bring the Fire and Fury. And they keep a Sound Barrier into the next fight, which may be the antidote to a Katsune Rush from the Rain. They need to watch out for Nero, though. That Death Blossom, something to be wary of. Yeah, you do make good progress, though, for the Atlanta Rain. Uh, and you get both support all... Uh, well, you get one support all down, so Alamo still with that Sound Barrier. Uh, it's just this bot's gonna keep ending up back in your territory on your side of the map. Someone, oh! <laughs> with the map. Sorry, he just turns Kai into a bouncy castle. Great there by Manjin as well, joining his Winston, getting that final blow. Isolating Kai at the start of the fight, there's a big deal. He's gonna be a 2k death blossom for Nero. Can it stem the blow? Looking unlikely now, as Nero has to trudge away, and there is no safe haven for this bringer of death. And now you get into a scenario, man, where if you're Florida, you can actually complete the map. Primal, Sound Barrier, Overclock, you probably, this fight goes long enough where you get a Death Blossom. Uh, you know, th there's a real opportunity with where you are in terms of meters. You could finish the map, but look at this. Florida actually just moves the bot as far as possible and then just backs off. They, they, they're totally down to let Atlanta be the more aggressive. They'll be the one who has to be, you know, proactive in these fights. Kai, awkward angle here, getting pressured. Can he get enough damage down on someone? I'd like to now the sound barrier in play. This is getting a little bit messy. A bit of a murder hall erected by the Florida Mayhem. And Nero is down at this primal raid. Kai, we're about to get sent to the circus. Circ to see you later, mate. <laughs> you, you, you've had that. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. Circ to see you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have to run out of budget for your ghostwriter here later in the season. Yeah. I'm bereft, <laughs> man. I'm bereft. <laughs> I can make a Patreon for my ghostwriter. So oh, heavens. I oh, my oh, boy. Oh, oh, that is sick. That's quite a greeting. Is that common important? You're not sure. Checkmate now. He's going to just fling himself into this mess and doesn't even have to use a sound barrier. Gator, caught on the wrong side of this one. Getting plugged with those shotguns. Kai's on the Widow. Sometimes exciting. This time, maybe smacks a headshot after headshot. Or, no. <laughs> no that's, uh, that's the wrong clip. Yeah, you hide that Ghost Rider? No, okay, bro. Yeah. I, 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 I do actually think, though, like, oddly, like, the Widow's the right call here. Like, with this, like, they, it's just a straight shot down the middle. It's, oh, I oh, forget about it. Cuts right up from that top. Hit the shot. That's a sick shot. That is a difficult shot to hit. Checkmate looks like he wants to get this done now. It's that is brutal. Three kills with the Death Blossom and the bot is about to get home. The Florida Mayhem will persist to bring their brand of chaos to the lower brackets. Big win here for the Florida Mayhem. The Atlanta Rain though, they made it tough, right? Playing a different roster here today. Uh, than what we've seen from them throughout a lot of the regular season. Uh, but still, a really good showing, a better showing than the other day. Absolutely. Tough match up against the Seoul Dynasty. Their opponents were definitely prepared for the Florida Mayhem, but it's got to feel vindicating and definitely a proof of concept for this team. I've said it a few times, I'll say it again. A very limited amount of time for the Mayhem to prepare themselves for this patch than their opponents. So they really have to work from that disadvantage. And they didn't expect all that much from themselves coming into this, but they are still alive in this lower bracket. Overcoming the Atlanta Reign, a plucky team to be sure, twice. And they've sealed the fate of the Reign. Don't know how many more times you can rise from the ashes this season. This time, they're going home. And typically we see Florida, you know, some really strong play from, I uh, you know, someone, uh, obviously strong play from the whole team. Uh, but like, 
pop-off moments from someone in Hydron, but Checkmate was unbelievable in this series on the Reaper. I mean, constantly, time and time again, able to turn the tide in a lot of these fights. Is uh, you know that that is a uh, that is another dimension that this Florida Mayhem team will have as they move forward. Uh, I know his checkmate is going to be a scary opponent for a lot of teams on that Reaper. I mean, talk about a playmaker. We've already talked a couple times about Reaper maybe lacking the same level of skill expression than checkmate would find on something like Genji. But my God, he piloted it with great finesse considering the brute force approach that it often requires. And of course, checkmate. For talking about standout players, is our player of the match. Incredible stuff. And what more could you ask for than your Reaper to be dominating against the team who are shaky with their Winston use, right? Or at least in terms of how they link up with Gator at multiple points across these maps. I mean, if there's anything that's going to punish that, it's going to be this guy. Oh, and if they can keep him playing at this higher level with the type of play they get from Hydron, which I think Hydron had moments, especially, you know, in our final map here. Uh, but really, you know, uh, him, and, him and Kai were kind of going at it, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe for a lot of the series. Yeah, you know, if you start to get, like, the Hydron we've been seeing over the Countdown Cup, this version of Checkmate, I think this is a team that can make a deep loser bracket run. Doesn't matter what DPS this guy is on, he is absolutely rocking his opponents. The Florida Mayhem obviously want to recoup after their loss to Seoul. This is going to help them a heck of a lot in terms of maintaining some momentum into the next round of lower bracket play. Have a look at this. North of 10 final blows per 10 from Checkmate. But many of these kills are coming all at the same time and in situations when the Florida Mayhem are shorthanded in terms of players. That's what stands out about this guy. You don't get to see playmaking potential in the numbers, but you saw it via the eye test today. This guy yeah. is the real deal. A big value out of Death Blossom as well, like, uh, an ultimate that we don't really see a ton of value from. But I, I think at the moments where you needed you know, a player to step up and make a big play, Checkmate did that consistently throughout this series. Whether it was Route 66, Esperanza, Eichenwald, uh, really just an overall great series from him. Uh, and I think as we send off the Atlanta Reign, uh, I, I think the Elena Reign had a, a really good season. This was a team that I think a lot of people were worried about, like how are they going to adjust to five on five? Uh, we didn't see him here today, but I thought Hawk had a really tremendous year, you know, as he was kind of playing all different tanks throughout. You know, we saw Speedily and Venom come in. Uh, I know OG and Ultraviolet, you know, really strong as some uh, you know, rookie support player. So I think the future is still bright with the Atlanta Reign. Absolutely, a lot of young talent, Matt. Excited to see where they go from here. But for now, two more teams await judgment on this first of our elimination day. Stick around everybody for the Hangzhou Spark and Toronto Defiant in their elimination game right after this. <laughs> The Overwatch League is brought to you by Butterfinger. Crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery. No one lays a finger on your Butterfinger.
Welcome back to Game Break, everybody. I'm here with someone from Florida Mayhem for the post-match interview. Someone, congratulations, you guys did it. How are you feeling right now? 자, 시작하기 전에 어떻게 어떻게 이겨 이기셨는데 지금 소감 한 말씀 부탁드려요. 어떠신가요? 아, 이제 어제 지고 너무 조금 불안했었는데 오늘 너무 잘해서 이겨가지고 너무 행복합니다 지금. Right. After our loss yesterday, I was feeling a little bit down and nervous, but I'm just super happy right now to get the win against Atlanta Reign. And you guys did it in an amazing fashion. Congratulations again. Now, this match against the Atlanta Reign was a rematch of your first match of the playoffs. So, I mean, this was the second time meeting the same team, right? So, did you guys do anything differently coming into the match to secure a win against the Atlanta Reign? 자, 어, 방금 말씀하셨듯이 오늘 경기에서 일단 아틀란타 팀과의 두 번째 만나는 상황이었잖아요. 아무래도 어, 첫 번째 경기에 플레이오프의 플레이오프의 첫 번째 경기 리매치였기 때문에 어, 오늘 경기에 임하시면서 들어오시면서 좀 이렇게 특별하게 어, 좀 다르게 한게좀 있을까요? 오늘 아무래도 아틀란타를 상대를 하면서 어, 이제 어제 저, 아, 그저께 저희가 호크 상대로 이겼잖아요. 호크 아디였는데 이제 그때도 저희가 똑같은 조합으로 이겼는데 이제 오늘도 갑자기 게이터가 들어오는 거 보고 아 이제 우리랑 똑같은 조합을 하겠구나 하면서 저희가 저희는 딱 그때부터 이제 절대 안 진다는 마인드로 좀더 기대를 가져가면서. 좀더 빠르게 좀 게임을 굴리려고 했던 것 같아요. Alright, so uh, the very first match that we had against the Atlanta Reign, uh, we sort of used the same comp, and that, that was when Hawk came in uh, to play the tank for the Atlanta Reign, but we still beat them in, the, in sort of the comp mirror match. But today, different, uh, something different happened. Gator came in, but even when Gator came in, we predicted that we're going to be, that we're going to see the same exact thing. So you know, we didn't really lose hope. We were kind of getting excited because we knew that we we're going to get the win, and I guess we really wanted to push the tempo uh, to really bring the fight to the Atlanta Reign, and that is how we got the win uh, against the Atlanta Reign. All right, uh, next. You know, although this match was a 3-1 victory for the Florida Mayhem, I do believe that Atlanta Reign really put up a good, a good fight and really definitely gave you guys run for your money. So if you had to choose a player from Atlanta Reign that gave you the hardest time in this matchup, who would it be and why? 자, 두 번째 질문은 오늘 경기가 3대1로 끝이 났지만 제가 봤을 때는 일단 아틀란타 팀도 굉장히 끝까지 좋은 모습을 보여줬고 또 굉장한 경기력을 보여줬다고 어, 생각을 하는데요. 썸먼 선수가 보셔, 보셨을 때 이번 이제 경기에서 어, 아틀란타 팀 쪽에서 좀 썸먼 선수를 제일 괴롭혔던 아니, 좀 제일 경기 힘들게 했던 선수를 뽑자면 누가 있을까요? 그리고 이유 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 어, 제가 생각했을 때는 네로 선수를 뽑고 싶습니다. 그 이유는 이제 제가 어딜 가든 제가 무슨 궁을 쓰든 점프백을 쓰든 저 어디든지 따라와서 이제 저 엉덩이든 빠미든 이제 어디든 저를 치고 있기 때문에 수치 면에서 리퍼가 좀 저를 세게 치니까 좀 많이 힘들었던 것 같아요. <웃음> Alright, uh, I would definitely have to say it was um, Nero from Atlanta Rain because wherever I go, wherever I was on the map, he was always following me, and whether it was my cheek or my butt, he was slapping. Either one of those two, so it was definitely a hard match for me uh, to fight against Nero. All right, someone, that is it for the interview. Thank you so much, and again, big congratulations on the win. 자 이걸로 인터뷰 마치도록 하겠습니다. 선수 너무 축하드리고 다음에 화이팅 하시길 바랍니다. 감사합니다. 화이팅. All right, desk, back to you. Thank you so much, Danny. Thanks a lot, someone. Congratulations to the Florida Mayhem. Yeah, well. Nier can slap all he wants. It wasn't enough to take the mayhem down, unfortunately. But let's discuss the match we just got to witness. Also, someone, what a character. I absolutely Man, love I love someone. So animated, so entertaining, so fun in and out of the game. So I very much hope to see much more of him and that squad. But yes, yes. I will say, I will say, we on our bingo board over there, we're not going to show it right now, but on our bingo board, we have silly walkouts. All I'm missing from someone is a silly walkout, all right? And he would be like, the perfect Overwatch League character. So that's all I ask. I love you, someone. Please give us a silly walkout. You've been advanced. We're very happy about that. <laughs> right, that's, that's all we need from you. Now, uh, gentlemen, this <laughs> was a rematch. Once again, the Mayhem came out on top. As uh, per someone's interview just now, we found out that they didn't really need to make any adjustments, any changes. They brought the aggression to the Atlanta Reign. Is there anything you felt looked different, or was this literally just a repeat match? Dude. <laughs> well, that was an answer. Um, <laughs> I felt checkmate clapping some cheeks is what I felt. This guy was going crazy. Like Hydron, of course, we're seeing a lot in the clips here. Uh, the railgun shots were insane. It's kind of what we expect from Hydron at this point. But checkmate's Reaper was kind of thrown into question just a little bit. He started off the series kind of slow, and then he just started 
dominating. Like, a Nero on the opposite end of things, he got a nice two-play uh, Death Blossom there. Is also a fantastic Reaper. Like, his Reaper play and his understanding of positioning and, like, how to force cooldowns from other players is exceptional. Um, Checkmate, he kind of had Checkmate's number for a little while, and then Checkmate just kind of took over the game. His neutral play, like, um, just leveled up, and then his positioning, his Death Blossoms were just so good. Like, this one here specifically was crazy. Um, I was talking a little bit, actually, in the green room about this. It's sometimes difficult to tell when those healing cards from Kiriko are going to hit you. So you see him go super low, and then you see the flurry, like a whole deck being thrown at the dude to keep him alive. And um, just enabled by the rest of his team to just pop off. Um, I was super impressed by Jeremy this series. Yeah, I completely agree with that, especially in this meta as well, where Reaper can be so impactful. These late Death Blossoms, like right here as well, like this is like mid-fight, and Checkmate comes in during the fight out of nowhere with a huge Death Blossom for the rest of his team. The Atlanta Reign, I could definitely tell that, of course, they haven't had the easiest time adjusting to this Winston meta, considering the fact that Gator hasn't been their primary tank player for the majority of this season. That being said, though, I still think they put up a good fight here. They won a map and they brought it pretty close at some points as well. So the Atlanta Reign, we know they're a very skilled team, but in many ways, like, the Florida Mayhem, like, they, they almost, like, course corrected the Atlanta Reign. They took, like, what they had going with Kai and, you know, greatest gameplay and, you know, uh, good overall kind of, like, understanding of the game. And then Florida Mayhem came in and was like, well, we have Hydron and, like, we're really mechanically skilled <laughs> ourselves and we're super aggressive. Like I said, going into the playoffs, someone had the most eliminations and the most final blows per 10 minutes on this Winston. And you can really tell when you watch the Florida Mayhem play, they have so much aggression, and then they back up that offensive Winston aggression with amazing hit scan play from Hydron and now Checkmate as well. So, Florida Mayhem, they're looking really good heading into the. Yeah, play. they're starting to look like a really scary contender, and might be a reason why none of the top seeded teams wanted to pick them in that first round as well. They were thrown at Seoul at the very end, and uh, I don't know if Seoul was super happy about that. At last, Seoul came through, and now Mayhem is fighting it through the lower bracket. Let's see how far they can take it. But I do want to take a few moments to see off the Atlanta rain. What a season that's been for that squad. So many absolutely talented players on that team, which made it all the way to. To the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, think it, I think it really speaks to the Florida Mayhem being able to take down the Atlanta Reign right here because whenever we talk about Atlanta Reign, we think about a team that is really excels in the lower bracket, make these deep lower bracket runs. But this time, stopped at the front door, the first round of lower bracket. But before this, let's rem remember, before the summer showdown, Atlanta Reign, they made top three in six consecutive stages, right? So this has been a really successful team, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing more from Atlanta Reign going into next year, of course. I think they had some really good moments when it comes to their hits game play. Kai, for example, early on in the year, he was like an MVP candidate to kick things off in the kickoff clash, right? Unfortunately, as the season progressed, starting with the Jotes meta, it sort of fell off for the Atlanta Reign, and this was not the performance they wanted to show off, of course, but I'm really happy about their play overall this season. I'm looking forward to seeing more from the Atlanta Reign as we head into the next year. They have such a well-rounded roster, like the backline, the damage yeah. players, super stacked. So yeah, I would love to see more, more Gator like late next season, maybe. But Hawk is just an absolute beast. Like more from him, please. Every uh, every single day of the week, like there's no tanky car master. No, no, there really isn't. I mean, there's a lot of bright spots on that roster, so I hope to see more from everyone across the board. Thank you for all the entertainment you provided, Atlanta Rain, and we hope to see much more of that. Now, we are ready for the last elimination match of the day. This one will be battled out between the Toronto Define and the Hangzhou Spark. Spark has been looking really, really, really strong, and I mean, they, the, the team they fell to in the end was the Dallas Fuel. They knocked them to the lower bracket. That's nothing to be ashamed of, because the Dallas Fuel definitely one of the teams which everyone considers the absolute top at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Spark must be the favorite heading into this. Yeah, I mean, they're the biggest hard course in the tournament right now. I don't think anybody expected a 12th seed team to come in and explode onto the LAN environment uh, as well as Spark did. It's a little bit ridiculous. Like, we, we spoke about it on day number one, but the first seed facing the 12th seed, you're like, okay, it's a blowout. But it, not really. Like, nope. Spark showed up. I'd be a little bit nervous if I were trying to try right now. Uh, the level that they're playing is just something we've not really seen from them. I mean, I guess we've had little bright sparks um, from them I in the season. That. Dude, it's the <laughs> easiest <laughs> one in the world. You don't that expect me to hook line and sink of that one. You gotta, Maybe. You gotta defy the, 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 the puns. Brr,
anyway, uh, <laughs> for leveling up, I presented thank, God by the last thank goodness for sponsors to, to like steer away from whatever was happening over there on the desk. I do want to take a look at that Winston head to head in this one. That could be a big one. And of course, our, our, our Winston extraordinaire from the desk will break this Winston. one uh, down. Muse and Gushue, who will have uh, the upper hand? Yeah, I wanted to break this down because we've given Gushue so much props here in the playoffs and he stepped up massively for his team and showing us some like real nostalgia moments of course on this Winston. You can see fourth in hero damage, tied for fifth in knockback kills. But if we look on Muse Winston as well, this season per 10 minutes, second in final blows, tied for third in primal rage kills, not going to talk about the death stat which says he dies 14th most in the league. <laughs> Wait, out, of out, out of 15. Out of 15. Top out of 15. Dies the second most in the league. Ah, uh, uh, that, that one hurts. But if right. you ignore the deaths <laughs> the offensive stats are really good and as i think as i reflect on this winston matchup i was quite disappointed honestly by muse's winston performance in the previous match because I, we know that he's capable of so um, such amazing winston play early on in the season that was like the toronto defiant like hallmark play like they were leaning on muse to play winston a lot of the time so i'm hoping to see better performances from muse because i know what he's capable of on that winston going up against some of the best winstons in the world but Gushue, what a playoffs he's had. <laughs> yeah, again. In those two matches. He, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, this is, uh, I feel once again, prediction probably a little bit one-sided here. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if someone goes for Toronto Defined. Not to say Bring it up. there isn't a possibility. No. Wow, Joss, I but thought you'd go with Toronto. Look, I'm a Toronto Defiant fan, man. Sim. You're a sim. <laughs> I'm a Toronto Defiant fan. We Only fan, just a fan. I'm a hopper big fan. I'm a okay. big hopper fan. But, but Spark looked good. Look, Gooshway, he kind of crazy. Like yeah, one of the best Winstons yeah. we have in the league. Yep. And yeah. he's on land. No, and, in and then you're looking at those DPS players with yeah. Afi, with Shy. Like it's, it's really hard. Oh, Shy's hard. just a nutcase. Yeah, it's really hard to pray against the Spark here. Alas, we've seen a lot of upsets. This could be another one. Let's see which team will stay in and which yes, one has cool. to go home. And for all the action, we hand it over to Matt and Mitch. Thank you very much, Zoe. Yes, 1,333 days have elapsed since the last time the Toronto Defiant faced off against the Hangzhou Spark. And to say much has changed would be an understatement. But the one thing that ties these two teams together, they both had to fight to even make playoffs. That's right, both of these teams, yeah. tooth and nail, through the play-ins to have a shot here at glory. And so it has occurred that the Hangzhou Spark have emerged, as the desk put it, as one of the biggest dark horses in these playoffs, Matt. It, it just feels like the meta really suits the players that they have on the roster. Uh, seeing Gu in, he's just a master of that Winston role. And then, you know, Shy of the Sojourn, two of the more impactful heroes we have in the meta. Uh, they, they have two of the better players in the league on those two heroes. So. Uh, you think this benefits them? And then for Toronto, uh, they show the graphic of Muse, right? Like, we hadn't seen them for a while. Uh, this team has really started to get on track and play their best when Hotbo was in, in that tank role. Uh, so it'll be interesting what we see from them today. Absolutely. Let's not waste any time. Let us bring forth the Toronto Defiant. Let's see what they've been working on, Matthew. Well, I mean, uh, they, they, they have not a ton of time to work on something different, uh, right? As uh, Hey, who's uh, that? No, I think we don't see a lot of variation. So Hotbot will be in the starting lineup today, uh, which is interesting. Like, do we see Hotbot pick up the Winston? Uh, if he does, like, why did you play Muse the other day? Uh, although he is like your Winston player, quote unquote, right? Uh, this team has formed really good chemistry uh, with Hotbot in the game. So. Uh, it'll be Hotba, Hisu, Finale, Chorong, and Twilight. As uh, for me, it's always been the supports for this team that's been the uh, you know best part of it. Absolutely. Chorong and Twilight together, just incredible. We talk a lot about our role stars, right? I mean, both these guys, I'll be honest with you, I voted for Chorong uh, specifically. I really thought that he had an incredible year. We know that many teams wanted Chorong this year. They wanted to bring him onto his roster. Yeah. He was spoiled for options. And so the Defiant managed to snap him up. This team's run through the season. They've had some high highs, but in aggregate, very much, uh, you know, 
I mean, middies are putting a little bit lightly, but this team obviously wins and losses. They've not been able to take it to the top teams when it counts outside of that incredible outing they had in front of a home crowd in Toronto. They fight through the play-ins. It's a scary opponent in the Florida Mayhem they go up against. They don't find success there, but they do come in second through that little tournament. We underrate Finale a lot. We've done it for a fair while. You know, we talked about, although in Finale, the dichotomy of those two DPS to come in alongside Jisoo. But when it counts, Finale has really stepped up in a big way. Very exciting Tracer play. The Genji play has also been spot on. Not expecting to see that. But their opponents today have emerged as a legitimate threat in this tournament. Let's bring out the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, I think this team has gotten, uh, you know, a lot of hype after we originally saw them uh, in this tournament. I, I don't think anybody really knew what to expect. And as soon as you started to see this roster, you started to, you know, hear whispers of what the meta was going to be, you could start to see, like, hey, this team can put it together and they can maybe make a run in this tournament. Uh, interesting of note, there will be no Alpha Yi in the starting lineup today. So they'll actually have Pineapple, who we've seen play a ton of the Tracer in the past. Uh, that'll be the only sub they make, but interesting decision. Yeah, I mean, Pineapple was really solid when it did come to the Tracer play. Uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, starting to build up a little bit of a name for himself. A lot of people were sort of surprised. On his Tracer, he ended up being seventh in the league in hero damage done per 10 and pulse bomb attach rate sixth. That was on Tracer. We might be seeing this team just pivot to a different Reaper player as his skill set, you know, is encompassed by many, many different players. But Hangzhou are exciting for a couple of reasons. Shy, absolutely a contender for one of the most destructive long range hit scan players in the league. Teru has emerged as a real flanker, someone on a Kiriko that wants to play aggressively <laughs> and actually use that swift step to get back to his team when the fight begins. And he's doing this while Gooseway has the lowest death per 10 of any uh, Winston player in the playoffs. So the fact that he's getting away from with leaving his team for a time, coming back and keeping Gooseway alive, I don't know how you balance offense and healing so effectively, but Teru is doing it. I also think just Gushui is tremendous uh, being able to use his movement and bubble and just kind of play around cover and get back to his team on the Winston, uh, a way that not many other players in the world uh, can do. So the first map in the series will be Oasis. Uh, not sure how much like maps actually are like super dependent, right? Because the, the meta seems to have just formed around this Reaper Winston, uh, you know, Kariko, Lucio, Sojourn comp. Uh, so don't really think other than like Circuit Royale, you'll see like any deviations. Uh, but with Hop in the lineup, with Pineapple, you never know. So that's the question, right? Not unlike the Atlanta Rain, there's a tank change for the Toronto Defiant. And the question is, does Hopper hang with someone like Gushue on the Winston? Or does he opt to play his more signature brand of, you know, what oh. we used to know as off tanks? I would say there's not many players in the league who can kind of like hang, let's say, with Gushue in terms of, you know, Winston play. Uh, and for Toronto Defiant, like, you know, maybe Muse is like the better mechanically skilled Winston player out of the two. I think that would be fair to say, considering he's like a historical main tank player. We've seen him play Winston and you know, Hotba is not. Uh, but do you gain uh, just in terms of like the teamwork and coordination with having Hotba in the what? game? Well, he's called himself the big boss. That's the title he wanted. He's coming for it. And he's going to be coming out on the Winston. Nickname from somebody else. I, I mean, mean, that's for a whole other conversation. I will, I will allow him to have it if he turns up here and is able to match Gooseway on the Winston. I'll make an allowance for that. Finale pressured pretty heavily early on as both teams look to control this high ground. But it's shy. Always seems to be opening up the fight for the Hangzhou Spark. Again, yeah, interesting. They bring in Pineapple. We were wondering for what uh, specific reason. We were like, ah, oh, do they uh, go for like, a tracer variation? No, it's actually just for a, for a straight up Reaper swap. So maybe just kind of saw something the other day in the way that Alpha Yi was playing the Reaper that they would have liked to see something a little bit different, a different style of play. Uh, and feel like that Pineapple can better uh, better bring that to the table. Gooseway trading in that front line with Hotbar for a moment there. Some repositioning from Reapers. He needs to be a little bit careful. Got to point out, he obviously on that Reaper here. Finale on the Sojourn. Finale does well here. Pineapple is felled and Gushway falls. Finale, hang about. This guy is anything but average. What a turn up. Yeah, yeah it comes through with a few big kills there as uh, 
to, you know, he's who's been playing the Sojourn for like a lot of the season, like a majority of the season. So to see him swap a little bit different, but we do know in the past, right, from like time of the Philly Fusion, and whatnot, like Hisu's Reaper is actually really strong, uh, you know, playing uh, playing that in the past. So it'll be the Toronto Defiant taking the lead here. Shy getting close to this overclock. He is so deadly with this ultimate. So they're just trying to maybe line this up, set up a play. Off angle here for Shy. Pretty risky for Hopper to try and dive him from here. So Shy's allowed to persist in this position. Oh, take the bat of Twilight! My goodness, descends upon Shy. Kitsune Rush ostensibly only used really for him as he charges down the Sojourn. Terry though gives as good as he gets. Both Sojourns falling to Kunai in this fight. And Hopper's primal rage down and try and disperse the spark, but Hisu is already brought down. Terry with his second there. Hangzhou is maneuvering now to retake the point. Yeah, they're going to be able to do so, but Toronto does get uh, you know, close to 60%. So Gushu is going to be able to make it back. Is Hotbus done a nice job so far, right? Uh, I know you were like, oh, like, can he go toe to toe with Gushu? I think you know, Hotbus looked fine on the Winston thus far. I think it just kind of speaks to just how versatile of a player he is. It's, he actually takes Pineapple out right away, but that's going to be Finale falling at the hands of Shy. Now you foreshadowed this overclock. You knew it would be scary in Shy's hands. He's able to find Finale, but not much outside of that. PC definitely posturing there for a Death Blossom. Little telegraph by the looks of things. This, the Spark were ready for it. And with Twilight out of the picture now, things get a little bit nastier for Toronto. Pisu trying to stay on the other side of that disrupt the shot. And look at him come forward now, posturing in Shy's direction, trying to threaten him here. Pineapple attempting to do the same thing, but Hopper has found Teru now. And the Toronto Defiant starting to find their reinforcements return to the fray. The big boss finds three. <laughs> it uh, really makes you think like, you know, uh, he is obviously a very good player, the main thing player, but you know, uh, Hotba, that's really kind of been where they've been the most successful throughout the season, seeing Hotba play uh, for this team. So you get Hotba back in the lineup, you start to see good things early here against the team in the Spark. But everybody on the desk just picked uh, the Spark, right? Uh, you know, I, I was talking a little bit earlier, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe this is what Toronto can win. Uh, which they keep playing like this, uh, absolutely. Love this as well. You talked about it in the first day of our playoffs, take fights early and often. And the Defiant trying to leverage that sound barrier to get an early lead in this engagement. Doesn't pan out though as the Spark grab it or disengage. They'll come back in with both their support ultimates in a matter of seconds. Where does Terry go with this? What's he cooking? All right, paving some roads is the play. And Pineapple finds Chorong and Mitz. That can suit a rush. I mean, Reaper gets that speed boost, gets right in, in the face uh, of Chorong. There's nothing you can do at that point, right? Uh, Death Blossom takes him out as we get to 99. Take a look as, uh, you know, Super Rich able to hold on to this sound barrier. Could be massive because it really looks like we're just going to have one fight left uh, in this round. We'll have a Kiriko ultimate for the Defiant. Sound barrier for Super Rich here. They're out of sync right now, so I'm curious to see how they interact. Twilight has to be careful, takes a bit of damage before the fight starts. Super Rich on the menu for Hopper. So far, he's able to stave off the Winston. Hotbar, yeah, discretion better part of Valerie knows his team but now to capture the point and it's up to the Spark to make their move. Super Rich's sound barrier has all but expired, but Hopper's life force is headed the same way as Teru's able to bring him down. Hisi wants to try and close the gap, but he's knocked back. Super Rich has to give up the ghost though, but Shy is there. Able to find Hisu now. Overclock is activated. Twilight trying to climb the walls to get away from him, and it's not gonna be enough. And that'll be a spark control. This is scary. Finale can't quite get away. Choron can't stall. And it will be a Hangzhou round to start us off. You, you gotta feel that, uh, no, that right there, I, I feel like the spark did not play up to the level we've seen them play, right? Throughout the uh, the week thus far. I think if you're Toronto, uh, knowing that, you know, you kind of, I feel like, leveled up your game a little bit, but still fall short there, at least in round one can't feel too great. So, uh, you imagine the Spark are going to you know, bring it even more as the series goes on, right? I think they can, I think the Spark can kind of like level up and hit a ceiling that maybe Toronto can. I think just like the pace may actually be the thing that really does Toronto in. But Toronto, I think with this swap to hot but in a tank yet again, I think this is a, the right call. Uh, but is it enough against the Spark? This comp fits the spark like a glove, whereas the Defiant have had to patch things up basically overnight, Matthew. Shy getting the spark through most of the rocky ground in that previous round. He goes 
five final blows for those three deaths. And here we go, into that room on the left-hand side again. It's Shy. Hisu gets cut short as he tries to advance upon the spark, and now Hangzhou realizes it's time to go. Toronto, they're just kind of stuck up there on the high ground, right? This is going to get ugly. Down. Yeah. Trying to reposition. Not too shabby. Finale on the drive-by. They're able to find Super Rich, but... Now losing Chorong there. Both Sojourns giving a good account of themselves so far. The Sparks still control the point, and now they're corralling the Defiant on it itself. With Finale going down, Shy doing his best work from the high ground. The Defiant eventually must succumb. There, there, there was no way they were going to win that, right? They just kind of lurked there up on that high ground. And if anything, the Sparks are just sat there. There was like no way, like they, they didn't have to be the team that could, had to engage. Like the Toronto Defiant would have had to cross the entire you know, open area of the point to get to a spot where it's terrible for a Winston to fight in. Uh, so Toronto not setting themselves up in a great position to fight early on. Look at this sideline from Shy. Pretty punishing here. Of course, he's built up that Sojourn ultimate already. Finale behind by a good old 20%. You do not want to walk into this room while Shy commands this space. Kitsune Rush may be an exception to that rule as Shy is forced to give up that space. But Hopper dives in, takes an absolute licking, and won't get out alive. You can look where the rest of the team is. Well, they're hanging out in the what corridor. The I mean, kill them by the lockers. Yeah, there was no, there was no chance for Hoppe to live in. I mean, now they're just gonna, are they just gonna stagger? I mean, look at this. Gushu is chasing players down. I mean, this is a bad luck for the Toronto Defiant on this round. Uh, I would say is that now you got five ultimates here from the Spark, as they have played this perfectly here thus far. Shy is accounting for 12 of his team's 21 final blows. Pineapple's only had to get to one kill to put Hangzhou in this position. Very aggressive. Shy's able to find Hisu though, and that is devastating now. The Defiant are losing their grip on this map in quite, a, uh, quite an impressive fashion. An absolute capitulation now as they are unable yeah, to assemble themselves in a way to challenge. I mean, they didn't even need the Primal or the Overclock. They just pop them in celebration here at the end. Oh, Churong, he's made onto the point. Got that sound barrier going as uh, he will fall as man. The first point very close, the second point not at all as the Hangzhou Spark just dominant there. The Defiance, their woes are laid bare before us here, ladies and gentlemen. They've had to make some uh, slight adjustments to their roster and it doesn't come out with a sterling result. The Spark of becoming an Inferno right before our very eyes. A very commanding second round in that map, Matthew. The Toronto Defiant have to feel Pretty boomed by that, in fact. They really didn't participate. Shy, 17 final blows, three deaths of a total of like, 23 for his team. Absolutely taking this game over. He's now sat on the Reaper. Who is going to challenge this guy? Finale is going to have to step up. Otherwise, this one could be over in a flash.
Absolute highest tier of watch that you really can get. Four minutes after Hong Kong's part to clear the point, they get it. 70% is Bernard crashes for two to get the elimination. Shy on the Sojourn. Just think and again. Putting up numbers. Finding four members in that fight. Shy is a one man army. Finds Fit. Blade pulled out immediately. Finds Profit. Finds Smart Architect. Huge. Picking up four eliminations with the Blade itself. Mano does go in. He comes up with two quick kills. Izayaki and Lip both falling. Gets Ooh. a third. For the Hangzhou Spark, they can absolutely contend with the best of the best. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Changun is cooking up, Matthew, I'll take seconds. The Hangzhou Spark settle into a very comfortable second round there on Oasis. Showing us that even yeah, with Toronto's attempts at mixing things up, they are behind the eight ball. I love seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the video for the Spark. It just reminds you how many players are on this roster. I mean, man, we make the we make the roster size, you know, uh, a little bit bigger. I mean, even Reinforce may find Mate, back on. They have a they have a soccer team how on their roster. The spark. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're just acquiring acquiring talent everywhere. Is uh. No, they they kind of they dominate map number one. I think but I think the first point was like pretty competitive back and forth. I think after that, uh, it was all spark. Uh, like how did the defiant bounce back from that? Because it seems like with the way the meta currently is, there's really not like a thing you can go to, right? Uh, like another type of composition or uh, you know variation that seems to be popular enough and successful enough that you can kind of veer off. Well, uh, it seems like you're kind of stuck in this head-to-head -head battle. Can we, can we go back to fundamentals for just a moment, right? Because Shy is yeah. 17 out of 29 final blows of his team over Oasis. How are, you, how are you shutting down a Sojourn like that? How, or in general, even, because he has so much space to move. He's having such a... It, it's difficult because like you're, you're also trying to deal with Gushui, who is extremely aggressive on the Winston, can get into your back line, seems to always be able to make it out. Uh, so you're in this kind of pickle of trying to have to defend your back line, uh, you know, from the enemy Winston, by, but also trying to put enough pressure onto Shy uh, that it's not just a, a firing range, just a shooting gallery out there. Very tough for the Defiant to close the gap. I mean, we're on board with Shy for much of that round, uh, especially in that second round, right? University, and he's just sort of playing that left-hand side room, and no one really wants to walk up on him, and no one wants to try and close the gap because he... Basically, he always has a charged rail at all times. Pata is going to be the second map selected here by the Toronto Defiant. Not seen a ton of it uh, so far in his playoffs here and there. And again, the same 
the same issues are going to be present here for the Toronto to fight. So a change of location isn't necessarily going to alleviate our concerns about them in that first map. Much like the Atlanta Reign, getting hot by in a position to depressure the enemy backline and finding a way to shut Shy down is going to be number one on the agenda. Right, and, and are they able to do that? Because I feel like if not, this could potentially be a, a fast series. As I think the I think for Toronto, like sometimes like you just end up in a meta like this where they, what you can't really play the, the way you would ideally like to. It doesn't seem like Muse is the answer after we saw him the other day and then now not today. Right, so back with Hot Bob. Uh, you're just trying to make like the best out of the situation, right? Uh, where you're going up against a team who you know, has all the mechanical skill in the world in the Hangzhou Spark, uh, but it's sometimes they just have not been able to put it together. But this type of meta, you know, you get those insanely mechanically talented players on like their some of their best roles, and it, it's just a really tough draw. Something that's been really exciting to watch is how Twilight has taken to Kiriko. Uh, he's looked very effective. Uh, when it's come to, you know, that the solo play aspect, right? We even saw it on the first map. He ults himself in Shy's direction and just Five, ruins him. Four, so that was a really good look from him. And two, have to see if he can leverage one. that even more. Attackers Thought we might see Pineapple trace a variation here, but the Reaper makes plenty of sense. Twilight will probe early and then return to safety. Well, for now. Yeah, just firing off a, a shot or two and then just getting back to the rest of the team is Spark. Put some pressure up on the high ground, and uh, Pineapple just hit for a little bit too long. <laughs> Terra was the spy from TF2 there. He is in the midst of, he is in the, midst of the Toronto Defiant. Yeah, look at him like, hey, wait, wait, wait. We got pink schemes? Nah, wait a minute. The imposter gets caught out. <laughs> oh, man. Someone's on the I feel like we need, map. like, a new... Uh, I feel like we need a new term for when somebody is so far behind the enemy lines or just terroring. <laughs> okay, uh, sure. He's, he's always there. Ooh, not good. Oh, they get a finale. Yeah, they actually die finale specifically this time as opposed to going out for info. So I wonder if that first four raid just tips the spark off to where the Sojourn was kind of playing on the high ground. It can be hard to see from the low angle. Losing other players here though. So Hunter, yeah, should gain information, but they're, they're paying very dearly for it here. Pineapple can dispatch hot dine. There will be reinforcements on the way. It's a matter of keeping Pineapple standing for now while Teru is on his way back. Yeah, that was. I think they would have actually stayed and fought that a little bit longer, but it was a really nice bubble by Gushi that blocks off some damage going into Pineapple. You don't want to push directly into that because you have the supports coming back. So maybe this opens up a little bit of space here for the Spark. Uh, as uh, the Shy here up on the bridge, trying to get some charge on the Sojourn to land a shot. Hopper takes a long way over. Gives Hangzhou a fair bit of time to organize themselves before the Winston touches down. But a Primal Rage already built by Hopper. Pretty solid early round from him. Leads his team in damage. Two minutes I think he needed to take that position because uh, because you did have Finale and Charong both really low. So you need to jump up there with like, the bubble and just get in. Shy space and just block that line of sight for a sec. Where does Hopper jump? Primal has to be used there. Yeah, he's probably feeling pretty exposed in that quad. Whilst the Spark is shooting the position off on the high ground, that rail did not connect by Finale. Just let Shy peer out into the open a little bit more, look for something of his own. He also comes up empty-handed. Both teams building these ultimates, both Gushwe, the Primal Blade, on deck in a few moments here. This could be dangerous. It's going to be super rich sound barrier now as Pineapple tries to get a Death Blossom off in. No one's there to see it, but Finale's already fallen. Oh, and ETP's right out. You still have this Tsune Rush here from the Spark, if needed. In Gushui holding on to Primal. Oh, okay. Pisu really forced the issue there. Shy's able just to, yeah. just to park away from him there without the slide. We'll have that available now. Some of these ultimates are just being thrown away by the Defiant. And here comes the Katsune Rush now. Finale's forced to bait in that for the time being, with Tisu getting rid of his opposite number. Finale trying to neutralize Gushui, but the Primal Blade has been drawn, and Finale can't do a darn thing about it. Battered and bruised, he's sent back to spawn in pieces. And Gushray will solidify the Sparks cap. Yeah, and yeah, Pisu and Twilight stuck here. They'll fall. Come back rather quickly, though. So, see Gushui and Co. get the payload, start to get it moving here through the streets phase. As, you know, Shy, Pineapple, and Gushui, you see that angle? You know, Shy's just trying to play from that. I uh, you know staircase, maybe actually get some damage down, pick a player off, give themselves a big advantage and a lead. Not too bad though from Toronto, right? My first point, definitely shaving 
Yeah. Healthy amount of time off the clock and decent rotations from Hot Bar and Finale, especially. Now, though, I have to answer the question of when and where you drop down from this high crowd. It's almost like the Defiant are playing as if they're expecting the spark to flank left here. But they're actually just camping on top of this building. Yeah, Chai just jumping up and down, putting in damage down. Just looking for this railgun shot, trying to line up a kill. Katrina rushes there, Shai. Oh, mate, you're asking for it. Yeah, he's not getting out of this one-on-one -on -one piece. Not a chance. Yeah, as uh, everybody from the rest of the team goes back towards the spawn, he kind of veers off to the opposite side, and Toronto realizes that they just chase him down. So, he sure put some pressure on Twilight, forces the TP out. So, Hangzhou, they will wait for Shai to come back in, where now you'll have a sound barrier for both teams here. Uh, I know the overclock from Shai, uh, you know, coming up much earlier than Finale. Are you able to use the overclock and maybe just buy yourself some space, right? You know, get the card around this corner, open it up a bit. Again, a little bit hard to try to find a great angle that's not on top of the building, but that's an invitation for Hopper. Try and flat him. Okay, Kushway goes up, everybody, the Hunter Spark, all of a sudden, organize themselves on top of these buildings, but is Pineapple ready for this? No, his Wraith Walk is forced here, but he's in the midst of it now. Protection Suzu, perfectly timed, great delivery by Twilight. Means that he's using Oculator from any crackback of damage. Gets a nice little 3k. I mean, how do you deal with some of these death blossoms that come down, right? Uh, the protection suits you, the bubble, uh, you know, giving you the uh, you know, invulnerability for a brief period of time in the bubble to just block damage at rain from going in. I know as the Reaper is also you know, using his ultimate and getting the life seal, it's just uh, actually almost impossible to kill the Reaper in some of those situations. Well, we're back in the Beyblade meta, Matt, of years and years ago. Yeah. I just just Ayu Bubble, really. Oh, my goodness. The finale gets a face adjustment there as Teru materializes See, in front of him. so easy. Oh, so filthy, man. He made, <laughs> he made that look like... He, that, that, is, that is extremely Flanky. difficult to do on Korea. <laughs> like, uh, TP's up to the high ground, Katsune Rush, and then just you know, just domes him right in front of him. I mean, before Finale can even look towards him, uh, he's dead. Yeah, again, that uh, sort of rate of fire increase makes it much easier to, to guarantee hits with those uh, with those knives. Finale trying to wrap around here. Overclock's active, but who's he going for? Not, not exactly a wealth of targets. And they can see it. The disengage is big, but Hunter had to go now. This has been all well and good, some yeah, flashy yeah. play, but they've got to finish the round Sound here. With way to start the sound barrier to use here. And they're just going to sit on the cart. They're going to say, come to us. Hisu obliges. Great form gets him close without taking any damage. But he takes a face full immediately. And Hotbar's going to get grilled on the cart. Chorong has to try and get there. And so the Spark, play it safe and slow, get the sound barrier when it counts. And they'll have that second checkpoint. That is so disciplined from the Spark, though. Like, they saw the rush come out from Twilight. They decided to back up, not fight it there. They know exactly how much time they have left once it ends to be able to go back and fight that. They use the sound barrier. They get right onto the payload. Uh, they force the Wraith form out of Hisu straight away, and he's the one who actually has to contest the payload at that moment. They take him out. Everything else starts to fall for the Defiant. Matt, Gooshway is nine final blows and zero deaths out of a total of 19. Almost deadlifting on the Winston with a perfect run so far. And that's taking into account how back and forth some of the fighting has been over the last couple of points. I don't know how he does it. He's having a huge impact right now. And again, Hoppa, a keeping up is just not an option. It's about treading water at this point. Shy, aggressive play, wrapping around. He might have to wait out the sound barrier a little bit there as Hoppa hasn't found him quite yet. High ground being controlled by Hungjo. And of course, Kizuna Rush drops on the ground. This is a fertile ground for the Spark to plant the seeds of victory. Trying to give a little bit of space as Hopper's still chasing Shy, but he's being healed up quite nicely. A ton of pressure. Eventually, he's going to have to give up, though. So where's the follow-up going to be? Will it be Pineapple? No, Terry's brought down as well. The Spark, a repel. Yeah, you're going to have to back up here if you're the Spark. Is uh, Pineapple not able to make it out to Twilight? It's actually going to connect with the headshot. So it's going to be just Gushui, probably the one who's going to have to get a touch. It's going to rush used sort of defensively here. And then the fight able to push Gooseway back. The Primal Rage is going to have to try and touch somehow. And the Spark die, are brought to a screeching die, halt die. here in the last phase this of Paraiso. Credit to the Defiant, die. who really like, have to ride the lightning in order to stay in step with the Spark across this map. It's furious fighting. But great job by Hisu there. Eight and four on that Reaper. Keeps his team in it. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, that's a pretty good defense there from the Defiant. Gooseway 
uh, force there, you know, to use the primal just to get the touch. Then they force him out, and like they know exactly the route he's going to take to get back. They finish him off, and they battle through. Really, uh, you know, a good Toronto defense. You know, on first point and second point, they dwindle the clock to where it's about a minute and thirty or so uh, for the spark to attack this final point, which can be difficult to get because the defense has that high ground and able to hold. Uh, can they do it on offense, though? In the scenario where the Defiant have to be the more aggressive team, can they take it to the Spark? Oh, the matchup between Shy and Finale is a little bit closer this time, but it still doesn't really flatter Finale. Again, seeing him come out of here on the Sojourn definitely feels like a last-minute adjustment. He's only able to find two final blows over the course of the map. A little bit tough for him, and it's really going to be a matter of setting Finale up for success. Something I really liked about the Defiant in the past is that they were very good at creating a safe pocket for Hisu to operate in, uh, especially against teams who were less adept at that aggressive, fast-paced kind of play. They need to offer Finale that same uh, sort of space while dealing with like a dive comp. It's not easy, it's a very different meta, I understand that, but Finale is not able to be set up for success here so far. So Hisu comes out on the Widow, maybe he's trying to find a shot here. A little bit of damage, nothing big though. So he'll go back to the Reaper. Uh, and, and I agree with you. I also think it's really difficult because, well, one, Shy can do things like that, but also, like, Teru has been constantly, like, he's always, like, in the back line, like, right up you know, in the Sojourn space. Like, it's really difficult to deal with his aggression. So far, so good, though. Feels so fast in those scenarios. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Especially if you close that gap somehow. Good start for Hunter, though. Getting a bit of breathing room now. It's 45 seconds off the clock. Here comes Hopper, though. Parachuting into play. Spike was hoping to... Rather, Shy was hoping to just line something up there, but the rail doesn't connect, though. Chorprong sends him packing. Love that aggression from the Defiant here. Taking away Hunter's safe pockets. Blowing them out on this first point. Yeah, this should be a point A take for the Defiant. They just blow them right out of the water and maybe it's a little bit of the spark being a little bit too aggressive that the Defiants are able to take advantage of. I know you overextended so many different situations. Eventually, uh, you're going to get God. Is so that'll be that first point taken. Five minutes plus. Hey, there's some fight in this. There's some fight in this Defiant team. Yep, Matt. This is a, a fantastic recovery. Hisu really still commanding a lot of attention and respect from the spark. But they're on the way. Remember, the Defiants uh, don't even have to finish the map here. Keep this pressure on, they'll be in good shape. Well, they, they set themselves up for, you know, an opportunity to do so, right? Because now the Sparks, they need to you know, waste time and they need to burn clock here. They need to play close, they need to play aggressive, win a few fights in a row. And Toronto, they come in with some ultimate advantages right off the rip. And oh, Gushui falls right as he gets Primal. He's probably playing for the Primal there. Gonna pop it, but not able to do so before he drops. Ah, Teru went for the Katsune Rush, maybe hoping for an you know, extra healing output to make sure Gushui could hold up under that onslaught. That's out of sync as well, and a couple of mistakes starting to muddle the mixture here for the Spark. They've given up an extremely large amount of space on the second phase of the map, so much so that the Defiant can now play from the high ground. That's gotta hurt. I feel like this is a must-win fight for the Spark. This you lose here, now. and you give them like this almost five minutes now. to just get that payload to the Golden Box of Victory. This is one where it would be difficult for the Defiant to lose. I mean, Finale knew it was coming for him. It comes for us all, I guess. Bruce Ray runs him down very quickly there as Finale tried to make the play with that overclock. So here's a staging ground now. A handhold has been carved out by the Spark. They have to spend for it, though. I mean, you lose that fight, you, you have to. I mean, if you lose that fight, if you're the Spark, I mean, you've lost this map. Uh, it, it would be almost impossible in the scenarios uh, for the Toronto Defiant to kind of beef it that bad, right? Where the, the payload is not far towards that third checkpoint. They'd have so many ultimates in about five minutes. Pineapple yet to make a real name for himself on this map so far. May not be required to be the difference maker as Hopper's already been filled. Spark can solidify this defensive position. Teru <laughs> sheepishly <laughs> returns to the safety of his team. This is burning more time off that clock. You, know, you, you lose Hotpa that early. Now everybody's got to sit here. they got to wait. you got to get Hotpa back in the fight. I mean, now we're like 30, 40 seconds out. And they come right around the corner. And here's another scenario where you, you now uh, they, all they had to use was Death Blossom oh, yeah. there. Because get through that choke point. Uh, you're going to get down, uh, I know, about a little bit above two minutes before this next fight kicks off. I mean, 
That's a full two minutes basically down the drain there for the Defiant. Yeah, Hangzhou making up for the pretty average hold on that first point. Pineapple there is the proverbial boulder in the, uh, the Indiana Jones corridor. You know, it's searched through a ruin. All of a sudden, a boulder's rolling down at him. Completely ruins the Defiant, who try to force himself, to be fair, through a choke. Bit of a different approach here, more circuitous as they try and snatch up Shy. He's having to slip away. Sound barrier now coming later for the Spark, and they of course have Katuna Rush in reserve. Twilight. No bones about using it right here. Finale's reduced to them. PC needs to make the difference here, but he gets shut down. Shy is able to pick him off. And now Hopper stands inside his bubble. Another attack foiled by the Spark. Uh, this is looking like a worst case scenario for the Defiant. If both teams dump both support ults into that. Hisu ends up with a Death Blossom, doesn't get anything. In, in, a, in a scenario where you had above four minutes on the clock, we're going to be at like... No, minute 10 when this next fight kicks off. Primal and overclock available for the Spark. Also, Mitch, uh, I don't know if you caught that. The Spark didn't even get Goosh Wave with yeah. the sound barrier there. He died only uh, they, three they, times. They, and, 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 and they didn't, and they didn't like, take advantage of it, right? I mean, he's on the payload with the Reaper. The, the wind oh! the sound barrier, they don't take advantage of it. Oh, so that's not a good hiding spot, but well, he is now an adornment uh, for that door frame. Shy pins him to it. And now fighting through the streets and ensues as the Spark once again slaps the hand that reaches for the cookie jar. The Defiant not able to get started there. And they don't have a lot of resources to work with, right? Yeah, Hopper Primal maybe deny some of his high ground away, but he has to be very careful because there's a ton of damage that will come back at him in doing that. Finale. How much can you how much can you rely on the Hopper Primal? I mean, we haven't seen a ton of Hopper on the Winston. Like, can you guarantee these primals are gonna be, you know, Winston main kind of esque, right? I mean. It's all also the concern of Pineapple, who's just started popping off in the last two minutes. Now 10 and 6. Hopper's having to get shy. I'm going to batter him into the ground here. The man to keep up his life, but he needs to be careful. He spaces well from Pineapple, who is dealing with an onslaught from behind him. They're going to wait. Gooshway Primal. Mark are going to wait here. They're going to wait here. They're going to have Gooshway get here it on is. the test with Primal. And they're going to have the Kazuna Rush. Buys a lot of time. Gooshway goes low pretty early. Pineapple with the Death Blossom, though the Reaper Copter has landed and uh, has put out a commission pretty much straight away. Finale punches one in the Gooshway's face, and here's the Defiant making a stretch for it, reaching out for some victory. 90 seconds left in the round, and they're still in it. it it's about the same amount of time that the Spark had at this moment. Uh, the, the Defiant do not capitalize on an awesome attack on point A. The Spark put up tremendous defense on point B, and look at this. Uh, you know, a minute 30 on the clock, teams with both support alts here at this moment in time. Uh, th this may be just like one big grand fight, and that could be it. Yeah. Double Kitsune Rush on this high ground, most likely. God knows where Teru is going to turn up in all that mess. Finale getting some tickets across the map here. It's go time for the Hangzhou Spark, or at least it will be. Here we go. Sojourn crosses over, hopping like ships in the night, and Shy gets caught. He's not slippery enough to evade capture here. Gooshway drives by the card. He's going to have to drop, and here it comes. Sound barrier now for the Hunter Spark, but he's still is hunting. That Death Blossom available. He'll wait out the Sound Barrier for as long as he can. And Gooshway back on the card. Finale down. Okay. The Spark now have the numbers advantage, and Hitsu might have to pull the trigger sooner rather than later. He wants the pressure into the front of the fight, but the disengage is so good from the Spark, and they keep contesting, but they've lost Super Rich and Pineapple in order to do so. The Defiant put them in a lose-lose situation there, and they'll snatch away a hotly contested second map. And I think Hotball really came alive towards the end there. The one when we were talking about, like, what kind of primal are you going to get? You actually got to kill onto Shy, and how do things open up there at the end? Hotba able to find Shy. Uh, I, I was getting a little bit worried there, Mitch, not going to lie. When Super Rage found Finale and I, we were still holding out of that Death Blossom on with Hisu, I was like, oh, you know, when, when are we going to see this happen? You know, it's getting down to the wire, but they pull it out in the end as Toronto ties it up. This is that grit, that composure that the Defiant are going to have to lean on for this entire series. Pretty important to find a map early here to shut up the Spark, who again, with Gushway leading the way, have been pretty indomitable so far. Gotta hand it to it. This team has been one that's you know, fallen under criticism before for not being able to keep that strong mental. They're doing it right now when it really counts. Map three, everybody, is coming up after this.
qualification into tournament number three is still completely in the open. Now Hawk in trouble, separated from the rest of his team. Not before Vigilante and OG get through that war, is Hawk already dead? Kai also falls, and the Atlanta Rain, it may be scrappy. It's double supports versus a tank. Oh, saying that, not a support, it's speedly. Kai ends up falling, and it's just a slugfest. Oh, oh my Vigilante, God. no way! <gasps> no way, OG gets two boops there! Both Backbone and Hattie sent to the drink? What? What is with this corner? And just ridiculous plays, by the way. Oh. The Atlanta Rain? OG gets a double boop, an unbelievable amount of ult charge for that B, plus extra meterage. God, the swing of the tempo of that fight. Yeah, now gonna jump over to the point itself. Just keep it locked in the middle for now. Zest with 8 HP, and Lip finds Carpe! He used the debug command again, Avril. Someone needs to take away the admin privileges. As they How find two for console? one trade, Void, the only person going down so far for the dragons but that's enough the oh dragons get God, the bot Lip, in stop. motion stop it's too much he's got he four. fights Zest as well oh man it's fragging once again san francisco don't have too much left so they do not want to be reactive here it's about setting the pace for San Francisco. Kalush tries to do so, but he takes so much damage that it has to be an early commanding shout that only affects him. Rampage gonna catch on a two from Kellum, but Proper is there. Oh my, I don't know how he gets Flora. Severs the Achilles from below, and that's four for Proper. Fantastic blade. Kellum's really a footnote at this point. He can't achieve anything on his own. And San Francisco convert a losing fight in a spawn camp scenario into a huge win. Krong taking a lot of damage Hello, right now. Dead. Cut off from the team, and there's the blade to seal the deal. Double knifing coming in for Krong. Etu Brute. As they will now have Vindane following up on those kills and pushed all the way back to the spawn room again. Wow. This Vin is a soul classic at the moment. Well, man, Lucio popping up on the kill feed just a little bit there. Yeah, Rampage versus Rampage again. Mirrors is pretty big. A counter Rampage from Dante aimed it straight at Mirror. King of Mirror in trouble. Blade pulled from Pelican straight to the back. His fancy footwork looking like Wooks out here. 4K for Pelican. Or well, 5K oh, yeah. in fact. 4K with the Blade. Pelican getting it just a, a random solo kill at the very start of the fight. Ooh, this guy's pretty good. Being rewarded after a steadfast hold on defense, the Toronto Defiant are finally able to break through the Hangzhou Spark and claim the second map of the series. To say it was close may be an understatement. It went down to the wire and the Spark do let it slip, but it got ahead of Toronto, to Toronto rather, for managing to pick up the slack they demonstrated in that first map. Now, they're here to play. Yeah, now this gets interesting, right? Uh, I think Toronto, you gain a whole lot of confidence being able to win that map. Uh, battle through some really tough scenarios, uh, even in a scenario where it didn't look good, right? Where they had about you know, five plus, I think, or you know, a little bit close to five minutes to get that second checkpoint. And we go all the way down to like almost OT, and then they're able to battle out in the end. 
uh, can they win on a Spark map pick? As uh, Spark will pick Route 66, so uh, a little bit more of a, an open area. Maybe it'll punish Hanpa a bit more. You can see how Paraiso makes it a little bit hard at times for Sojourns to, to bring the same value with some of those more open maps, right? Both Finale, Shy, relatively quiet. And like I mentioned a couple of times, this way was you know, at 1.9 and 1, you know, leading his team in those final blows. Definitely being able to have an impact, but really a whole team performance from the Defiant to grind them down. It's going to take more of that again as the Spark are going to look to get their High Flyers in position to pop off. Toronto need to make use of what they have here. Yes, it's been hurried as far as we can tell the reassignments that have occurred on their roster, but it's good enough to get that last map. It's good enough to get them the win here if they can maintain the momentum they've just built. Yeah, and I think you go here if you're the Spark because you can force Hotba to play Winston on a map that can be pretty punishing at times, right? Really long sight lines, uh, no... Uh, ranged healing, I mean, Kariko, but it takes a little bit in terms of travel, uh, where it can punish Hoppa for being in the wrong spot a lot of times, and you trust that you have Gushue. I mean, we saw the stats, this guy basically never dies. Uh, yeah, he has a you know, just fantastic track record on, on Winston being able to live and get out of really difficult situations. So, come here to a map like this and, you know, force force Hoppa to level up, but I will say, it's kind of scary, man. Like, Hoppa, Hoppa's like uh, such a uh, we have no player like him in the league, right? I mean, what, season one, you can think back when he's on Philly, you're seeing him play like Tracer and stuff at times. Like, yep. uh, you know, just the, the, then he goes to New York, he's playing like all the types of tanks, comes in this season, he's picking up main tanks, soft tanks, like whatever, right? I mean, just, uh, just he's so talented, uh, a hot on so many different heroes. He's a talented Overwatch player, really. Absolutely. Real generalist, I guess, now picking up the Winston, which makes a big deal. Gooseway's very much a specialist, right? Banar uh, piloting a lot of yeah. the, the tank play for the Spark up until this point, but Gooseway knows he's just well suited to this kind of metagame. So for Hopper to stand up against him is a big deal. He doesn't need to have the same stats, doesn't need to have the same kill to death ratio. It's about impact. And Hopper's had one so far, make no mistake. This map, though, is going to test your fundamentals when it comes to that dive coordination. Already he's with Hopper, take a little bit of damage as they try and make the dive, Hopper ejects. So they do not get the spark off of the top of Big Girls. They'll actually not be able to move the payload. Okay, now Hopper gets on. He's going to play from a little bit underneath, and Gushra sees some players in the back, thinks he can dive in. Yeah, Shai caught out of the play entirely there. A nice little bubble uh, by Hopper, I think, obscuring his vision. As Gushra tries to cut off the Defiant as they attempt to make a bit of a flank, doesn't work at all. Great way for the Defiant to unravel Hangzhou. Go for Gooseway first. So, that, I mean, that is best case scenario, right? Like, rarely are you able to capitalize on Gooseway, you know, maybe making a, a little bit of an error as Hotba jumps up, fires a shot just to check and then deter them from coming in. But they want to come in, try and contest anyway. Good positioning there from Ho. Oh, it's going to say from Gooseway to stay alive, but. In evading the enemy Reaper, he also tends to evade the objective. And that's a tough one for the Spark now, caught in a position where it's uh, fight or die. And maybe a bit of both will ensue. This match just, you know, you know when you can feel a little bit of silly coming along? Yeah. I feel like this this one's about to get, this match is about to get wild. I feel like we're about to be here for a while. As, uh, right there, the Spark, they decide they want to try and take a fight. They want to they wanna contest. They just get off for a split second. And Toronto is able to, you know, cap that first point four minutes plus in the time bank. Look at this. I mean, they didn't really, it didn't cost them anything to do it. Hoppa can play pretty aggressive. That's going to be Twilight with the Kasuni Look at that. He uses on the rooftop there. Yeah, he knows that everyone's lined up coming out of the tunnel, Max. So he can just spam that choke. Exactly. Yeah. That increased Kunai fire rate makes a big difference, especially if he's connecting headshots. Now, that's not really the story of that last fight. Getting rid of Gushwe again, he's targeted. Again, he's brought down first. Oi. That's why you want to pre-fire that doorway because Shy just rounds the corner and just takes Finale's head off. Yeah. Final available here for Hotba though too. Lots of payload progress. Card not moving right now though. Keep that in mind. Gooshway I think has been able to be the cat amongst the pigeons so to speak and already get rid of Twilight. Now Hopper feels a little bit out of position but getting to pluck Shy out of the mix is a big deal here. The Divine can return to the card yeah. and get it moving once more. And they know Gooshway stuck at the top there and that's going to be the sound barrier from both teams. Is it's only going to connect to three players from the Spark. We need a big primal play. We need it now for the Spark. 
Right now, Gushwe looking to pressure Finale down. Hopper wants to the try and chase. Moving. Yeah. Slowly. Bit of contest now. Gushwe gets away again. And Pineapple brings Finale down. Well, without Super Rich, that hurts a little bit for the Spark, but they have a Katsune Rush here in reserve, and Pineapple can combine with that ultimate, but he goes down! Hisu drops out of absolutely nowhere, and brings him to his knees. Yes, he comes a little bit on a, on a flank where you're not able to see him. The Katsune Rush is dropped by Teru, but they do not see Hisu coming from that backside. With that Death Blossom, comes right in behind the Kuriko. Uses the Reaper ult as Toronto seems to have uh, caught on fire here after map number one. The second point on map number one was so dreadful for the Defiant. Uh, you were like, how do they bounce back in this series? But they're looking strong over these last two thus far. Yeah, well, what's done is a gentle scream starting to turn into a rush of Rapids and Spark are losing their grip on this game. Little by little, it's absolutely happening. Three minutes 50 on the clock for the Toronto Defiant. They command this high ground for now. Despite Gushway's attempts to claim some space, he's been staved off time after time. Shine out trying to make the play again. Overclock in play, and the Defiant aren't around to see much of it here. So Toronto, they decide to back out, so. Gonna hold on for a split second. Gonna Oi. try and get an idea where everybody's at. Oh, Pineapple just uses a rage form right away. Yeah, look at the timing. They use that window to find to come forward with the Katsune Rush. The Spark very quickly grouping up. Super Rich cleverly had that, uh, had that crossfade available to speed them away. The Spark, though, look how much space they've just given up. They're sitting in the back room right now. Shy is so weak. A red sacking their sitting room. Finale getting rid of Shy. There is absolutely huge Shy nullified over the last map and a half. And here comes the Defiant for their last push with three minutes on the clock. A blistering pace. The Spark don't even have a sound barrier to answer this. The Defiant are starting to run away with it. Pineapple trying to stop this somehow with a death loss of at least able to force the Defiant away. And Shy finally gets involved, Matt. I mean, bro, that, that is a must-win scenario. Uh, Route 66 is a difficult map to complete historically. To finish that with like 240 on the clock. Are you gonna light into the Teru zone? Aww. Into the Teru zone. Oh, I, I appreciate the irony here. Hey, He's waiting for a 1v1 or maybe. Okay, no. Ops against it. Just had the opportunity back. to do so, then he backs. Sandal was brewing, that's for sure. Alright. Two minutes and seven. A lot of support on the top here. For a second. <laughs> Gotta give the moment the appropriate gravitas. Huh? Yeah, he knows. He knows his position is uh, <laughs> understood. Yeah, by they the see you there, hard but <laughs> <laughs> that is act that's actually a monkey trying to hide behind a light pole. That same effect. Here comes Gushway and Hopper <laughs> eventually is felled. He can't yeah. stay healthy. He tried to blend in with the uh, he tried to blend in with the ladder in the corner there. It didn't work either. Godzilla trying to hide behind a fire hydrant. It's, uh, two good defenses there from the spark here towards the end of the map. No Katsune Rush from either side. Super Rich has hold on the sound barrier for a bit, so that'll benefit the Spark here later in the round. Uh, can you get Kisu, like, on a flank, possibly? Maybe that's your kind of play? He's been able to do so uh, a few times here on Route 66. Yeah, how I many shadow steps across that gap in order to prevent himself from getting kicked off by Shy, but also to hide his movements. But pretty clear when Reaper comes to play. Kind of announces it. Finale's overclock here. Most of it again trying to be used to nullify Gushway's impact. He though, he's pretty discreet about this. Jumping back to the rest of his team here. Hangzhou disengaged. Well, Gushway takes a ton of damage, and then as he's going back, here's the overclock pop and uses the primal just to make sure he doesn't die during that. DC might have liked the right walk off the back, uh, a rather death loss off the back of the right walk, but wants to think outside the bubble a little bit there as he's forced to play from its extremities. Pineapple runs it down eventually as he's who had no mobility left. Uh, Maybe not the worst thing, though, for the Defiant. Uh, you know, there's just going to be a Death Blossom here. The payload's still very close to completing the map. The Defiant's going to come back with Sound Barrier Primal Death Blossom. Three very strong ultimates uh, you know, combination with each other. So you'll have the Sound Barrier to combat the Death Blossom for Pineapple here. This is so important for Pineapple. He needs to wait out the Sound Barrier or get in before it comes down. 
Ah, uh, I don't know about that one. Shy gets his bell rung there, and Hotman jumps on in. Pineapple at least able to bait out the Death Blossom. Hopper's in Primal right now, and Pineapple's in a bit of a rough spot. If he gets knocked back towards his opponents, he could be dead to rights here. And the flank for Finale is pretty scary. Pineapple surely not going to go for this. He can't. Comes out of Wraith Walk. He's very low in health. Oh. But Finale's down. Shy, he's starting to fire up again. I, I, we got to get a replay of that. I actually believe uh, that could have been a game-changing play there from Gushui. So the sound barrier is going down. I believe Gushui bubbles it, and it actually only hits Chora. Uh, I believe they don't actually get any benefits of that sound barrier. Let's take another look at it. But, uh, you know, that big sound barrier you're talking about where the Defiants were, you know, holding on to that for a little bit. I believe Gushui actually jumps right on top of him, gets it with the bubble, and obviously the, the Winston bubble blocks that line of sight. Uh, it looks like that's why it only connected with, like, you know, I think it was just Charong there in that final moment as, I uh, know that's a huge game-changing play. I mean, that is uh, <laughs> subtle, right? Uh, as we're in the midst of this, you know, pretty intense fight, yeah. but could, could change the whole direction of this entire series. What a moment from Gushui there. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look at it, so. Here's the beat. Comes down. Here comes the bubble. Unreal! The bubble. The yeah, cone of right silence, Matthew! Time. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is so good. Uh, and, and like, it's not a large jump in the air to put the bubble down, right? Because it wouldn't have gone down fast enough. The, the barrier would have actually just kind of been like falling towards the ground. Uh, he actually just, you know, just drops the bubble uh, instantly right over the top of him. I mean, just the reaction time there from Gushui is just sick. Chorong there, a player who has really been out on our radar all season for being incredible in this Lucio role. Absolutely shut down. And the one ultimate the spark we're depending on for victory is not an issue anymore. That's ridiculous. Love to see that from Gushui. All right, the Spark have a chance to back up that showing now on offense. Which again, in fairness, Paraiso, a little bit shaky. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. Let's uh, see how the Spark go about on their offensive side. As I feel like the, the momentum was all Spark early on in the series. It just feels like Toronto is just like flipped this completely. So. He's really low, has to back out, so. Not trying to make a play for the high ground here, this spot. They're almost just kind of like playing this corner, maybe allowing Shy to just get some space. Yeah, they're scaling up their control of this part of the map really slowly. But they have that high ground, right? I think they're the fight you want to sort of re-establish that kind of control. Rushwe, maybe a little bit out of sync for the rest of his team there. Takes a ton of damage, forced the Suzu now. We might see the Defiant drop off and try and punish the Spark from grouping up inside Big Earls here. Finale's rail goes through Shui's way, but Shy. Well, he's found some issue already. Make it to that space that the Spark are trying to create for Shy really start to pay off now. Yeah, is they, they don't want to play that aggressive with that Winston there in that scenario. The way they wanted to play that was, you know, just kind of slowly creep around the corner, right? Exchange damage and then Shy gets around the corner and does what he does, right? Land some big railgun shots. Are they going to be able to even recontest here? So Hoppa gets on, but he takes a huge shotgun shot. Take with Isu, he's really low. That disruption shot, a big play there as well. Hard for Hoppa to reposition when he's slowed down like that. Gushwe, he's lined up Finale. He's going to be in trouble as well. Hunter putting it together really nicely in the last couple of moments. Pineapple being the man at the door there. Couldn't ask for a better person to fill that role. I think already a headshot at close range on Hoppa before he gets to peek out at all. Yes, I mean, well, Hotba has to do like a, you ever been in that situation where you're Winston, right? And you kind of can't get like the full leap. Like he kind of has to leap, his head almost like hits the, the ceiling and then kind of like just ends up uh, coming straight down right on top of the card. Like he, he has to do that type of you know, leap right out basically into the shotgun shells. It's a finale, just gets dope from there right at the top. I mean, this is the spot that we saw Twilight in, right? Where he was able to sit up here on the high ground. But, so, like, well, you have to use Primal Rage just to get out of that spawn door. It's uh, not the ideal scenario, but you feel like it's uh, one you have to fight here if you're the Defiant. Classy stuff from Hoppa. He mechanically more than proficient there on the Winston able to get away. Getting that jump reset after the Primal Rage. Pretty important that the Defiant want to keep the stage ground here in this second phase of the map, but they have been forced to par with much of this real estate. Pineapple can't do much out of the open right now. He needs to wait for his team to close the gap. Yeah, make a shadow step to the high ground here. 
The boot might have been there from Chong, but a little bit premature. He's just not in a great position to find much more than Shy, but that might be the difference maker anyway. I think Super has sent him careening in a different direction, but he got what he came for. He got the Sojourn. The Defiant are able to capitalize. Uh, Reaper, you know, he's too, uh, from Pineapple's POV with the Death Blossom through the air. It looked like a, a Reaper helicopter just flying on by. It's, uh, looks like it was just like a boot, possibly, from Super, which sent him up in the air, but still good enough for the Defiant to get a hold. Uh, interesting from the spark, they actually, you know, Gushui jumps up with a TP the same time as Pineapple. Teru swift steps to them and then drops a Cassini Rush, like, on the ramp. And Twilight just answers with his own. Uh, so, kind of can use a lot of your movement abilities to get up in that position for really uh, nothing you can actually fight out of. Oh my goodness, what is this? Chorong sound barrier, not enough there. Is the Defiant actually filtered themselves into this corridor? Shine knew they were coming too. He throws down. Uh, he throws down the disruptor shot like a bag of dung lit on fire on a doorstep. So the Spark can now sort of regroup up here and a sound barrier committed to that. The Defiant had a clear plan. That's obvious. But oh, Finale. Like a, Hello. a long way from Modern Hello. Warfare 2 spawn camp. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a little bit, I uh, know, in the Teru zone, I would say. Is, uh, he he's he's going to slide. He's actually going to get out. I think. Oh yeah, he's going to make it. That's, 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 that's crazy. Oh, my goodness. And he gets a kill out of it. Absolutely ridiculous. Finale what? grabs down the disruptor shot. Pineapple doesn't quite know where he is, but Goose right now is on the rampage. Finale and Twilight get their heads knocked together. And the spark, despite those hijinks, or having to take advantage here in this fight with Heesu out of the picture, you have to think they're looking to get this checkpoint here with a minute 46 on the clock. So you still have Hanfa there. Uh, yeah, you're not going to use Primal. Not going to try and fight that. I, I will say, though, th this has been a good offense from the Spark. I still think this is going to be really difficult to do. I mean, you essentially have to get a full map completion, which is really hard on this map, especially with how close that defender spawn is there towards the end. Uh, even even three minutes plus is like really difficult to complete this map on. So if you're the Defiant, you're probably like, you know what, we're not gonna hold here on checkpoint B. Let's just try and save some ultimates and then fight again. Kuzui has been tracked constantly. It's so hard for him to do what he's been doing over the last couple of matches. You see the Defiant see him slightly out of position, maybe make a beeline for him. They do expend the Katsune Rush in order to win that fight, but they're more than happy to solidify their positions here up on this high uh, ground. Yeah, you, you invest early here, right? If you're the Defiant, keep the payload at this corner, and you start to dwindle some of this clock down, right? A minute 30 kind of creeps up soon here for the Spark. You know, this fight's going to probably kind of either kick off around then or end around then. Uh, and if you're in this spot, you're in a position where you have there to use these ultimates. Same time again, I mean, that is a sick pickoff there right at the start. Just a double ping right around the corner. Pineapple forced the right walk here, and they are not giving up the chase here. Super Rich falling as well. Hisu realizes he's playing inside close confines and goes for the ultimate. Just a Lucio, though. Looks like the Spark can probably bounce back from this, but Teru reluctant to go for Katsune Rush here. Just wanted to patch up some of these wounds. No, and this is what I was talking about. Like, you're, you're going to get exactly to that minute and 30. And you're forced to use these ultimates in this type of situation. Long flank from Finale. Very long one. Can he get into the fight in time to make a difference? Headshot on Gushu as he tries to return. Turns his head towards the soldier and flanking him. Pineapple is happy to commit the whole ultimate to get rid of Finale. Hopper now is in deep trouble. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to hide. The Hunter is fucked now with more than a minute. And within striking distance of this third map. See, I don't feel like you needed to invest some ultimates there if you're the Defiant. Like, the, you, you could have held on and fought here at the end with those ultimates because you need a map completion. Now you give them Primal, Sound Barrier, and an Overclock to get it done. This was Primal Wage is going to make it a nightmare for the Defiant to actually get in position to adequately defend an inside spawn finale. It's put to bed, doesn't even set foot outside of his house. And the Hangzhou Spark snatch away Route 66. Oh, it's another hard fought one. Make no mistake, but Shy comes out with 19 final blows and eight deaths, just going monster mode in that second half. It, and I feel like that is one where the Defiant, you'll go back and rewatch that, and you'll you'll wish you had played it a different way. Uh, in that type of position, it's so difficult to complete this map. You have some ultimates here. You don't need to kind of get in that position where you trade, right? You need to get the Spark to deplete their ultimate reserve, then come back and fight again. You know, right at that final point, 
They end up using everything and then nothing to fight at the end with. It ends up burning them. Hangzhou coming alive. Key moment there towards the end of that map. This is definitely the kind of series where the fatigue is going to set in. So who at last sees the Toronto Defiant must win the next map to stay alive in this elimination match. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this final elimination match for the day at the Overwatch League 2022 playoffs. And let's highlight Teru there. A key component, I'd like to say, of the Sparks' success. Have a look at this, eight final blows. Some of the most unlikely eliminations, final blows in situations you just don't expect. Teru is delivering, really showing his both sides of the coin when it comes to what Kiriko offers offensively. 
Dude, he has been sick on this hero, as uh, we've seen multiple ways, I think. Players have uh, adapted and played Karika uh, throughout the playoffs thus far. Uh, Teru, we just see he gets right up in the mix. I mean, no fear from him. Uh, I think back to uh, Paraiso, right? When he uh, TP'd up to the high ground, just two shot at Finale, and you know, the Katsuna rush right after it. Uh, just such an aggressive style of play on the hero. It's really fun to watch. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a play style that looks kind of risky on the outside. But of course, with Swift Step available, perhaps it's much safer than we realize at first glance here as Terry's quite often sort of rejoining the rest of his team. I will say, Goose Ray is getting harder and harder to keep alive because the Toronto Defiant, with their season on the line, are starting to zero in on this Winston threat, Matthew. He has a much quieter map. Fortunately for the Spark, Shy comes alive again, as only Shy does. Getting most, most of his final blows in like the last couple of fights, they're really turning up. Yeah, they're just, uh, the Spark, I feel like, are just such an explosive team. Uh, I know at, at any moment, Gushue, uh, Shy, Teru can come up with these like crazy game-saving plays. Uh, I do feel like, though, looking back at that map, like Toronto had a really good chance to win that. Like that map could have gone either way. Uh, as we go into push, uh, you know, the, the team that wins the first fight and gets, uh, you know, the, the bot always has a pretty good uh, advantage. I believe the team that actually uh, you know, caps that first checkpoint, uh, the, the team that does it first. So we get a, you know, Terror doing a little flex there. Uh, team that caps that first checkpoint has above a 70% win rate of the entire map. Uh, so really crucial to get that first checkpoint. It's kind close of to like 80, or was before the Yeah, playoffs. it was it was extremely high. Whether that's changed or not remains to be seen. But Esperanza, of course, is the Toronto Defiance map pick their last chance to select a battlefield to stay alive. And like, circling back maybe to the Kiriko conversation, right? In almost every metric, almost every stat, uh, Teru is outdoing Twilight by a very large amount. More than double the final blows per 10. Uh, more healing, way more damage uh, by like a factor of, I mean, like by 33%. So pretty considerable here. Squeezing every last ounce of utility and impact out of Kiriko, especially when so many players are still getting to grips with her, is extremely important. Because in a match that's this close, Matt, it's the little things that make a huge difference. And, and I also feel like from the support position, like the extra damage is so important, right? Like Lucio, Lucio does a, a, a reasonable amount of damage, right? Uh, it's why you don't see like any mercy really in kind of, even even in ranked, right? Like uh, not a ton because there's no real damage output, can amp damage, but no like actual damage output from that role where Kariko, I think is really feast or famine in terms of damage, right? Because you need to land the headshots to be able to do so. Yeah, and with Winston Bubbles often getting in the way, you don't feel like you can really break through them. You have to go around them. 40 damage from just like a standard non-headshot, uh, you know, kunai feels terrible. You're not going to sit there trying to throw them out to break a Winston bubble. You're going to get around it. You're going to try and you know, get more aggressive and get towards your target. So, you know, finding value despite those obstructions quite often being play is going to be important. And like you said, Matt, the first checkpoint well, on these push maps is so critical. Yeah, and that's, that was not great if you're a Spark fan. Uh, one in four. Uh, I think uh, one in five uh, in terms of your uh, push map record in tournament play. Uh, not ideal. And they can subvert the history books here. Keep themselves alive. Not a great start. Finale's having a pin shot to the masonry. Uh, the bot will be in favor of the Toronto Defiant first. Is uh, they kind of like wrapped around here. So really odd uh, spot for the fight to be kicking off. Uh, hey, Spark, they're, they're going the other way. Yeah. We're uh, not done yet. Keep put. <laughs> it's really easy for the bot to get away from you on this map as well. Yeah. Off, especially when uh, the bot's retreading ground it's already been on. Uh, to get away from you real quick. So Spark have to try and find some success here. In a very weird fight, but Shai is able to get into the pocket. Chorong maybe none the wiser there is that bubble just comes up to save Hopper's life in time. Shai tries to throw down a disruptor shot to protect any himself from any would-be pursuers, but doesn't pay off. Still, the Spark get somewhat of a stalemate, which is broken now as Finale's brought down by Teru. They can start to make some progress. 
And that kill by Toru is huge, right? Because if you still have the Reaper and whatnot in the mix and you can play around there on the bot, maybe you can kind of keep it at least in a position, maybe middle of the map, right? Falling back a little bit, making it a little bit difficult on Gushui to push up. Hello. But those kills by Teru have proven to be impactful. Still, Andre Spark behind in terms of that progress. So getting past this bridge stroke gonna be absolutely crucial. Gonna have a sound barrier coming into it. They have both support ultimates up before the Defiant gets there's ready. But a primal rage comes out instantly, and again Finale finds a crucial kill. He's stepping up to Shy. Another big early pick. And you can see how difficult it is to like level change. The, the fight's still going on. Here we get to really high on that wall climb. Then a swift step is he's trying his hardest to stay alive. But when we watch it from Shy's perspective, uh, it, it can be very difficult in shooter games to like look directly up and then have another target that's like off of your screen. Because he's looking up at Hotba and Finale's not even in his like camera shot, right? Uh, from the first person POV. And that's a shot that Finale is really kind of like unanswered to not have to worry about any damage being returned and just line it up, knock it down. And this verticality of the map often allows you to play outside of your opposing soldier and skill with you. Makes a big difference. They like, can't really course correct quickly enough. There's no bubble there for Hotba. Not one. The fight now quickly having to get this ground up. Soon as you saw Hoppa take like a shot, the overclock was popped. Yeah, you knew he was a goner. Uh, so that is just too much damage to take uh, before that impact goes down. But the Defiant get ever closer towards that checkpoint. I was talking about how important it is to get that checkpoint first. Starting to wonder if there's anything Finale can't do when it comes to the DPS. He's really standing up now, matching Shai's impact, if not exceeding it so far. One of the key reasons the Defiant are still operating from a position of power here on Esperanza. He's shooting out of the high ground. Looks like that'll be hotly contested as he opts to drop off here. The Spark aren't done trying to progress here. We'll see an overclock from Finale. What can he do here? Can he command his high ground position? It looks like the Spark again backing up. Yeah, he connects with Shai, he connects with Gushui a little bit earlier, but... Oh, I was going to say, not enough to finish off a kill, but he's actually going to take Shai out. Now you can go if you're the Defiant, and this may result in that first checkpoint. Finale accounting for 5 of 7 of the Defiant's final blows so far. So good, aim has been crisp. Can he continue it now? That bot is getting awful close, and remember that first checkpoint's a key metric. in determining success for these teams. Gonna have roads laid down by both Kirito's here. He's trying to benefit from the fire rate increase, and it pays off brilliantly. Terror goes up and a puff of smoke and the Defiant run over the spot. Yes, uh, this will be the first checkpoint taken from the Defiant. So that is huge. Okay, mentioned the first checkpoint really dictates uh, you know, how often these teams you know, win and push. Is it is a huge indicator. If you're able to get that first checkpoint, you have a fantastic opportunity to win the map. Sightline's initially going to favor the defenders here as Shai can peel towards that left-hand side. Get a decent off angle. But the Defiant quickly want to move up here, take that space away. Gooseway trying to thwart this particular endeavor. And again, whoa, double jump over the top. I don't know if they expect him to come from this direction. Finale under a heck of a lot of pressure, but Gooseway's lost that extra health from Primal. The Defiant wisely opt to back away, but now they're playing inside an enclosed space. I think the Defiants are fine taking these types of fights, Mitch, because they have such an advantage in terms of push that, that they don't have to be the team that kind of like runs in and makes a play. It's Finale with another one. And Finale is that guy right now, Matt. What a step up from him. Getting rid of Pineapple is big, but there's no Reapers to play right now. Shy at least able to reciprocate the efforts of Finale and still the Spark opting to give up ground. They are being forced back. Quite the ferocious approach from the Defiant, but they may have to respect this. Shai's overclock will force them to turn tail. Yeah, they have to. I mean, it's the, the only thing you can do is actually Finale. They, they push up a little bit. He actually pops his overclock. He's so weak though, and he's now lost Twilight. Twilight was hiding behind enemy lines, hoping to make a flank with Pineapple's able to sniff him out. Get rid of that would-be flanker. That's the Defiant's plans now. Starting to crumble away. Turong's unlikely to get away with this. Pineapple's gonna bring him down to the Spark. Need to find that first checkpoint themselves. They need to get on even footing. Still a long way to go though, to be able to match this progress here from the Defiant early on. Is you're gonna have both support ultimates here for the Spark. Uh, you're gonna get close to that Death Blossom. So see if they're able to execute as he who TPs to that high ground, then just gets knocked right down. Disruptor shot through the choke. So not gonna be able to move through there either. Hopper fainted there and forced 
shy to slide away. A lot of respect being offered to the Winston right now. Chorong is in Pineapple's sights. And the Pink Brick Road is going to be what the Spark used to get himself in striking position. Gooseway finds his second gear. Spark winning multiple fights in a row is a big deal, especially with the tuna rush being used by Twilight here. Death Lost is scary though. Super Rich gets caught inside that storm, but Pineapple's got one of his own. Hopper has to run away. Not much he can do from here. Now out of position, trying to get back to his team or what's left of it. Yeah, and what the Defiant were trying to do there, Mitch, is they were actually trying to use that Primal and that Death Blossom to get Super Rich to use that sound barrier. Because if you remember, like, the first kill in that fight is Chorong. So he's out of that fight for an extended period. Uh, if you can get that sound barrier out from Super Rich, you can come right back if you're the Defiant have that sound barrier advantage, but they're not able to do so. And look at this. They haven't taken that first checkpoint yet. The disruptor shot for Shy going a little more left than I thought it would be, but Finale picked off early. Shy now doesn't need to worry too much about the threat of Hopper. Yeah, not much he can do except float above the carnage. And the Spark get that first checkpoint themselves now. Putting himself again closer to being within striking distance of the Defiant's total. 85 plays 53. Uh, this is not looking good for the Defiant. It's a few fights lost in a row. It seems like the Spark's starting to come to life here. Is this next fight? And what? You're going to be very close to tying this game. As Hoppa drops down, he's got to be real careful. Yeah, that's going to get gonna armor ripped right off. And that's some space given up there already. Hunter, all they had to do was turn and look at the Winston. Finale needs to be the guy once more to step up, if I'm not mistaken. So far, 7 and 5. Final blows to death. Uh, I think both teams are going to play for their Kariko ults here. Like, just kind of like. Yeah, you see, just letting, letting Twilight just gain that healing. Yep. Farm the healing up. You see no damage going down uh, for the Defiant, not giving an opportunity really for Teru to get it fast. As now some damage goes down from Teru as he's got this ultimate. Let's see how both of them decide to play now. Twilight this is what both teams have been waiting for. This both could decide the game. They're so cagey right now. This fight could allow the Spark to blow the Defiant out. They're the ones in possession of the bot right now, playing around this choke so carefully. Both teams are searching for an opening. He seems he's fighting on that corner. Disruptor shot. Yeah. Good damage to Gushway as he goes in. Here it comes, the road is out. Gushway back to his back line here. Terror caught amidst the fighting as the spark very quickly back away. Gushway took too much damage, and now that a fighter in the position to strike at them. They're going to charge forward. Super Rich evading certain doom. This finale can't finish the job. The Spark with five, had to regroup. Finale's in trouble. Low ground disadvantage is plaguing him there, but he's kept alive. Yeah, 40 seconds on the clock, but the Defiant did move the bot a little bit further back towards that middle of the map. So they give themselves a little bit of a cushion here to Prime. now fight it. Hopper's going to let the one go straight away, and there it is. Finale steps up. Gooseway is down. Pineapple's very close to a death blossom, though. He might try and salvage the situation, but this is bad like for Hunt Joe. I like this for Toronto, though. Uh, who cares if they're up here on the bridge on this high ground? Just get the bot moving the other way. The sound barrier this. Unreal Shark doesn't benefit from it either, so Hopper descends upon him now. Super Rich doubles back, but Pineapple's brought down again. Finale finds another key kill. Five seconds left in the round, and the Spark are falling apart. He suits his go dancing his way forwards as they know their prize is within reach. Gooseway Force for a primal rage here, and it definitely seems an attempt in vain to keep this game going. We're in overtime, but the Defiant have the players. Gooseway barely touches the ground before being dispatched. And now it'll be trickle in here. The Spark realized they've let this, this one get too far now. out of hand, but Shy, he's alive. Oh, no. Thinks he goes down, it's gonna be the overclock from Shy. He's gonna have to find more though. Playing safe around the corner. Sees Chorn, but Hopper's a more pertinent threat at present. He takes a hit himself now and has to respect Finale, who again comes alive. This man can do it all, and the Defiant stay alive. So, we got a game five here between the Spark and the Defiant. One map to decide the seasons for these teams. One will keep playing, one will go home. And I tell you what, Toronto, they looked pretty good on Route 66, even in that loss. And then here, obviously, they take it. They look really good. The decision making, very smart there towards the end. A lot of the momentum sits with the Defiant. Finale dusts off his hands and pulls off the deadlift. Unbelievable 13 of. If I'm not mistaken, 25 final blows for the Defiant. Unbelievable performances. Now their fate rests in their own hands. Toronto versus Hangzhou goes to a map five.
to find can surge forward once more just to keep him up and alive or muse with a punch <gasps> this is that was close okay power there was no power oh, oh no no i can't do this another one falls to muse hisu massive play at the very end to clutch the round oh, oh. That's not <laughs> Valentine draws the blade, but it's him that needs an ambulance in the end. Harper, the commanding shell, now wants to back out. Oh! oh that's a big one. The Toronto Defiant take the W. Go. In their hour of greatest need, the Toronto Defiant find the finale has answered the call. 13 final blows out of 23 for five deaths. He takes over Esperanza and puts the Defiant in a position to have a say in the result of this match. That's right, they've taken us to a tiebreaker. And with the way, uh, obviously, the uh, game on Route 66 goes to Sparks' favor, but if you kind of like just look at that final point, like on the defense, like the, the, the Defiant had an opportunity to win that. Uh, no, I think they just kind of like played the ultimate game a little bit wrong there. Uh, push though that they were fantastic able to get that checkpoint first like we talked about a huge thing uh, in push to really kind of signify if you're going to win or lose the game uh, they're able to do that first finale able to match shy in that sojourn battle they push us to a game five uh, in th this series which i don't think anybody really expected well this is it no second chances no redos no takesy backseats Oh, the hey. Spark have made the move to bring Alpha Yi back into the lineup in this decider map. It's all on the line for this team, and they have put their hopes on this man's shoulders returning, presumably, to the Reaper role. Right, we, we've seen Alpha Yi uh, throughout this tournament. They decided to play Pineapple today, which we were a little bit kind of caught off guard as uh, maybe they thought Alpha Yi wasn't the answer, but then I mean, this is such a hard situation to bring him back into. Uh, what, he finds out today, like, hey, you're not going to start, we're going to play Pineapple. And then just, oh, game game five, season on the line. Like, ah, oh, you know what, uh, why don't you get back in there? Uh, I mean, just <laughs> just be able to get in there and play in that position so difficult. Uh, you see everybody in the spark trying to regain, trying to refocus. Teetotaling super rich here, trying to find a moment of solace amidst the churn. But this is the business of esports. This is the business of the Overwatch League. In times like this, when it's all on the line, you've got to dig deep and you've got to leave it all out there. Both teams preparing themselves now for Lee Jung Tower, the last map in this series. And I mean, goodness, we really were high on the Hangzhou Spark coming into this series. We said the Toronto Defiant looked, they looked a little bit sloppy. And then, Toronto come in with these changes, right? They put Finale in the Sojourn position. It's Hotbar coming in instead of Muse. And they turn up. They give as good as they get in this series. And the Hangzhou Spark found themselves on the back foot pretty darn quickly in this match. That's it. None of that matters now, Matthew. One more map to decide it. One of these teams advances in the lower bracket. The other will go home. And if you think back to game one uh, in this series, the control, uh, the Defiant, uh, in the, it was kind of even in that first round. The second round, they got blown out. Uh, but I feel like they've looked much better. They started to kind of come into their own. Uh, I know with some of these changes and substitutions they've had in the series thus far, I, I do think you're going to see that same Defiant from map one in this one. I think you're going to see them kind of continue this strong play. It's uh, hot for starting to figure things out on the Winston. Absolutely. And the Defiant start to figure out how to unravel Gushway. In many of these fights, he's being forced back very early. They snap to attention and they answer the threat of the monkey in their front line. And all eyes now are on Alpha Yi. It is going to be the Reaper as he's brought in. Spotlight on him now to stand tall and get his team across the line. TP straight across here at the start. You're going to have a little bit of an advantage for the Spark and now a big one as Shy will take out Hisu's. And without that Reaper, you see they start to back up right away. Nothing they can do. Gushway postures really oh. aggressively at the start of that fight. He takes a ton of damage, but it pays off. Shy has the room to move. The, the kill happens so fast, though. 
that it like the point doesn't even open up yet. So you can actually kind of like push in a little bit here. If you're the Molly. defiant, flip this fast. How does he find a melee here? I have no idea. He's <laughs> out the corner. He's like his arm just bends. And they only get 9%. So I mean, that first kill happened so fast. Uh, you, you weren't able to actually get like a huge percentage on the points or even stabilize, really. I don't know, man. I'm feeling the Toronto Defiant. They've got a fire in their bellies right now. Twilight getting into Valkyrie you there. While the Defiant already were in a strong position, now they look to solidify it. It's kind of wild, right? 9% is all Hangzhou come away with, despite finding such a crucial pick at the start of that fight. Got to be frustrating now as they look to find a way to get back in. Oh, look at the advantage in terms of support ults here for the Defiant as well. They can start to rack up some serious percentage. Try again. Decent angle here for long range play, but look at this. Hotbar surges forward straight away. The Spark are the ones that are giving a lot of this ground here, but Hisu extends too far into the firing line, and Alpha brings him down. Now, advantage for the Hangzhou Spark. They look to try and exploit it. Disrupt the shot's going to slow them down for a moment, but off to the point they go. Dutrey goes in over the top. That's an overclock from Finale. Shy holding on to his for the time being as sound barriers apply. Toronto are using all of their ultimates here to try and hold onto the point, but Chorong is still going to be brought down. Alfie now draws a bead on Hotbar, looking to bring the Winston down, but Shy gets him first. Now he's just trying to hang on. The Defiant spent everything and still lose. Both teams dump just about everything into that one, though. So, uh, Gushway to finish off the Nolly. Hits uh, right up. Finishes up with a right click. Primal and Overclock still available from the Spark. So, you know what it was interesting this turn? Right at the beginning, when Hisu actually gets uh, killed by Alpha Yi, it looks like he uses the Wraith form, uh, but then cancels out of it. Maybe he thinks he's actually like kind of safe, or there's a bubble going down, and Alpha Yi's not there, but gets get killed instantly, so not great timing there from Hisu. And a rough one for the Defiant, but they build such a nice lead early here. To be fairly conservative as they make their approach here, but Primal from Gushway, this has definitely got to elicit a response from them now. What do they do with Hisu? Okay, Finale able to find Alpha Geek, crucial Chorong out of the picture though, and the Death Blossom from Hisu gets cut short by Shy, who pops off there, fighting two off the overclock, and the Spark will extend their lead. <laughs> Shy is just always able to nail some of these shots on the Sojourn. And that's three in that fight for him to secure the point. They'll now end up taking the lead off of the back of that, but Twilight got did a lot of work in that fight, Mitch. He's gonna have this Kasuni Rush right away. And I and I wonder if they, they have an idea because you know it's just been one fight since he's seen it last. They have an idea where Teru's at. This is a really fast build-up. Twilight lays the groundwork here for a successful fight by the Defiant. The Spark are out of it. Everybody though. disappears, yeah. Where do they come back in is the question. Alpha Yi is not able to get away with the rest of his team. Joron catches him out there. And the Spark will play this advantage and definitely, definitely not going to be able to get much done here. Teru has to Suzu himself. Now draws the attention of Finale. The Spark getting bundled out of here unceremoniously. Teru Shy are really low. It's going to be a primal rage from Hotba. Now he's just trying to get back to the rest of the team. Doesn't need to force the issue. 90% for the Spark. You're going to get up to about that now if you're the Defiant. Double support ult here for Hangzhou. you got to have a big sound barrier here for the Defiant, and then also Finale to lay out some shots at the overclock. Tune rush here for the Spark. They extend forward now. Finale having to play pretty close. A sound barrier giving some measure of confidence to the Defiant. He'll play safe around the pillar, but the points flip and Finale now has to back away. Shy catches him in midair. Now the Spark has the advantage and they're ticking up. 97 and counting, but who's from the Defiant is going to be able to stand up here? Pisu has to turn tail and break walk and play around the point, but Chorong is brought down and that overtime, it ticks away. And the Spark have an early lead. <laughs> they're not able to touch as that's as close of an opening round as we could have there is just seemed like the the spark were able to you know always have that double support alt combo and the defiant they needed to use one of them to get the point back they kind of only had the other and eventually you know you're just going to lose out in that game of sustain right with not having that extra support alt in the mix but look at how these last few moments went this is shy with a big shutdown Right around the corner. <laughs> oh, that is filthy. And awareness to know he doesn't need a fully charged rail to guarantee the kill. He doesn't have to wait for that to build up. He just goes for it. Impressive round. 8-1 for Shy. 
What a time to come alive! So, the spark will take the side of the point first. Uh, it won't kind of like play this dance over by the stairs, so I'll actually just kind of play from the point. Now that they kind of flip sides here. Hopper, reposition there as Alfie is kind of in the midst of it, but he's able to take the Winston down. Finale, though, from a safe position, really getting work done. Teru now a non factor in this fight. Shai wants to hang around and maybe try and turn this. Chorong has fallen, he knows where he's just going to come from. Great walk is available, but where does he go? Moved away, protection Suzu, and there's Finale chiming in once more. Hopper returns to the fray, and the Defiant have the numbers. Hello. Finale has stepped up big time in this series. I mean, how many sojourns in the league he go toe to toe with Shai? That he is he is taking it to another level on the hero as of late is uh, Alfie with the TP straight across as Alfie Going comes in here for game five as bubble down, down move up a little bit for the spark trying to take some space moving their way back towards the point try now has a better sideline and finale trying to play an off angle of his own is punished for that the spark paves the way they get on in there with a disrupt the shot and they make full use of that real estate Twilight there trying to slap back against Shy. He's a scary threat to be sure. Shy though plays it safe. I mean, he's a he's a beast. I mean, we I just talked about Finale and he just comes right around the corner and you know, he reminds him <laughs> like can't play can't play that uh you know free and loose against him. You see even Finale here trying to like get some damage on the choke just takes a ton of shots and Shy with a headshot on Ahisu before things even begin. So. This is dangerous because you know, coming through the choke against a soldier at this level, right? Uh, it, it almost feels like Shy is bound to kill one every single time. You always feel fortunate if you're able to make it in. And he has done that, man. 11 final blows, two dance. Teru trying to fight through this choke. Very oppressive against this long range kind of pressure. The Defiant have no choice but to wait. They need their key piece in this fight. Sort of the shots gonna slow them down as they try and move through as well, just make them easier targets. They have the consumer rush just to make it. Teru uses it at the very least, but he goes down. What does the spark do with this now? They have a bit of a lead to work. The Gisu's cut down. Alpha is able to use the death blossom inside that. That's ridiculous. Making use of the perish Teru's ultimate. And he punishes the defiant once more. Now you're up against the wall, Toronto. They need to figure this out. Both teams using a lot of ultimates, and it's going to come down to Finale's overclock. Yeah, it's the thing that ends up saving Alfie there. It's the sound barrier from Super Rich. His sound barrier connects, and it's good enough to keep him alive as... Twilight on a little bit of a flank. Drive low. Twilight loses himself now, able to stay alive. Usher his team forward, but Hopper takes a face ball. It's Finale's overclock. This is what we were foreshadowing. A dearth of targets, though. They get the them off the point. Seed. Yeah, they get them off the point. That's massive. Just buys them some space. Now it forces the Spark to be the team that's running into this fully charged Sojourn. Okay, the Spark regained this right-hand side of the map, right? The close quarters area is there. Shy has to get away from Hoppa, who will not give up the chase. Try to charge up those Suzu employed. Looking for an insta-kill here. It's an awkward angle for the Sojourn to play with. Now he swings out and Twilight is put to bed. Not a great start here with the Defiant able to flip the point back. It may not matter though. The Spark come charging straight back in. It's easy to try and throw a spanner in the works, but he's unable to get much done. Just the one kill. And here it is. This will be the last fight for the Toronto Defiant. And they all end here. And who is going to be able to touch? It looks like Finale on the side here with Twilight. They're going to be the ones that have to get, to get on the point. He's, he's on his own. Touch. He gets surrounded. Finale tries to go for the Gambit, but it blows up in his face. Four players left for Toronto now. What can they get done? Toronto taking a lot of damage. He needs to get that sound barrier online. He stays alive, but can't keep hot for standing. Here comes out for you. The Death Blossom might seal the deal. It's Shy finding two and another. Finale falling as well, and the man of the moment comes alive. He's anything but. As the Hangzhou Sparks stay alive in this lower bracket, finally vanquishing the Defiant, who live up to their name in more ways than one. That is such a close back and forth series. The Spark just own control at the front and the back. So uh, they got a feel for the Defiant players. They had a, a very good season.
tremendous run at their own homestand, but in the overall season playoffs, they fall just a bit short. But if I had made sure they were close to every major event in the West in the Overwatch League, Hangzhou really had their ups and downs, but no one can argue that the time is right for this team. Shy, 20 final blows, two deaths on Li Zhang Tower. Should be clear that that's a deadlift, but what a moment for him. Finale keeping him under the thumb every other map, having to adapt to a new threat from the Toronto Defiant. But the spark, they strike gold at a key moment. This team is electrifying. Ooh. And I I think if you are, like, if you are some of the other teams in this tournament, you are probably rooting so hard for the Defiant there at the end uh, just to get this Spark team out of here because they, they look so scary and dangerous. I mean, Shy is, like, deadlift in every other map. Gu Shui is tremendous on the Winston. Teru's causing so many problems on the Kariko. Uh, th this is a team that I don't think anybody wants to see in the loser bracket uh, just because... Their players have so much pop-off potential that, uh, you know, all the, you're playing the right way, you're doing everything. All of a sudden, Shy pops an overclock, kills four people. Uh, I mean, it, it's so difficult and, and crazy to game plan against and play against. Uh, it, it's scary for a lot of the teams still in the field that Spark are still in. Yeah, we, we labeled him as a dark horse threat. But we've got a hand of the Defiant. We didn't expect them to put up such an incredible fight. True. That team who's had to adapt on the fly extremely quickly with some big changes to the team. But let's talk player of the match. Should be pretty darn obvious. With two deadlifts across the course of the series, the player of the match is none other than Shy. What a player. What a talent. I mean, some player, he just did not want to go home today, regardless of... Uh, who the opponent was, he was going to come in and just put on a show. It feels like every time with the overclock, I mean, dude, headshots like crazy, man. And like, look at this. I mean, he's being juggled by a Winston and just nails the headshot. Like, it just makes it look so easy. When you have a Sojourn player that's this good, you get Gushley on that Winston. I mean, the, the sky really is the limit for this team. I mean, this is going to go down, I think, is one of the most intense playoff matches we've seen in, in quite some time. The, the pure amount of grit and determination that gets displayed by both these teams. Shy wasn't on, he wasn't popping off every map. He definitely had some quiet ones. But you end with a series with north of 13 final blows per 10, those charge shot kills as well. So crucial. Both Sojourns had, you know, upwards of 66% accuracy for the most part with those charge shots. They were taking a real front runner's role in this series. And let's not forget, I mean, if you're Alpha you right now, you're breathing a sigh of relief. You sure. come in, in that map five, and you're expected to deliver just add water, and deliver he did, man. And, and I gotta say as well, like, the thing that Im impresses me the most about Shy is that, uh, you know, you see these performances from him in the biggest moments, right? In the biggest games against the toughest opponents. Uh, you know, not beating up on everybody in the regular season in the seeding, right? And then, you know, coming here, coming to a tournament and just kind of, you know, not having those like big game changing performances, like doing this in the biggest moments against the best teams we have in the league. Uh, that's what I love about it. Uh, it. It does not seem like there is a fight he will not take, uh, a battle he does not think he can win. Uh, you just love seeing that type of play. There's never been a better time to be a fan of Overwatch Esports, one of our most competitive oh, yeah. playoffs of all time. And what a way to cap off the day of games. We're not done, of course. We're going to head over to the crew down in Anaheim to cap today off. Incredible stuff. We'll, of course, see you later for more playoff action. But for now, take care. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Butterfinger. Crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery. No one lays a finger on your Butterfinger.
Welcome to Watchpoint Post Show, everybody. Danny Lim here, joined by Taro from Hangzhou Spark. Taro, congratulations on the win. I want to start off this interview by just asking you, uh, because we saw something interesting today. Uh, unlike the previous two matches where Alpha E uh, came into the lineup playing the Reaper, today we saw something different. We saw Pineapple play the Reaper for the team, and then Alpha E joining it towards the end of the match. So, what was the reason for having Pineapple play over Alpha E? 자 오늘 승리를 축하 드리면서 테로 선수 오늘 첫 번째 질문 일단 어 저번 두 경기에 비해서 오늘 되게 좀 특별했던 게 아무래도 딜러진이 아닌가 싶습니다. 이제 어, 알파 알파이 선수가 이제 리퍼를 항상 이렇게 쭉 하, 어, 해오는 모습을 보여주다가 오늘 파인애플 선수가 교체가 되면서 파인애플 선수 쭉 하다가 끝에 가서 알파이 선수, 알파이 선수와 다시 들어오게 되셨는데요. 이 파인애플 선수가 오늘 급하게 투여된 이유가 있다면 뭐가 있을까요? 어 일단은 저희가 델러스전에서 첫 패배를 겪어봤기 때문에 약간 한기성 플레이도 있고 이제 알파이 선수랑 파인애플 선수가 좀 스타일이 다르다 보니까 이렇게 기억된 것 같습니다. 그리고 뭐 주인공은 일단 마지막에 등장하는 거기 때문에 알파이가 딱 등장해서 이겼던 것 같습니다. 그 처음에 달라스랑 지고 난 후에 뭐라고 하시죠? 죄송합니다. 한번더 말씀해 주실 수 있을까요? 어, 그 달라스전에서 진 이후에 이제 환기성 플레이로 기용한 것 같고요. 이제 파인애플이랑 알파이 선수가 그 스타일이 다르기 때문에 이렇게 네 기용한 것 같고 알파이가 워낙 잘하다 보니까 주인공은 이제 마지막에 등장하는 법이니까 와서 캐리하고 간것 같습니다. 알파이. 네, 알겠어. Alright, sorry guys. That took uh, took uh, quite a bit of long time because I couldn't hear a couple words that uh, that Tara was saying. So basically, what he was saying um, after they had to make that they had to make some some sort of switch after they had their first loss in the playoffs against the Dallas Fuel. And of course, there are uh, difference uh, the, the way they play pineapple and alpha. There's a huge difference in how they play. So that the, those were sort of the consideration considerations that the team uh, had thought of and more importantly but we did see alpha e towards the end uh, mainly because the main character in any in any story sort of appears towards the end so that's we got to that's how we got to see alpha e towards the end all right and uh last but not least my final question for you taro is Tomorrow, it's going to be uh, the Battle of the Pinks, I guess. It's uh, Florida Mayhem versus the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, Taro, how confident are you that you could defeat the Florida Mayhem? 자, 마지막 질문으로 이제 내일 경기 핑크 대 핑크일 것 같습니다. 이제 항저우 대 어, 프로이다 메이엠이 될것 같은데요. 테로 선수 내일 경기에 대한 좀 자신감 얼마큼 있으십니까? 아, 네 일단은 저는 저보다 일단 잘하는 키리코는 지금 프로 팀들 중에 없다고 생각하기 때문에 아직은 이제 NIM을 떠나기는 이른 것 같습니다. All right. Uh, I would like to say that you know there is no one better uh, when it comes to Kiriko. I am the best Kiriko currently, so I think it's too early for me to leave Anaheim just yet. All right, Taro. Thank you so much for all of your uh, answers, and again, big congratulations on the win. 자 오늘 축하 승리 축하 드리면서 어, 좋은 답변 너무 감사드리고 보내드리도록 하겠습니다. 테로 선수 감사합니다. 감사합니다. All right, Zoe. Back to you. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you so much, Taro. Tiny Hearts, back to you. And congratulations to you and your team for making it one round further into the playoffs. Now, let's talk about this match. Funny enough, looking at the entire schedule for today's matches, I think that was the match I least expected to go all the way, being like very, very close. But that was the one which really took us all the way on an emotional roller coaster. And that makes it a very heartbreaking loss for the Toronto Defined because they got so close to making it one step further. Alas, it shall not be. Let's discuss how the Spark got it done. Uh, they already just discussed there. Uh, there were a few changes that uh, were made from the Spark side. We saw Pineapple in suddenly over Alpha Yi for the beginning of the series. Uh, what were your initial thoughts uh, when you saw the lineup? I mean, I think when I saw the lineup for the Spark, I was quite surprised because obviously we saw Pineapple back in the mix, but this is something they've done throughout the season as well when it comes to the Tracer play. Uh, notoriously, Alpha Yi was a bit more of a solo artist, racking up the solo kills for his team and going on these big flanks on Tracer, whereas Pineapple historically on the Tracer played more with the team and maybe this is something they implemented when it came to the Reaper as well. Maybe Pineapple has more tendency to stick with Yushui for example and sticking with the team making for more of a teamwork kind of effort. But in this series though it was back and forth. The big story for this one was Toronto Defiant. 
they subbed in Hotba, an off-tank player, historically an off-tank player, onto that Winston role instead, and they swapped around the Reaper and the Sojourn player. So he so he played the Sojourn for the Toronto Defiant yesterday in their loss, and now today it was finale on that Sojourn role. And Joss, knowing you're a you're a Toronto Defiant fan here, what did sort of <laughs> you make of the two uh, damage player swaps here? For wait, what team? For Toronto. Oh, now right, okay. Well. Well, Damage, switches, bro. I was yeah. like, what are you saying? I don't know, bro. It's been a long day. It was a long series. Yeah, no, it's... um, It was interesting to see how Toronto Defiant did tackle this meta, because ideally you would have Hisu on the on the Sojourn. Historically, he has been played Sojourn for a lot of Toronto Defiant's um, game time. But we were kind of talking about this in the green room a little bit earlier on today. Like, Reaper requires such like an interesting playstyle of this meta, but maybe Hisu has that kind of grasp in it more than Finale does, in the way that the Reaper's there just to kind of force out cooldowns from the Winston, from Kiriko, or like from the other DPS. And maybe Hisu just has uh, the bigger brain in that aspect, and he just lets Finale just sit up there and aim. I mean, um, it was a very close series in the end. I think both Hisu and Finale had pop-off moments individually. Uh, yeah, just... Yeah, I think as well as someone who's, you know, p played in moments like this, it can be, a, this is something I mentioned about the Atlanta Rain series as well, like Subbing and Gator, for example, on the tank roll. It can be a bit of a confidence boost, sometimes just making a change for the sake, sake of making a change. I mean, so many of the viewers watching right now, like, sometimes we'll just change up our sensitivity at home. Just like, oh, I aim better when do I swap my sense. Do, 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 do not do that. Do that. Do because the viewers, I know you viewers at home. I know you guys are doing this at home. You're like, oh, I swap my sensitivity. I'm like, oh my god, it's so much better. Yeah. Like, I'm shooting heads, right? And actually, that can sort of be applied to the role swap sometime itself. I'm not saying this is a smart thing to do, right? Because the LA Gladiators, for example, put Happy on the Sojourn, put Kevster on the Reaper. That makes the most sense, right? But for example, in Toronto Defiant, they had a really rough game the other day, and now you get into this series, and maybe you change things up a little bit here by making this change. And honestly, they liked, uh, looked quite good. Um, I want to wrap, though, on the Hangzhou Spark. Yeah. Obviously, we went to map five. This is not something we expected from the Hangzhou Spark, because we expected them to be dominant. But I do think it's noteworthy going into the playoffs. When it comes to the Escort maps, Hangzhou Spark is the worst performing playoff team we have on Escort maps, and they're the second worst team we have on push maps as well. That kind of inconsistency is not going to fly if you want to go deep in the playoffs, because then you're essentially reliant on just winning control and winning hybrid maps all the time. But then, like, you look at the hybrid scores here. LA Gladiators, they win hybrid maps 75% of the time. So if you're the Hangzhou Spark, is your win condition to just come in there and beat people on the hybrid maps? I'm really worried about this inconsistency from the Hangzhou Spark. You need to be able to find a way to win push maps. Maybe Esperanza, the new push map, would be one of those win conditions for Spark. But a bit worrisome going to map five against the Toronto Defiant here. I think they would, should be expected to be better. I mean, one thing which does stand out if you're looking at that roster, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, some statistics might work stats. against it. The stats say the otherwise. Data. But if you're looking cool. at the eye test here, I mean, Shy, he deadlifted <laughs> not once, but twice yeah. in that series. And in fact, I don't know the stats here because, quite frankly. You don't need like, him. He deadlifted, okay? No, you no, don't but need no, I, I, I mean, if you're looking at how many deadlifts per match we had, like, oh, historically, yeah. because this match at three. Is that unprecedented? That has to be I feel like that's got to be right? a record. Oh, there's yeah. It's got to be. Are we making up stats again, Zoe? No, 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 no. I, think I mean, not... I, yeah, I'm, I'm not making it up. I'm questioning. Yeah, Someone out there has the answer. So please provide yeah. them to <laughs> us here because I would really like to know. Uh, Shai managed to deadlift twice. Finale on that Sojourn, really stepping it up for his team. So it's never been free, which just uh, we got just word from production. Uh, this is a first. Yeah. So, really? Yeah. What a way. Not made up. Out. It's yeah. real. I didn't make it up. Wow. Epic. That's, That's actually really epic, epic, yeah. Yeah, it um, is epic. There's no way, go. yeah. The, uh, map five, three deadlifts. Like, you know, these players are fighting tooth and nail to yeah. stay in the competition. Like, yeah. you can just see it there. Yeah, and, and to have one of those deadlifts done by Finale, who yeah. had to pick up that Sojourn role for today after not playing the Sojourn for the last two days, that is huge. So let's send uh, Toronto off with some kind words. Their season obviously has been... <laughs> I don't want to say mid, but it was. <laughs> it's been hot and it's been cold. You yeah, know, they've no, had moments like, where they haven't. But they made it good. all the way to the playoffs, and I think a lot of people did not expect that. But they deserve to be here for sure.
it's yeah. definitely been a right uh, step in the right direction for this franchise. And I think the Front Defiant themselves, you know, if you consider compare this to the 2019 roster, the 2020 roster, for example, they had Kariv in the lineup for some quite some time. Agility is formerly part of the LA Valiant, but now like they have this roster right here. I think they're onto something. I think Chorong and Twilight has been a standout in the backline for them. And obviously they've been hot and cold at some point throughout the season. But it's important to remember we had the Toronto homestand in the summer showdown. They got third in their very own homestand. And like I know some Toronto Defiant fans who are down home, you know, cheering for their own team and. It was so rewarding for them to really see this franchise succeed in the Summer Showdown and make their fans proud. So I hope the Toronto Defiant, I hope they can build on this season. I think they got something going in the right direction. Build on this roster, improve for next year, and maybe you'll be better off in the playoffs next year. Absolutely. There's so much talent on that roster, so it was really heartbreaking to see them go out. But they went out with a bang. It was an amazing last showing for that Toronto Defiant squad, and we can't wait to see more. So thanks a lot, Toronto Defiant, for everything you've provided throughout the 2022 season. Now, uh, with that uh, that double, triple deadlift, actually, we, yep. we actually got some, the some stuff. Triple. The, the double, double triple. The double triple deadlift. We got some, uh, we got some work to do on our... Uh, bingo board so of course our guest Joss, will be head on over it's my job today yeah, i don't want to trip over the cable though and unlike costa you actually have a mic too so uh, yeah he's got yeah. long gangly legs i got <laughs> i'm a bit shorter than scott Funny all right enough. so we can cross off the deadlift yeah let's see that, where we're at we're really happens. close yep. we're really close to bingo on the left side deadlift with the, the yeah. winton jump it's gone um that's so wait winton jump okay did that happen how do you define this well, well, no well honor, he right? jumps now. in. There's no honor. Yeah. So no, he can't nap. Yeah, I guess he can't. We can't nap like that. Trace we need to wait post. for the honor yeah, pick. No. Yeah. Uh, no, no silly. No grand Rocker, final. Not Kiriko. Yet. That didn't happen yet. No. The sneaky backup. Oh. That that yeah. definitely happens. Right. Yep. So yep, that was yep, a huge yep, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leave it on. Yeah, yeah. The, the biggest backup of the year. Yeah, that actually was. Yeah, was amazing. It definitely was. Fusion gets second place. Well, that's not gonna happen. Well, pause due to players. Yeah, the bottom one is. We're going to remind Fusion fans. Every time we bring up the bingo Sorry, board, Fusion. it's like, oh, Fusion got uh, last. So, um, My bad. Uh, Wait, do we have a bingo across the mi middle? Well, yeah, we do. Free field. Oh, they're right, free. Right, right. Let's go. They're free. The free one. Free. Is that free? There we go. It's free. Baby. We did it. Yeah. Bingo. Someone bingo. mispronounces. Double yeah. limit, single boot. What do we get Sneaky now? Sneaky back cap What's and a reference. The... So, there we go. And now? That, what do we get? I think, I think <laughs> social <laughs> media team has something prepared for us. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you guys tuned. What the social media uh, place uh, right. has to uh, do. You, you won. For us. You can come back it? to the desk. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Worst case scenario, we'll, we'll uh, let just Hardy. Make a new one. We'll let Hardy pick what, we'll uh, Hardy what pick. we have to do with I this bingo now. I don't think you have to do it. It's a not like a truth and dare situation. No, we don't have to do anything. I don't they're, think they're... that's how bingo. I never play bingo. In well, well, people, have been, people have been at home. They've been waiting for us to do bingo all week long now for like three days, and we finally do bingo, and there's nothing at the end of the tunnel. I, I we need to do something. We need real? to do something. So is it in I, the budget? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I don't know how bingo works. To be perfect. You don't. Honest, well, so. we just did it. Yeah, I know. No. I know we got the bingo thing, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> it's like me making sports references. I just make them a the chuckle, football. and I hope no one yeah. tries to follow the up. Sports because ball. If oh, they do, uh, I was like, oh. I love sports ball. Oh well. Moving on, we did the bingo thing, and now it is time for the best of the days. Those I know how to do, okay? Those I'm very familiar with. And I'm going to start us off with an absolute banger. This one is coming yeah. in from Gu Shui. He, uh, we're going to call it the cone of silence. He, he decided to put down a noise-canceling headset over this beat. <laughs> Nothing I coming through. This. this is so. This is so good. An unbelievable. So sick. Nah. Winston the entire beat nullified with a Winston beat. Or this is bubble. it's amazing. No. Oh, Still the frustration proves that it's one of the best the Winstons we have of all time. Yeah. Like the presence of mind to do that is unreal. Gushwe. Yeah. I, I. I don't want to be that guy. I'm gonna be that guy. Okay. Go on then. Be that guy. Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Intentional. Bad, was it bad play from Chorong to beat literally on top of the payload? No, Gushui I don't knows. think so. No, Gushui knows. I, that Lucio has sound barrier. It's like, hey, I'm on the court. Hey, I'm on the court. No, but like, did you not? No, he. No, so the Lucio did the tech right. He uses beat uphill, shorter travel distance. I don't think he expected Gushui to react. Oh, so that he outplayed the outplay. Yeah. He outplayed the outplay. That is big brain. A yeah. five head turning into a ten head. If we do multiplication. Love math. So a ten Keep head. Keep on going. Just like Mitch's head. It's yeah. a ten head. And ten head means more, smart. more wrinkles. So much more oh, wrinkles. Yeah, that's and that's what it's all about. Not uh, on this desk. No. We're, we're too smooth. young and youthful. We're young. Oh, thank you. 
I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. There, that's so my best of my the job. day. There we go. Um, uh, what was yours? What tickled your fancy? Well, it was the easiest best of the day I ever, which, <laughs> which was the one of the better C9s we've had of all time. Um, of course, it was the, the counter Shang 9, the anti Shang 9. I don't know what you really want to call it, but Lee J gone, hit him with the back cab real quick. This was just unreal. No and, hesitation. Uh, <laughs> exactly. He knew what That's was the for. funniest part about it. No hesitation. <laughs> and you, uh, the San Francisco Shock at that point were expecting Shanghai Dragons to fight them in that small room. They were like all just inting towards them. And you expect um, the rest of the Dragons to be kind of escorted back. Oh, you know, doing a little bit of kiting. And then Lee Dragon's like, oh, wait, we can just win the game. The payload is Hold like on. two <laughs> pixels away from the completion. Well, okay, I'll just go over there. I think that's probably one of the better C9s we've, we've had in history of uh, When you say better, it's also one of the most, most egregious. Most egregious, yeah, yes. It's, it's, it is both. better, <laughs> but it is also rather egregious. But, but it's weird. It's like a skillful C9. It's like, yeah. the, we don't, typically the back cap is the result of just like logic slaps and you're like, oh wait, we forgot about the payload. That was like skillful back capping. It looked like, he ba nine. It looked like they baited a fight just to enable the Lucy yeah. to back yeah. up. Like it looked Have like a level level yeah. out. Where it's like, okay, we're gonna bait a C9. <laughs> and you're just like ginormous, Great like, uh, Next level, fight. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's the best. It was honestly one of the, my favorite moments of today. And look, the playoffs is already ridiculous. <laughs> Having a C9 like that, it, it was gonna come. Yeah, it was, it was a cherry on top for sure. Uh, Jonathan, what got you excited th today? Th this was one of my probably favorite moments of the playoffs right here. And I'm so happy that Florida Mayhem did it as well. I've never seen anything like it. Let's just jump straight into it, okay? It's the Atlanta Rain defending their spawn by Kai picking the Widowmaker. And suddenly you're like, oh, there's a sniper! There's a sniper on the map! Hide! Hide from the sniper! But, but we gotta push the bot! And so they just, the Florida Mayhem team, this they organized themselves in a row to push this bot. And they're going to make a 2-2 choo -choo train behind the bot. Soon, it's coming. Lucio, he's hiding behind the bot. And then someone comes in. And... They all line up. They're just gonna line up behind the bot. Hide from the Widow! And Dude. they're just a little train. <laughs> they're lucky they're not playing Tetris, bro. Yeah, they're they're just disappear. It's like one of those one of one of those little things, you know, take out and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't know what this is called. You know what I'm talking dolls. about? Nesting yeah, yeah. dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So go from big to smaller to smaller. And I, I just I, I like I, I I have a a physical reaction to the frustration of the Widowmaker, where you're like, I'm ready for the shots, and it's like. <sighs> <laughs> well, no, so can, no peace. Can you not? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that was that was a fantastic play. We nailed the best of the day today. Yeah. Three, true. three really top. This was the best best of the day. This was this might have been the but best. But on the best board, but another segment in hex. That's right, bingo. Best, best of the day. Is that how it works? I don't know. Brackets okay, though. Let's take a look at the brackets because we got some updates for all of you. Starting with the losers bracket, we will be seeing the gladiators taking on the San Francisco the shot. Loser goes. Home, yeah, number two and number three seed. Who would have thought that this is what we can expect from the losers bracket? And then the battle of pink, as Danny dubbed it. There can only be one pink team remaining. One of them will be going and they've home. And never played with these uh, pink colors because Florida Mayhem in 2019, they were yellow True. and red. So we've never had the pink on the, pink matchup. This is the first pink battle. The first wow. pink battle ever. How exciting. In the 2022 <laughs> playoffs. Right here, tune in. Yeah. Uh, also exciting, of course, is our winner's bracket. Uh, they will not be sent home, but into the loser's bracket. We're going to see the Houston Outlaws and the Spitfire. So excited to actually see that matchup. And of course, uh, the Dallas Fuel and the Dynasty. And this is the order. We're going to play it all in. We're starting with the lower bracket, the Gladiators and San Francisco Shock. After that, we're going to see the Hangzhou Spark taking on the Florida Mayhem. Then we're heading into the winner's bracket. With Seoul banger. Dynasty and the Dallas Fuel. And the last match of the day will be fought out between between the London Spitfire and the Houston Outlaws. Both those teams unlikely candidates to actually end up in the winner's bracket. And I feel like both those teams are already playing with house money because they already went further than a lot of people would have expected. The winner of that match is going to be in the top three. Yeah. Imagine yes, that. No. It's either London or Houston in the top three of the 2022 playoffs. Yeah. What? That is nuts. Can, <laughs> that can is I just, exciting as can be. It, it, it's a crazy matchup. And like Lono Spitfire considered the worst team going into the league. Now they have a chance to make top three. But also, can I just spend like 15 seconds before we go home to just talk about nostalgia? Because that I Dallas Fuel, nostalgia. that Dallas Fuel and Seoul Dynasty matchup in 2018, 2019. Do you remember the hype when these two franchises came into the league? Dallas Fuel, Envious, the best team in the Western region, Seoul Dynasty with Luna Kai, of course. We haven't seen Seoul Dynasty versus Dallas Fuel for over 1,100 days. What? And now, 
finally wow. we're going to see this matchup between these two legendary franchises once more and i look uh, the lineups are not the same at all but it's traditional sports you know it's the dallas fuel versus the soul dynasty you're just like just seeing I mean, that graphic makes my, my heart warm this is a league wait. it's about the franchises the players play for those franchises it's about history too, right? exactly it's about history it's about creating storylines we actually out of have nothing history and we're, now. Really we're old we're we old we have history no five. no we're not what? I mean, we, you're not. You're a baby. Yeah, we are babies. Yeah. We've been around since 2016. We're half a decade. We, are, we can almost go to school now. I turned 22 Whatever. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you turned yeah. 22 yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. 23. What are Real. you talking about? Go home. Real. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, yeah, but on this high, nostalgic, beautiful <laughs> note, uh, I think we should, we should like, let's just go home. <laughs> Don't worry. Go. I'll release what you in just day. a second because it is time to say goodbye. Uh, Jack, thank you so much yeah. for joining us here on the desk today. It was an absolute pleasure to no, pick your brain. It was like, yeah, it was fine. What? It wasn't great. No, it was, I said it was, it was fine. fine. It was, no, I didn't say it was fine. It was, it was fun. It's been a good time. Oh, you said fun. I it heard, was fun. I heard it was fine. fun. It was fine. It was fine. But it was also quite fun. <laughs> no, it's honestly a Don't uh, get that close to his face. Why no, not? stop, like zoom, stop zoom zooming in. in on Joel's face. I don't want to see him anymore. I want to go home. I've had enough. <laughs> no! No! Get, get out of here. Come on. All what right. are we doing? We're being silly. Log off. Time. It's time, time to, to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been another pleasant day and we have many more to come. So stick around. We're going to see you again tomorrow. I love you guys. It's the best.